Apologies. How's that? Better? All right. Just before uh, we begin with the formal agenda today, a uh, couple of notes. Um, first of all, this is our first day as a new council and our first day with all this new technology. So I ask everyone's forbearance in advance uh, to deal with any glitches of technology or of chairing. I'm sure that uh, you will all correct me if we go a little off uh, as we move forward. I'll accept you, Alderman Hodges, all right? <laughs> And welcome to everyone in the gallery today. We're thrilled to have you here. Uh, today is a combined meeting of council, which means that we have a public hearing portion in which the public is welcome to make submissions as per our rules. Uh, and then we move to a regular meeting portion in which the public is welcome to stay and observe. However, uh, we'll not have an opportunity to speak to the items. So everything up to item nine is public hearing. Item nine and forward. <laughs> Um, is regular meeting. And I will remind those in the gallery today who haven't been here before that uh, we do have certain rules of decorum, the most important of which is no applause, please. Um, Alderman Kara, I believe you have an announcement for us. I do. Uh, I'd like to recognize that today, Monday, November 8th, is World Planning Day. Um, November 8th of each year has been celebrated as World Town Planning Day since its inception in 1948 and is currently celebrated in over 30 countries on four continents. It's an opportunity to highlight the contribution that sound planning makes to the quality of our region, city, and our neighborhoods. It also gives us an opportunity to publicly recognize the participation and dedication of the members of the Calgary Planning Commission, city employees, community-based groups and citizens like Civic Camp in the House who have contributed time and effort to the continual improvement and innovation of making Calgary a great city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carr. And I believe Alderman Keating also has an announcement. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to welcome uh, Mountain Park School of 50 students from grade six with the teacher Kathleen Ross and volunteers Cheryl Peters and Marie Nelson. Thank you for coming. Welcome to you all. We'll begin then with question period. A maximum of three questions, five minutes each, uh, and we have Alderman Jones. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I think believe my question's for Mr. Logan. Mr. Logan, uh, after an incident that happened between mine and Alderman Chabot's ward with, uh, in regards to NMAX uh, streetlights, I've noticed in my ward along 52nd Street, 32nd Avenue, and 36th Street that I have over 25 lights that are out. Do we have a contract with NMAX, or is it based on a complaint basis that lights get replaced? There we go, thank you. Uh, and uh, the, the incident in question, those lights were on the, the to-do list, if you will. Um, we were waiting a response from NMAX, I believe in that particular location, uh, they were high mass lighting requiring special equipment. So unfortunately, they had not been serviced uh, at the time of the incident. But uh, we do have an ongoing, we do have an ongoing contract, um, it's as required, either reported by our staff or reported through the 311 system. So they are constantly checked? Yes, they are. Thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship, my light is on uh, with regards to the agenda, if I could be recognized. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Alderman Chabot, you have a question? Yes, Your Worship, thank you. Um, my question would probably be directed through you to Mr. Logan. In regards to an incident that occurred recently at uh, 40 or at uh, 50th Street and 16th Avenue uh, Southeast, where an officer was struck by uh, another vehicle while on 
uh, trying to attempt um, a call. And I know there's been other complaints specifically related to that um, intersection. And I was just wondering what the chances would be of escalating the uh, uh, traffic study at that location to determine whether additional traffic control devices should be implemented. Uh, Your Worship, uh, if I might inquire as to the exact location, uh, Alderman Chabot through the chair, was that 50th Street and 16th Avenue Southeast? Correct. Uh, okay, I'm not familiar with that uh, specific location as a problem spot, but we'd be happy to, to uh, take a, specific, a look at the history of incidents at that location and get back to you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Marr? On the, agenda. On the agenda. Anyone else with a question for question period? Very well then. Um, moving to our next item, which is confirmation of the agenda. On the agenda, Alderman Colley Urquhart. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Alderman Jones. So we have the, the agenda moved, seconded, Alderman Stevenson. Alderman Collier, your card. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's probably just on a point of clarification. There are two items. There's a matter of urgent business, which is before council, that was already distributed in the, uh, in the late arrival on Friday afternoon that I'm hoping everyone received a copy of. And uh, it's uh, in relation to the audit subcommittee on snow and ice control that Alderman Pincott and I are trying to have a few procedural matters dealt with today. That's the reason for its urgency. And do I need to add it or is it already considered to be part of the agenda? You do need to add it, Alderman Collier. So Carter. if I could add it and uh, ask do I have Alderman a seconder? Pincott Alderman if he would Pincott? second, that's the purpose. Okay, so uh, as members of council know, uh, adding items of urgent business uh, requires a two-thirds majority. Uh, so, given that, any discussion on this one? Are we agreed? Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Alderman Collier. Uh, your Worship, on, this, on the uh, second item on the agenda, I, I would ask for your guidance on this matter. It's in relation to 9.1.2. And it's a, a report uh, directly from the City Manager's Office in relation to the Southeast LR Tree Green Trip proposal. And part of my concern with it finding its way here first is that it has bypassed uh, the Standing Policy Committee on LPT and, uh, and, and citizens haven't had a chance to come forward. And I know uh, when I was watching the Green Bay Packers last night receiving your emails in regards to this, you probably have ideas on, on how we should proceed uh, procedurally on this item. Yeah, with your, with your agreement, Alderman Collier Card, I'm going to suggest we leave it on the agenda and we make any motion to refer at that time, okay. uh, rather than at this time, if that's all right. Okay, thank you. Very well. Others? I know there are other, another couple of items of urgent business, so this would be uh, the time to move them now. Alderman Moore. Uh, Your Worship, not as an item of urgent business, but uh, if it pleases Council, I would like to table CPC 2010-113, uh, which is an amendment to the Bank View Area Redevelopment Plan. I have a letter from the uh, from the applicant, which is dated November 3rd. Clerks has a copy, and at this time, if uh, it's possible, I would like it to be circulated to the members of Council. And I'm asking for a tabling for one month until the 6th of De December public hearing. Very well. I'll second it, George. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hodges. And we're just waiting for that to get circulated. And you were suggesting that we table it for one month until the December 6th public hearing. All right, any discussion on that matter? All right, then, are we agreed? Very well. Alderman Pincott. Thank you, Worship. I just would uh, like to add two items of urgent business, please. Uh, one is the IGA 2010-36, which is uh, our, the city's recommendations for the provincial and federal budget, our submissions to them, and as well the uh, FCSS, FCS 2010-22, which is the Montgomery BRZ. Very well. I heard second. Alderman Chabot, thank you. Uh, any discussion on that? Are we agreed? Any opposed? Very well. Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Worship. Um, I too would like to make a motion to table an item at CPC 2010 112. <laughs> we can hear, hear what it is first, Alderman Mark. 2010 
112. 112. And uh, the reason that I'm asking council to consider the tabling of this item is that uh, I had a chance to speak to the applicant as well as several of the affected residents in close proximity that uh, were concerned about this um, item moving forward. And the applicant has indicated to me that he would uh, attempt to get in contact with the adjacent um, um, landowners to discuss the project moving forward. And I spoke with one of the uh, uh, adjacent owners last night who indicated that he has not been in contact and has not been contacted by the applicant as of yet. And uh, I would like an opportunity to uh, give the, uh, the applicant a month or so by postponing it until December 6th to provide that opportunity and maybe develop a good neighbor policy or something to that effect. Okay, so you're proposing that we table CPC 2010-112 until December 6th. And Alderman Murray, you're seconding? Yes. Thank you, Richard. Very well. Any discussion on that item? Are we agreed? Any opposed? Very well. Other changes to the agenda? I have. There was supposed to be some comments to the police commission. Yes, I have. A, I have a couple of motions in front of me here um, to add uh, items of urgent business in camera: appointments to the License and Community Standards Appeal Board, as well as appointments to the Calgary Police Commission. Could someone move those for me, please? Thank you, Alderman Pincott. Seconded, Alderman Marr. Any discussion on that? Are we agreed? Any opposed? Very well. Any further changes to the agenda? All right. We have a motion on the floor. Um, sorry, Madam Clerk. As amended. Yes. So we have a motion on the floor to move the agenda as amended. Alderman Jones seconded Alderman Stevenson. Are we agreed? Any opposed? All right. That then takes us into the uh, confirmation of the minutes. This is a bit uh, procedurally interesting because we have to confirm minutes of a meeting that many of us were not actually at. But Madam Clerk uh, assures me that that's okay. Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Worship. I'd like to move uh, um, acceptance of the minutes for the July 19th as well as the July 26th meeting. On the, um, on the organizational meeting minutes, there is um, a small actual amendment that I would like to suggest on page 11 of 27. Mm -hmm. movement. And that is um, under recommendation number two, under recommendation series, says accept the resignation of Ms. Chris Hopner and Ms. Heather McKay as electors to the convention authority and that they be tanked for it says his service, and it probably should say their service. Very well. I think we can take that as a friendly amendment. Thank you. Point. So I'd like to move those moment that as well. W one, one moment, Alderman Chabot. Yes, Madam Clerk. Yes. Oh, okay. So we'll just call that a clerical correction. Yeah. Point of order, Your Worship. Yes, Alderman Farrell. Um, the electronic agendas don't seem to be working. So could we wait okay. until we get? I need a paper one. <laughs> wow, that was good service, Alderman Farrell. <laughs> we will work these glitches out as we move along. So, uh, sorry, Alderman Chabot, you are th then moving the uh, all three, all three sets. sets of minutes. And Alderman collier -Cart, did I hear you seconding? Very well. Uh, Alderman Carra. Uh, yeah, I was obviously not here as a member of council. And I'm referring... Thank you. I obviously wasn't here as a member of council. I'm referring to the 17th Avenue Southeast Transportation Planning Site. I've got a question. Your Worship, I was under the impression that as part of that there was a CRL, a community revitalization levy put forward and I'm trying, I mean, did that happen at LPT? Did that happen here at Council? I'm trying to, there was, there was discussion of that and I don't see that anywhere in the minutes and I'd just like some confirmation regarding that. Um, Mr. The City Manager has informed me that this was. Mr. Watson. Through the chair, Alderman McCrar, the uh, that you're absolutely right. There was a discussion about that. There has been no motion actually made to do that. Can we'll I have to bring back a report mm -hmm. to explain the uh, details and mechanisms in order to actually implement that. But there has not been an actual motion, I believe, that actually instructs us to do that yet. I forgot. I will check back again with the staff and, and take this offline and discuss it with you. Obviously, I know it's something that both you and the community are interested in. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Uh, is that all, Alderman Carr? Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion on the minutes? Very well then, we have a motion on the floor to approve all three sets of minutes. Uh, are we agreed? agreed? Any opposed? Thank you. All right then, we'll move then into the public portion of the, the public hearing portion of the meeting today. Uh, and the way that the public hearings work for the benefit of those in the gallery today is we start with the presentations from the administration. Uh, members of council will then have an opportunity to ask questions of clarification only, please, members of council at that juncture, uh, not of debate. We will then hear from members of the public speaking in favour, those speaking against, and then we'll have follow-up questions from members of council um, to the members of the public, questions of the administration from members, and then we get to the motions. All right, so we will begin then with uh, CPC 2010-114 uh, related to a land use redesignation in McCall. Thank you, Your Worship. And please introduce yourself uh, as you begin. I will do that. My name is Ian Cope. I'm Secretary to Calgary Planning Commission, and I will be representing most of the land use items that are before you today. Thank you, Mr. Cope. Proposed land use that is before you right now is located at the corner of 12th Street Northeast and 32nd Avenue Northeast. The proposal is to take 0 0.64 hectares and redesignate the lands from the existing IG Industrial General District and redesignate them to IC Industrial Commercial District. Proposed land use reflects the types of uses that are currently within the existing building. The IC Industrial District is designed to accommodate light industrial and small scale commercial retail type uses. Proposed uh, amendment is in conformance with the MDP. The graphics before you showing the existing building and parking layout, 32nd Avenue and 12th Street Northeast. It is recommended for the Calgary Planning Commission that Council adopt a proposed redesignation from IG to IC, and that three readings be given to proposed bylaw 103D2010. Thank you, Mr. Cope. Questions of clarification? Are there any members of the public who would wish to speak in favor of this proposal? Speak in favor of this proposal. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak against this proposal? Anyone wish to speak against this proposal? All right then, members of council, any questions for the administration on this one? Uh, there we are, uh, Alderman Jones. Your Worship, I'll move the recommendations and three readings of the bylaw. Thank you, Alderman Jones, do I have a seconder? Thank you, Alderman McLeod. Alderman Carra. Yeah, I just have a question. There we go. I have a question regarding um, who's, who's brought this forward? Is this something that the city has done to clean it up or is this something that's been required of the landowner? Uh, it was not required of the landowner. The landowner was the applicant. He has a consultant who's made the application. Uh -huh. And this is to reflect his uh, operational aspects for the building. The uh, parcel was originally uh, considered uh, general industrial under the previous bylaw. It was transferred uh, appropriately at the time, uh, therefore it was not a, a city undertaking to make this land use change. So how long has this application been in the pipeline? Um, I'd have to check the file here. Just curious. No one needs to check the file here, just check the files. <laughs> We'll just give you a moment to uh, find that. Since June. Since June? All right. Thank you very much. It's a pretty quick turnaround. Mr. Watson seems uh, seems to want to say we do quick turnaround in our department. Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Any other uh, questions on this particular item or discussion? Very well. Then we have motion uh, on the floor to adopt the proposed designation and give three readings to the proposed bylaw. Are we agreed? Any opposed? All right. Now we give three readings to the bylaw. So first reading of proposed bylaw 103D 2010. Are we agreed? Second reading, are we agreed? 
Authorization for third reading. This one's got to be unanimous. Are we agreed? agreed. Any opposed? Very well. Third reading of, of bylaw 103 D 2010. Are we agreed? agreed? All right. Thank you. We'll then move on to 5.4 um, CPC 2010-115. Mr. Cope. Thank you, Your Worship. This item is also to redesignate lands from the existing IG Industrial General District to IC Industrial District. Lands in question are outlined on red on the location map in front onto 12th Street. It is located directly north of the previous application. Uh, the reasoning behind the proposed redesignation is again to reflect the existing land use that uh, occurs within the structure. Uh, the overhead showing the existing building and parking access to 12th Street. And the uh, photographs that will follow will show that the existing uh, primary use for the site is Timbertown, which is a retail kind of component uh, use. The proposed redesignation was supported by Calgary Planning Commission, and they are recommending that Council adopt the proposed redesignation from IG to IC, and that three readings be given to proposed bylaw 104 D 2010. Thank you. I actually have a question of clarification on this one. Um, the IC bylaw allows for 930 square meters of retail use. That's correct. I have no idea how big a timber town is, but it strikes me as a pretty big store. So you're comfortable that this is the appropriate redesignation given the retail use of the space now? Yes, with timber town, a lot of the area is actually warehouse storage for their lumber, that type of thing. So that would not be the same as a retail component. So uh, we'd be happy with what's there. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak in favor of this proposal? People who wish to speak in favor? All right, anyone who wishes to speak against this proposal? All right, any questions or discussion from members of council? Alderman Jones. Your Worship, this application is identical to the one that we just uh, dealt with, so I'm gonna move the recommendations and give three readings. To the Thank pilot. you, and I've got a seconder. I think I saw Alderman Keating. Thank you. Um, very well then, any further discussion? Yes, uh, oh sorry, I thought you were waving at me, Alderman uh, Putman's there. <laughs> any further discussion? Okay, are we agreed on these recommendations? All right, so we'll move to three readings of the bylaw then uh, as well. Uh, first reading, are we agreed? Second reading, are we agreed? Authorization for third reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? Third reading then, are we agreed? Very well, thank you. So we'll move to item 5.5, 5, uh, CPC 2010-116, Mr. Cope. Thank you, Your Worship. The application that's before you today is a road closure and land use. Uh, zooming out here. The area affected is actually within the East Calgary landfill, and the road in question is currently the drive, uh, a portion of the driveway into the a dump area and an undeveloped road allowance farther south of that. Proposed redesignation will close 2.99 hectares of roadway and redesignate the lands to SCRI, Special Purpose City and Regional Infrastructure District, which is compatible with the existing landfill operations, which do occur on both sides of the road. The road will be closed from the south boundary uh, where it connects with Elliston Park and be closed all the way south to the area uh, where Pagan Trail will uh, eventually connect with Stony Trail on the east side. The uh, road itself is gated when the dump is closed and access to any of public parcels will not be affected by the proposed road closure. Uh, we do note that the landfill area is under a number of separate titles. Uh, part of the uh, requirements for the road closure is that those titles are either consolidated or an access agreement is registered to ensure that access to individual parcels is maintained as required by the Municipal Government Act. In that respect, Calgary Planning Commission is recommending that Council adopt the proposed closure of uh, what is essentially 68th Street right now and give three readings to bylaws 17C 2010. Thirdly, that uh, the proposed redesignation from undesignated road right of way to SCRI uh, be adopted and that three readings be given to propose bylaw 105 D 2010. Alderman Hodges on a question of clarification. 
Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Mr. Cope, uh, do you have a larger map showing this uh, larger area to the north in particular I'm interested in? Uh, does this one help? Yeah, I'm just trying to get oriented to 17th Avenue Southeast, uh, which was the north boundary of the original landfill site, I believe. Yes, uh, that has since been uh, converted into Elliston Park yes. with the lake. Uh, the access is just to the right of where the pointer is right now. Uh, there's a set of lights up there. Uh, there's a number of buildings which are associated with the uh, landfill operations. Those will all still be accessed by the public road. Uh, the actual closure area extends from where Elston Park uh, meets the existing dump operation. Now, I take it... Uh Oh, oh, and sorry. by the way, we, sorry, Alderman Hodges, we, we did have a request to dim the lights, but we've had our first technical glitch of the day. They're working on it. Second. Alderman Hodges? Yeah, no, thank you. I, this, oh, second, sorry. <clears throat> this map, uh, that's, it, it's a good uh, uh, map for the larger area. Uh, Mr. Cope, will this uh, be a physical closure of 68th Street or simply a closure to, uh, to consolidate the lands of 68th within the adjacent uh, other city-owned property? Yeah, so this time it'll simply be a uh, closure of road. It will not be physically closed. It will continue in its current location as a driveway to the landfill area. <clears throat> now, I actually hate to mention it, but uh, this is the other, when I talk about landfills in <laughs> this part of the city, one contemplates the location of Race City Speedway. So Race City is further to the south by quite a distance? Well, quite a distance, yes. This is uh, just off 17th Avenue Southeast. Race City, I believe, is off of 130th. Farther to the south, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hodges. Alderman Chabot, questions of clarification? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Cope. You said you, this was to consolidate um, titles on a number of parcels. Who actually holds the title to those parcels? The City of Calgary owns all the land. Uh, they're just under separate titles. Uh, but to meet with the requirements of the MGA, they either have to be consolidated or an access easement registered to each individual parcel. Okay. Is a road closure a requirement to consolidate those parcels? Uh, the road closure does require that to occur or the access easement. For consolidation of the properties? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And the utility rights of way um, are going to be retained? And that's they, correct. And they, they, where are they currently? Uh, there's currently a, at least a power line that runs along the 68th Street alignment. So. We can't dig that up. Uh, there, uh, I suppose if the landfill were ever to move in that direction, uh, that would be a requirement, but at this time it's not interfering with any operations. I'm just trying to understand the reasoning behind the road closure, um, other than from an easement access perspective, but I'll save that for debate for later. Thank you for that. Thank you, Alderman Chabot. Any other questions of clarification? All right, are there any members of the public present who would like to speak in, and this, I should mention, by the way, this is a combined public hearing, which means we'll take um, present uh, submissions on both of the proposed bylaws together. So any members of the public who would like to speak in favor of the two proposed bylaws, anyone like to speak in favor? Anyone like to speak against? Anyone like to speak against? All right then, members of council. I see you going for it, Alderman Chabot. There you are. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, well, this, um, although it didn't fall in my area prior to the election, it is now part of my ward. And um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about this road closure in regards to the, the future potential um, for a, a north-south uh, connector. Um, I do realize that uh, from a landfill perspective, they like to have full unfettered access on both sides of 68th Street. And, under, and I, I'm under the understanding that that's probably the reasoning behind this road closure more than anything. Uh, but I think there's other, other potential opportunities that could exist if, uh, if we were to uh, need to have uh, full unfettered access on both sides of 68th Street. And uh, I don't think this road closure is the right way to go right now um, without considering the future potential of the entire area and access from a north-south perspective. I do appreciate that the ring road does run parallel to this road, uh, but uh, from a local access perspective, I think it should be retained. 
and uh, and if there's any access that needs to be provided from one side to the other of 68th Street for landfill purposes, that that could be accommodated. The um, the road right of way is going to uh, stay in place, so I don't see how this is going to impact the operations of the landfill site. Um, so, um, in light of that, um, I will be voting against this proposed road closure, and would uh, suggest other members of council consider that as well. I'm not sure, Alderman Chabot, if you were asking a question about that to Mr. Cope, but I will give Mr. Cope the opportunity to respond if he has a response. Um, just to indicate that at current time, 68th Street is only developed and paved uh, down to what's shown as the 34th Avenue Southeast alignment. The uh, remainder of the roads to south down to where Pagan Trail will intersect with Stony Trail is not a developed roadway at this time. And my understanding is there will not be access due to the uh, interchange requirements at that location in the long term. Thank you, Alderman Pincott. Thanks, Your Worship. I will move the recommendation, send the three, all three readings of both the associated bylaws. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Alderman Lowe. And, and I have you next on my list, Alderman Lowe. Well, Your Worship, I was wondering if anybody from transportation was here to address Alderman Chabot's concern. Mr. Vanderputten. Your Worship, uh, Ryan Vanderputten with Transportation Planning. Uh, as part of the department's review of the Southeast and Northeast Industrial um, Transportation Network, the uh, provision of 68th Street north of Pagan Trail uh, was not included as part of that network review. So there is no uh, need to maintain that right away at this time. The provision for that north-south um, function will be uh, provided by the Southeast Stony Trail upon completion in 2013 by the province. Mr. Vandenputten, just for the purposes of everyone on council, can you just um, give us a sense of how far Southeast Stony Trail is from this road in question? Um, as you can see, what, what's denoted as um, the, I guess, a mile east is essentially the, the transportation utility corridor, and that will be uh, where the Southeast Stony Trail is being constructed. Thank you. Alderman Lowe? I did have the floor. <laughs> Sorry. Thank I you. thought you sat. You need better peripheral vision. Okay. Go on. Uh, Mr. Vanderputen, uh, have you had any conversations with Solid Waste with respect to how they intend to use 68th Street? Um, th uh, through the Chair, Your Worship, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, personally, I, ha I have not. I'm not sure what discussions were uh, had as part of the um, CPAG application file. I do know that they were uh, definitely um, spoken to at length, uh, but I'm not sure uh, that f kind of from a physical requirements what their needs are. Okay, and I, if I recall correctly, and I don't think there's anybody from U and E here, but there's a, a liability issue with access to both sides of the landfill in there. Are you familiar with that? Uh, through the chair, no, I'm not. Okay, thank you. Your Worship, uh, I'd ask Council to support this. It uh, was thoroughly vetted before it hit Planning Commission. The road will never go all the way through. Access is actually from Stony to the east, which will be completed by the province. So I'd ask uh, or Council to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Lowe. Alderman Carra? Just a couple points of order. I, those are quarter section blocks. Those are not section blocks, I believe. So that's not a mile. That's a half a mile distance. That's 800 meters. Um, and I just, I've got three maps in front of me that all sort of say the same thing. But I, I think what we have here is we've got a road that's a dirt road that leads into the dump that does not continue to the 42nd Street alignment from 34th Street, and that for landfill operations, they're requesting that they officially close the road so that they can have, they can gate it off and have access. It's a pretty simple thing. It's sort of very confusingly put forward here. I think that we could probably do a lot to make that a lot clearer, and so there won't be the need for this kind of debate in the future. That picture sure helps, doesn't it, Alderman Carra? <laughs> but uh, that's not accurate, you're saying? There is? OK, well, uh, uh, Alderman Chabot beside me is saying that what we're being told is on the ground is not actually on the ground. It'd be nice to be able to put up Google Earth and <laughs> take a look at it. Is it your photo? 
But future governance reform enhancement, Alderman Carra. Uh, Mr. Cope, could you address the issue of how much of that road is paved, please? It's so my understanding, actually, we're just putting up the air photo here. The road is paved down to my understanding is to the 34th Avenue alignment, which you can see there, that's where the way station is located. And then the balance of the alignment is not paved down to uh, the, the 42nd Avenue alignment. I'm going to pretend you didn't sit down, Alderman Curran. You've still got the floor. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but we just heard that there was no road, and now we're hearing that there's a paved road and then there's an unpaved road. The paved road is from 17th Avenue down to 34th. The balance of the closure area is not paved on the road. So lines. then I guess I misheard that there was no road at all. My apologies. Thanks, Alderman Curran. Any further discussion on this item? All right, we've got a motion on the floor then to adopt the proposed closure, um, apply the proposed designation, and give three readings to the two proposed bylaws. Are we agreed? Any opposed? We have two opposed. Uh, do we need a roll call vote, Madam Clerk? No? All right. Sorry? Uh, Alderman Hodges. Alderman Chabot and Alderman Hodges. Did I get that right? Did I miss anyone? All right, um, great, so uh, thank you for that. So we will go then to the readings of the proposed bylaws. We will deal with these separately. So on proposed closure bylaw 17C 2010, first reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Second reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Author, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alderman Chabot, let's, let's go back again. So first reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Any opposed? Okay, two opposed. Second reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Any opposed? Two opposed? Authorization for third reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Agreed. Any opposed? All right, third reading of the bylaw then, are we agreed? Any opposed? And we have two opposed. All right, thank you very much. Um, now on proposed bylaw 105 D 2010, first reading, are we agreed? agreed. Any opposed? Alderman Chabot. Uh, second reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Any opposed? Alderman Chabot, Alderman Hodges. Authorization for third reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Any opposed? All right, third reading of the bylaw then, are we agreed? Any opposed? Alderman Chabot, Alderman Hodges, thank you. We'll now move to item 5.6, CPC 2010-117. Um, again, Mr. Cope. Thank you, Your Worship. The proposed land use which is before you is located on 8th Street and accessed from 8th Street Northeast and backs onto Deerfoot Trail Northeast. The area affected by the land use redesignation is outlined on red on the graphic that's on the screen at the moment. The proposed redesignation will take the lands from the existing IG Industrial General District and redesignate the lands to IB uh, Business District with a FAR limitation of 1.0. The proposed redesignation re reflects the existing use of the buildings that are on the site. Currently there are two buildings, one building on the west side which is a mix of office with some ancillary warehouse and the front building which is on 8th Street is a building which is primarily office. The IB district uh, recognizes the mix of those uses and also re uh, reflects the use of the buildings as they currently exist air photo showing the parking associated with the two buildings and access, as I indicated, is from 8th Street Northeast. Calgary Planning Commission is recommending that Council adopt a proposed redesignation. Uh, the air photo showing you the warehouse building, which is the Honda building and the office building uh, to the east of that. Uh, as I indicated, uh, recommend that Council adopt a proposed redesignation from IG to IBF 1.0 and give three readings to proposed bylaw 106 D 2010. Thank you, Mr. Cope. Alderman Chabot on a question of clarification. Just very briefly, Mr. Cope, the uh, property to immediately to the north and the property immediately to the south, what is the land use designation on those two properties, please? Uh, the directly north and to the south is IG Industrial General. One, at one FAR? Uh, that's standard in the I IG district, that's correct. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Alderman Chabot. Any other questions of clarification? All right, then, are there any... Oh, Alderman Karan, a question of clarification? 
I don't know if this is a question of cl clarification or a question of debate following. I'm just. Yeah, I go for it. I guess my question is who's the proponent on this? Is the proponent is the uh, landowner, uh, again, through a consultant. Okay, and why are they requesting this land use change? To recognize the existing uh, uses of the buildings. Okay, and that Honda dealer, that Honda factory looks like it's been there for a while. So they moved in been. and were required once they moved in by the city to align their use out of industrial general into industrial business? It was not a requirement of the city. It uh, is a decision of the applicant. Uh, the uses that are currently there uh, do fit under the IG, particularly the mixed office warehouse building, which is the Honda building. The other building itself is, uh, I understand, completely uh, office uh, under the former bylaw that was uh, a discretionary use uh, currently, although office is still a use under the IG district, the limitation on size is there, uh, which could affect some of the tenancy of that building. So this better reflects, the proposed land use better reflects the uh, use of the buildings as they currently exist. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alderman Carr. Any other questions of clarification? Alderman Footmans? Yes, I'm intrigued. What would the motivation be of the landowner to proceed with this? I believe the office building is currently vacant and they're probably trying to lease it. There may be some issues there with the amount of office space being proposed. <coughs> and, and just a reminder for members of council, the applicant submission is the very last page of this, uh, of this proposal. Sorry, Alderman Putmans. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Lowe, on clarification. Actually, Your Worship, it was to uh, point out exactly what you pointed out also. Uh, the motivation, if we're, we're delving into third-party business reasons, as long as the, the, the reasoning behind it meets the land use bylaw, the motivation is private land. So there's a line there we have to be very careful about crossing, Your Worship. Thank you for the reminder, Alderman Lowe. Other questions of clarification? All right, so to the... Uh, there we are. To the uh, public hearing portion then, are there any members of the public who wish to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone wishes to speak in favor? Anyone wish to speak in opposition to this proposal? Anyone wish to speak in opposition? Very well then, Alderman Stevenson. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the recommendations of CPC and the three readings of the bylaw. Thank you, seconded by Alderman Pincott. Any discussion on this item? Uh, Alderman Jones? Your light's not on. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm sorry. So sorry, seconded by Alderman Jones. Any discussion on this item? Very well then, on the recommendations, are we agreed? Any opposed? Right, let us then move to three readings on the proposed bylaw. On first reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? Second reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? Authorization for third reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? And third reading, are we agreed? agreed. All right, very well then. We will then move to item 5.7, um, land use resignation in Horizon Industrial, Kelvin Grove and South Airways Industrial. Uh, that's CPC 2010-118. Hello, Ms. Moorhart, is it? Yeah. Good morning, Your Worship and members of Council. My name is Lauren Moorhart, and I'm here representing the recommendation from the Calgary Planning Commission for item CPC 2010-118 to redesignate three privately owned parcels. These redesignations are city initiated on behalf of the property owners as the parcels were not correctly transitioned with the implementation of land use bylaw in 2008. The proposed redesignations better align the listed uses and the development potential of the parcel with bylaw 1P 2007 and with the new districts more accurately reflecting the buildings and the context of the parcels. The first parcel I am presenting is located at 3915 34th Street Northeast and as the photo shows is a purpose-built development. Places of worship and school private were listed uses in the land use district that existed when the building was constructed. 
When bylaw 1P 2007 came into effect, places of worship were not included as a listed use in the industrial districts, as council strategy was to preserve industrial land to ensure an adequate future supply. Standalone places of worship can only be built in industrial areas currently through a land use redesignation or in residential or commercial areas through a development permit. The parcel was transitioned to IG, the industrial general district, when the more appropriate land use designation was special purpose community institution or SCI district. This will accommodate the use of the church. We are proposing to redesignate the place of worship and private school to this district. The second parcel is a commercial mixed use building known as Mayfair Place. This is located at 6707 Elbow Drive Southwest. This parcel was transitioned from the old C3 district to the commercial corridor 3 district. The more appropriate district would have been C C Core 2, which accommodates the existing dwelling units. This change will have no effect on the existing height of the building as the existing and proposed district include the same maximum height of 46 meters. This was the original height maximum allowed when Mayfair Place was built before 1970. The third parcel is located at 1665 32nd Avenue Northeast, which was transitioned to Industrial General District. However, as the building contains small scale commercial uses, in addition to industrial uses, the IC, Industrial Commercial District, is more appropriate as it accommodates this combination of uses. Letters of notification for these redesignations were sent to the affected landowners, and no opposition was to the proposed corrections was received. Therefore, Calgary Planning Commission is recommending that Council give three readings to the bylaws to ensure the land use maps in Bylaw 1P 2007 accurate, accurately reflect the development potential of the affected sites and because the proposed land use, land use districts are consistent with the land use map transition strategy as part of the original approval of bylaw 1P 2007. Thank you, Your Worship, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Moorhart. I understand that there are some 20 to 30,000 of these, so that'll keep us busy for a little while um, working through these. Alderman Jones on clarification. Well, I'm not gonna talk to all 30,000, but. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Jones. I would like to know, <laughs> could you, for clarification, could you explain to me why you would put two from Ward 5 and one from one Ward 11 in the event that there was an issue with one of them? Wouldn't it hold up all three? Um, so you're asking, no, we actually got these all about the same time. You were notified that there was these problems. No, I was just saying it just seems weird that you'd lump three together rather than do them singularly. In case um, in the event there is a problem with one of them, it holds up the other two. We do them in batches, and we do allow, we do notify the property owner to let them know that this, if they wish it for the city to do it on their behalf, it will take that, uh, we will be doing it all together. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alderman Jones. Alderman Lowe? Seem to be standing a lot today, explain how things work. But if, if that was a problem, you we'll, we'll get there, Alderman Lowe. <laughs> if that was a problem, you worship. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Malone. But the simple amendment at second reading would look after it. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Lowe. Any other questions of clarification for Ms. Moorhart? Oh, Alderman Carra. Yeah, I'm not sure I understood the answer to Alderman Jones' question, or whether it was actually answered. I mean, the question is, you've got three different places in the city, two different wards, mm -hmm. and you're compressing them into one bylaw. And if there's an issue with one, and they're very different cases, I'm just not understanding the rationale for compressing them all into one. OK, Worship, I'll have my superior, Laurie Kimber, answer that for Mr. me. Mr. Kimber, sure. I was going to take a stab at it, too, but you'll probably do a better job. <laughs> yes, uh, Your Worship, just uh, just to note, we, we do bundle these together for efficiency reasons. Um, these, these three came to our attention roughly at the same time, so we took that opportunity to, to minimize the city resources expended on this by bundling them together. And then, of course, if there is an issue at the public hearing with any one of these, we can always uh, remove it from the bylaw and proceed with the other ones at that time. So it, it does work quite well, uh, this system. Thank you very much, Mr. Camber. Any other questions for <laughs> clarification? All right, then. Are there any members of the public present who wish to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone who wishes to speak in favor? Right, anyone who wishes to speak against this proposal? Anyone who wishes to speak against? All right, I will accept uh, any discussion or a motion. Aldrin Pincott. Second. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, 
after the uh, after the summer that the residents in Mayfair Place had, it's my pleasure to move this and let them know that they actually can live there. <laughs> I appreciate that, Alderman Pinkott. And I think Alderman Jones was the first off the off the mark to second this. Any discussion? Right. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, then. Are we agreed on the recommendations? Any opposed? All right, let's move then to the bylaw readings. So first reading of proposed bylaw 107D-2010, are we agreed? Any opposed? Second reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? Authorization for third reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? And third reading, are we agreed? Very well, thank you. We then move to agenda item number six, uh, dispositions of public reserve lands. Now, Madam Clerk, correct me if I'm wrong, but these next two are not actually public hearing items. Is that correct? Oh. Correct, Your Worship. They are public hearings. All right, we have a difference of opinion on this matter. Uh, Mr. Watson? I never like to correct the city clerk, but... Dis sorry, dispositions of reserves. It wasn't. All right, well, we're here anyway. So we'll move to public hearing on these ones. Uh, the first one is CPC 2010-119. Mr. Cope. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. The area affected by the uh, disposition of reserves is outlined on red and is currently forming part of the Glenmore Trail right-of-way uh, for the expansion that occurred over the last couple of years. <clears throat> the uh, proposal will take the land from the existing MMR designation and transfer it into road right of way. Uh, it is recommended that Council adopt by resolution the proposed disposal of reserve with compensation for the lost lands in the amount of approximately $309,500, which would go into the reserve fund. Would indicate that CPC's recommendation, I would like to make a correction um, that the uh, it's a two part. Um, requirement that firstly that council adopt the resolution uh, to dispose of the reserve and secondly that council direct administration to uh, make contact with the South Alberta land titles office and have that MR designation removed. Thank you. Any questions of clarification uh, for Mr. Cope? Alderman Chabot. Um, this is still a public item, right? Yes. Or is it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, maybe I'll, I'll reserve my questions until after the public have an opportunity to speak to it. Very well. Any other questions for, of clarification for Mr. Cope? <laughs> Alderman McLeod. Um, I have two questions. Mike. Um, I have two questions. One is the date of the appraisal. Is um, is it 2006 or is it 2010? My apologies, I missed that. Um, the, the appraisal, was it done in 2006 or 2010? I believe the uh, appraisal would have been done in 2010. So it's current value? That's correct, yes. Um, and I'm just curious why this took so long to come forward. I'm afraid I don't have that information. Okay. Thanks, Alderman McLeod. Alderman Putmans? Yes, what, what is the future of this land? Will it be offered to the, um, is it the Community Association? Road writer? No, actually, at the current time, the land was taken from the Community Association and the, I believe it's the girls' school that's there. It now forms part of Glenmore Trail. Oh, so it's being disposed back to the city? That's correct. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Thank no you. longer reserved, now a road. Got it. Other questions of clarification? All right, then. Uh, any members of the public who wish to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone who wishes to speak in favor? All right. Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this proposal? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? All right, Alderman Pincott. Thank you. Um, I will move the, uh, the two recommendations as they were put forward by, uh, by administration. Uh, one, which is uh, the, the adopt in our agenda, and the second is to, uh, to basically have the, the transfer, the, the title transferred. Um, just, just for clarification, because there was some misunderstanding within the community as well about what this was. 
These are lands that have already been uh, included in the Glenmore Trail Road right, right away. As we saw from the picture, uh, it is essentially the lands from the chain link fence to the sound wall. Currently, there is uh, a pathway on there. The, the regional pathway is on there, as well as the trees and the like. So these are lands that are already uh, have already been included in the in the widening and the construction of Glenmore Trail. It is moving it from reserve to the road right of way. There is no sale or anything of that nature. So I I move the two. Thanks, Alderman Hinko. Do I have a seconder? Alderman Keating. Thank you, um, Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Worship. So, Mr. Cope, the value of the land um, at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars an acre. And it seems rather low. Is that because it falls within the road right of way and the method that we deal with road right of ways? Uh, the appraisal is actually done by through our corporate properties group, normally through a independent appraiser. All those factors would be be taken into account as in terms of loss of use uh, and what the uh, potential use of the land might have been. But we do have a standard practice on how we deal with road right of way and disposition of road right of way, and this would fall under that in regards to the value of it? Be the same process, that's correct. Because it's certainly worth a lot more than $250,000 an acre for normal lands in that area, right? Uh, I'm not an appraiser, I wouldn't want to <laughs> speculate. Far, far, far beyond this value. But it's because it's road right of way, I, at least that's the way I read it. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't be supporting it's too low a value, but I'll support it on that basis. Yeah, I suspect you can't do much else with it, Alderman <laughs> Chabot, but um, very well. Any other uh, questions of clarification? Oh, no, we're, we're way past that. Um, any other discussion on the motion here? Okay, then. So on the recommendations, are we agreed? agreed. Any opposed? Uh, Alderman Hodges is opposed. All right. Moving then to our next uh, disposal of reserve lands, CPC 2010-120, agenda item... 6.2. Thank you, Your Worship. The area affected by the disposal of reserve land is shown in red on this location map. It is adjacent to 96 Avenue Northeast. Currently, 96 Avenue Northeast is developed to Harvest Hills Link uh, and is currently under construction from that point to connect with Deerfoot Trail to the east. The area affected is basically the boulevard area shown in this photo. Uh, which will allow for the proper transition to the new expansion of 96th Avenue. Calgary Planning Commission is recommending that Council adopt by resolution the proposed disposal of reserve with compensation in the amount of approximately 10800 again to be deposited to the reserve fund. We're also asking that the uh, Council direct administration to advise Southern Alberta Land Titles Office of the disposition and request removal of the MR designation. Thank you. Any questions of clarification on this one? All right. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak in favor of this proposal? In favor of this proposal. All right. Any members of the public who wish to speak against this proposal? Against the proposal. All right. Alderman Stevenson. <laughs> okay, I think there I, we go. Uh, I would like to move the recommendations, Your Worship. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Stevenson. I hear Alderman Marr seconding it. Any discussion on this one? Okay, are we agreed? agreed? Any opposed? Alderman Hodges is opposed. Okay, now on this next one, agenda item 7.1, which is a request to abandon two bylaws, I'm informed by the clerk's office that those of us who we're not around uh, for the passing of these bylaws are ineligible to vote and we have to leave the chamber. So uh, Alderman Carra, DeMong, Keating, McLeod and Putmans, please join me and I'll ask Deputy Mayor Jones to take the chair. We won't go far. Well, this is different. Mr. Cope. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, some time ago, I believe back in May, there was a land use and road closure application that was before Council. Council did give first and second reading to those bylaws pending an outcome of some off-site levy requirements. Since that time, uh, there's been negotiations with various city departments. Uh, the road itself was being closed to allow it to be reduced in size. 
through uh, Urban Development uh, and Roads Department. They have come to an agreement on a final design which would allow for the road to remain in its current configuration with an extra wide utility right of way to be located within it. In that respect, uh, the applicant has requested that uh, as the road is no longer required to be closed, that the uh, appropriate bylaws be abandoned. Those are bylaws 13C 2010 and 55D 2010. Uh, in that respect, uh, it uh, will still be in compliance with the approved outline plan. Thank you, Mr. Cope. Is there any questions of clarification? Seeing none, is there anybody from the public that wish to speak in favor of this? Anyone wish to speak in favor? Anyone that's not? No. Oh, okay. Um, Alderman Stevenson. Thank you, Your Worship. I just need to, um, I guess it is a, a question of clarification, but uh, the 15th Street uh, is not going to stay open at Country Hills Boulevard, is it? Yes, it is. It'll be a write-in only. In the, in the uh, report, it shows that because of its location to the off-ramps that it shouldn't be kept open. That was what the original proposal was. Yes, it currently is a full uh, turn uh, intersection uh, with reconfiguration and development of the adjacent uh, subdivision. It will become a write-in only from the eastbound traffic. So therefore, the conflict will not occur. And will that mean that we'll still be uh, uh, building another intersection at the bottom of the hill, 12th Street. That's correct. Okay. That'll be a full turns, uh, I believe, uh, traffic signal uh, controlled intersection. Okay, I'll, I'll move this with reluctance. Your Honor. It's been moved and seconded by Alderman Pincott. So any questions? Seeing none, are you in favor? Agreed. Opposed? It's carried. Next item. Next item is 8.1, textural amendments to the Lend Use Bylaw. Mr. Kimber. Good morning, Your Worship and Council. My name is Laurie Kimber, and I'm here today representing the recommendations from Calgary Planning Commission for item CPC 2010 121, textual amendments to the Land Use Bylaw, which propose amendments to the commercial use definitions and some of the provisions relating to building height measurements and relaxations. These amendments are a result of the general monitoring of the land use bylaw, as well as our efforts to simplify and increase the speed of change of use process. Firstly, the amendments propose to delete seven existing commercial uses and replace them with one new use named retail and consumer service. The new use will capture the activities of the seven deleted uses and will allow for the most common consumer oriented commercial activities to undergo changes of tenancy without the need for a permitted use development permit. The graphic on the overhead illustrates in a, in a basic sense uh, how the amendment will work. Secondly, the amendments before you concern provisions related to how building height is measured. The first provision modifies the definition of ancillary structure. Ancillary structures are not included when we measure the height of a commercial building. And currently, ancillary structures include such things as elevator housings and chimneys. The amendment uh, changes the definition of ancillary structure and will allow portions of a building that are used to provide other types of structures, such as mechanical screening, parapets, uh, to be included in the definition of ancillary structure. The second provision uh, dealing with commercial building height uh, deals with building height modifiers. Currently, the development authority is not permitted to relax building height when it is specified as a modifier on the land use district map. The reason we have this rule is that most modifiers are set by council through a public hearing and so are considered to be direction from council. However, administration has discussed this issue with the industry and is proposing an amendment that would allow the development authority to consider relaxations for building heights only to manage internal parcel grade variations and to allow building design elements that project above the roof line of the building. Examples of design elements would include such things as atrium roofs, uh, parapets, etc. In summary, these Proposed amendments implements council direction to continuously monitor and improve the functionality of the land use bylaw. The recommendation of CPC is that council adopt by bylaw the amendments as set forth in Appendix 2 of the CPC report. And that concludes my presentation, Your Worship. 
Thank you, Mr. Chamber. Alderman Hodges for on clarification. Right. Uh, Mr. Kimber, we haven't had a chance to discuss this previously, but uh, anyway, <clears throat> on page 2 of 34 of Bylaw 39P 2010, on uh, double B is uh, under subsection E, you have self-storage facility. The following uses are not required to provide loading stalls in any district. So you go all the way from auto service uh, alphabetically down to self-storage. Uh, Mr. Kimber, I would have thought that if there's any use that would require a uh, loading stall would be a self-storage facility. Uh, people access these, I would think, by trailer and by truck, and it would be handy to have a loading stall. Um, yes, uh, Your Worship, the, um, the amendment uh, shown on uh, page 2 of 34 of the amending bylaw 39P 2010. Um, Self-storage facility, there's no changes being proposed. We currently do not and have not in the past um, required uh, official loading stalls for this. Uh, the list is simply repeated because what we've done is deleted some uses out of the list and it's um, mechanically, it's easier just to delete the whole list and then just reinsert it properly uh, numbered and sequential. So we've had no changes uh, on that. However, I might note that uh, loading facilities, just by their very nature, um, in order to accommodate their clients, they design them in such a way as to uh, make them functional and ensure that every, every client or tenant can actually access their own space. So this is not something that we uh, officially require loading stalls for. Um, so I I'm not sure if that answers your question. Well, usually you find them there in any case is what you're saying. Yes, basically I am saying that. One or two. Uh, Mr. Kimber, I just happen to have my bylaw handy. Uh, if you do as well, could uh, do you mind just referencing the section? I thought I could find it quickly, but I uh, am not doing that. So if you have your bylaw handy, if you could reference the uh, original section, please. It's section 123. But uh, this bylaw is quite extensive, and I thought you might be able to find it faster than I can. Your Worship, so as seen on the overhead, you can uh, illustrate it. Uh, um, Self-storage facility is, is listed in the bylaw already as uh, in the in the list uh, that's being replaced that are not required to provide loading stalls i found it uh, page 118 at least in my version of the bylaw this gets amended it seems every few months but uh, 118 yes that that's correct your worship uh, page 118 is uh, the page that it's on thank you mr Kimmel. You're welcome Other questions of clarification? Mr. Kimber, I have a couple of uh, questions of clarification for you. Uh, three, in fact. So the first is um, on the new retail, um, retail and uh, customer service designation, when I look at that list, it looks like most things that an average person would call a retail store. Are there any designations that are not on that list that you've left out of the new designation? Um, what, what we've done is, uh, Your Worship, is, is grouped the, as you've noticed, the, the typical uh, things that you would see in a, in a typical commercial plaza that have sort of uh, like impacts. So the only other things that you would see in a typical uh, retail or commercial establishment would be the restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, drinking establishments, and uh, medical clinics, and generally they have a, a considerably different impact than what you see there. And, and of course, liquor stores. Okay, great. And liquor stores. Yeah. Okay, great. When we talk about the ancillary structures when we refer to building height, I notice that there's a list of things that are including but not limited to. And the one thing I don't see on that list, and I just wanted to ask your opinion on the matter, is antennas, and particularly cell phone tower antennas. Does this remove our ability, limited as it now is, to regulate cell phone antennas on the roofs of these sorts of buildings? 
Um, Your Worship, the cell phone antennas and telecommunications are a federal jurisdiction. It's not an area that I specialize in, but my understanding is that uh, explicit, we, have, we don't really have explicit regulation of, of federal jurisdictional items in the land use bylaw, but Ms. Flown could perhaps clarify that as well. Yet. Um, all right, thank you. My last question is just a quick question of clarification on the live work unit um, area that we're talking about. So essentially, uh, just to be extremely clear, this really will allow, particularly for artist studios, to show up in what we might think of as commercial districts. Just um, is there a specific uh, yeah, section? Yeah, that's the, um, uh, on page four of thirty-four. When we look at uh, subsection Q and R. Yes, that, that's uh, correct. Q&R would add artist studios to the definition of, uh, of live work unit. That's correct. Terrific. Thank you. Any other questions for clarification? All right, to the public hearing portion then. Are there any members of the public present that would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone who would like to speak in favor of the proposal? Mr. Feck, you're speaking in favor of the proposal? Yes, I'd just, I'd just like to make some comments. Uh, Please. Uh, Mayor, Alderman, my name is Oscar Feck. I've lived here since 1952. Like uh, Alderman Dale Hodges uh, indicated, that we keep changing the rules and laws about every month. In the 50s, 60s, 40s, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, we had good common sense rules and laws. Seems like we want to we find the rules and laws so good that we're actually going backwards. We're creating a monster of a, of a uh, bottleneck even in the, in the zoning department, the planning department. We have to get back to good common sense. We had good zoning in the past. Since the 1970s, we created so many rules and laws even the Altman don't understand what's going on, and the mayors didn't understand. The planners don't understand. We have to get back, create simple rules and laws, and fit in within the realm, and uh, just go from there. Nobody knows what's going on anymore. So let's get back to good common sense, Mayor and Alderman. I would appreciate if you would analyze, talk to the planning department, and work together, and I was building in the 60s, 70s. The rules were so simple. I took in a plan, they looked at it, hey, it looks good. They almost rubber stamped it. But in the last 20, 30 years, it's gone from bad to worse. It takes a year, two years to get anything approved. Well, not unless you know somebody, then it goes a little faster. But I just want to make these comments, Mayor. I hope you would analyze everything to what I said and make it very simple. That's a good common sense way of running anything. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fack. Any, any other members of the public who wish to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone who wishes to speak against this proposal? Anyone in opposition? Hello, Mr. Matsui. Oh, my name is Art Matsui. I, I'm the development chair for the community of Ramsey. And I just want to speak against uh, section 4C1. Um, it seems that um, building height is set in the bylaw, and this would allow them to gain extra height, say, you know, three meters for a mechanical room. And I'm, my point is that the um, to the neighbors, if you say 10 meters, it's not 13 meters with a mechanical room on top. It should be 10 meters total height. And uh, um, just because there's no usable floor area associated with the element, this, at the same issues would apply as to shadowing and um, massing, regardless of what is contained in that um, in that part in that part of the building. And. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Matsui. Were there any questions from members of council for Mr. Matsui? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak against this proposal? Anyone else wish to speak against? Oh, 
Oh, I saw someone moving, but not for that. All right. Um, then uh, members of council. Alderman Lowe, are you moving the recommendations? Second. Uh, I heard it. Alderman Chabot, thank you. Um, so, any discussion on these recommendations? Uh, yes, Alderman Hodges. Thank you, Worship. Um, yes, Mr. Kimber, sorry. I'll see you there for a second. Mr. Kimber, Mr. Matsubi was referring to a section of the bylaw, I think, uh, that's before us. Uh, I don't see a section four, doesn't jump off the page at me. Have you identified the section? He said 4C7, page two. So if you look, if you look at page two of the, uh, of the proposal, Alderman Hodges, section D, that's what he was referring to. Well, on my page two of 34, there, ah, it's up above there. Mr. Kimber, I've, uh, I found it. One just has to look through it. I discovered it uh, above the section that we were talking about earlier. Um, so grade variations within the parcel is mentioned in D, sub C.1, and uh, design elements of the building that extend above the EF line. What's your contemplation of how much discretion this would give the department in uh, looking at a development permit, Mr. Kimber? Your Worship, uh, that's a, a good observation uh, with res uh, discretion, and that's an important thing to remember with uh, the amendments that are being proposed is that uh, these applications will be managed by the development authority through the use of discretion. Um, the kind of building elements that we're really contemplating with this are things uh, that we see commonly uh, in a lot of commercial, especially office, mixed-use buildings. Uh, you probably see interior atriums and atrium roofs that would uh, project above the above the eave line so it gives us that ability to manage those kinds of architectural elements that'll improve the design of the city and and as well at, at the same time your worship the development authority can can manage issues such as shadowing etc the other thing that's important to uh, remember is uh, something that mr matsui said which is that uh, the the amendments will not add any additional any additional floor area uh, i see that that's fairly clear thank you alderman pincott um, sorry, just for clarification, has the item been moved? Yes, it has. Okay. Um, I actually I have a problem with with the section that we're that uh, that Mr. Matsui raised and that we've just been talking about. I think that it, it when we start looking at contextual impact, uh, having um, the, as I read this exemptions to maximum height based on grade, which can already amplify contextual impact as well as making sure that it can well saying it can go above eve line as long as there's no usable floor area again contextual impact can be quite significant in those is that am i interpreting those kind of exemptions appropriate properly your worship uh, i think um i think the observation that you it's it is possible to add additional building height uh, is true, um, without question. Okay. Um, the, the key with these amendments is, again, that um, most of the building elements that we're talking about would be ones that w the development authority would be um, evaluating and um, taking into account the context and the potential impact on adjacent parcels, okay. um, um, and mostly related to building design. Okay, thank you. Um, if you'd recognize me at second reading for an amendment, please. All right, will do, thank you. Uh, Alderman Carra. Thank you. Um, the move to remove uh, architectural feature from height restrictions is something that's taking place across North America right now, but it's done being done within the context of a much more comprehensive sort of design approach. On the end of 9th Avenue in Inglewood, we have something that we all refer to, unfortunately, as the Inglewood Gable. There was a uh, developer who was several feet over the maximum height restriction and was busted for that. 
and was forced to chop off the top of the house. So you have this peaked roof that then uh, comes to a flat end, and it's, it's there for all time. And the question is whether that height restriction is more of a negative impact than an actual finished peak roof. So I mean, I think these are things that we have to discuss. I wonder whether sort of nibbling at the edges is the appropriate way to go about it. I don't know how I, I feel about this amendment. I think that there are issues, but there are also benefits. And again, I feel like we're nibbling at the edges. Um, Alderman Lowe, you moved it. Are you, are you intending to close? I think I've got some other lights on here. So Alderman Marr. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, with regards to some of the uh, comments that I'm hearing around the table, I'm wondering that uh, if this is still appropriate for us to be discussing, and perhaps now we could actually refer it back to to uh, to committee to be able to have a more fulsome discussion with our uh, with our constituents and our citizens. I think that uh, there are some challenges that uh, that are being faced by communities when they're looking at these different types of contextual amendments. And uh, at this time, I would like to uh, open it up for debate as to whether or not we, we should refer this back to, uh, to, uh, to, to committee to have an opportunity to have citizens engage with us directly. Are, are you moving that, uh, Alderman Sorry, Moore, yes, or are you I asking am. it rhetorically? No, I am, I am moving that at this time. Uh, so I would like us to, uh, to refer that back to committee for us to be able to have this discussion and engage with citizens. And uh, I think that would be best to, uh, to, uh, to LPT, Special Standing Policy Committee on uh, Land Planning and Transportation, of course, back to, uh, and I'd be willing to, to uh, get suggestions as to time and when that could be done. All right, so we've got a motion on the floor to refer this item back to Land Use Planning Transportation Committee. Do I have a seconder? I'll second it, George. Alderman Hodges, all right, seconded. Uh, Alderman Chabot, thoughts? Well, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I ask, of course, as chair of that committee. <laughs> we do have a, um, a rather full agenda for this coming Wednesday, and I've already heard mention that there's uh, going to be some suggestions on moving some other items to the next uh, Standing Policy Committee in December. Uh, I'm not sure when we could debate this likely um, in December, I guess, but uh, it wouldn't be coming back until January for us to uh, then vote on. I don't know what the implications would be uh, from the administration's perspective in regards to these amendments and how they impact applications that are coming forward between now and then. So. I will defer to Mr. Watson. Okay, I believe Mr. Watson does have a point of view on this. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Yes, I do. Um, first, a matter of clarification. These matters did not go to LPT. These are amendments that are normal amendments that we're bringing forward through Planning Commission, which has a responsibility to report to you. Uh, many of these amendments are amendments that we have been working with the industry and with the communities in terms of making the bylaw more efficient and effective and moving things along. So yes, there's a large number of applications that have had impacts. Now with the specific one, um, certainly if that's an issue that council wishes to refer back, well, council can refer all back and there's a motion in front of you to do that. Uh, I would suggest that this is one part of a whole series of, a, I think, fairly positive amendments. But of course, we'll do which whatever council wishes, if council wishes to have discussion. If you want us to take this out and discuss it with the community, I would suggest you're probably looking at six months minimum. Um, we are bringing other amendments through that we have been discussing with the community, Mr. Kimber, and I believe some of those, despite my urging to move it faster, have taken numerous months to get it back to committee. These are not things that you can discuss with the community quickly. And if that's council's wish, we can certainly do that that will have impacts also on other matters that we're working on because we can bring those forward while we're undertaking uh, discussions with the FCC and others. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Mr. Watson. So just uh, for Council's edification, there were a couple things I heard there. One is that LPT may not be the appropriate place uh, and that two, referring back, may require um, a new public hearing. 
and that council does have the option to refer back the contentious point rather than the entire bylaw. So I just wanted to ensure that that was on the table. Alderman Pincott. Well, thank you, Worship. And, uh, and I'm, I'm certainly not interested in throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. I think that there is one section that we've, we've uh, that I uh, have concerns with when I, when I look at, uh, at contextual redevelopment that is occurring throughout my ward. Um, and I, I, have, I have concerns with the, the section that we are talking about, which, what, which, of course, my amendment isn't on the floor yet, uh, but my amendment would have Deal been to them. remove both of those at that point. Um, <clears throat> it might be uh, more appropriate then to remove them and refer <clears throat> that section uh, back to administration for further consultation with the public. Uh, rather than referring the entire uh, set of amendments to one committee, a commission, or another. So okay, at so, point, so at this so point, you're not making, you're not putting that amendment on the floor I, at this I'm, moment. You're just warning I'm, us. I'm, I'm that suggesting this is that we we've. So I would suggest then that we vote down the referral, Thank you. and then at second reading, remove. The, that section and refer that back to administration. Okay, thank you for that clarification. So Alderman Pincott is suggesting that there's another procedural way of moving forward, uh, which as he puts it, may not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Alderman Carra. Thank you, I mean, further to my earlier comments, I think what we're talking about here is a qualitative assessment that we're trying to make and we're trying to capture it within a quantitative measuring scheme. And that's where sort of the disconnect and I think where a lot of the issues come from with regards to the community. Uh, General Manager Watson referred to extensive community uh, consultation with regards to- Your Worship, on a point of procedure. Uh, who said that? I said that. Oh, Alderman Chabot, yes. I'm just curious, are we debating a referral at this point? We are debating the referral at this point. Referrals are not debatable, except as to time. So that's why ah, I'm asking thank the you. question. Thank My you. apologies for going into the weeds then. No, no problem. In fact, um, Alderman Chabot is correct. Page 117 of the 175 page procedure bylaw that we've all memorized over the weekend. Um, so in that case, we're, I'm gonna have to have to yield the floor, Alderman Carra, and we will in fact move to a vote on the motion to refer. So. Your Worship, point of order. Yes, Alderman Marr. Uh, if it pleases council, I could withdraw my motion. We could uh, therefore and my seconder, of course, concurs. Second, second and we first. could then uh, move to first reading, and then Alderman Pincott could uh, propose his amendment, which I think we're all amenable to, at second reading, if that uh, pleases council. Thank you. You are all being so helpful today. Thank you. Um, the motion's been moved and seconded. It's now the property of council. So council. So we, are, we are stuck with it, but we can dispose of it quite quickly, I think. So let's just try that, shall we? On the motion to refer, are we agreed? Any opposed? Okay, so that motion then, do we have to do, do we have to call the vote then? Very well. Alderman Carra. Alderman Chabot? No. Alderman collier -Cart. No. Alderman DeMong? No. Alderman Farrell? No. Alderman Hodges? Yes. Alderman Jones? No. Alderman Keating? No. Alderman Lowe? No. Alderman McLeod? No. Alderman Marr? Alderman Pincott? No. Alderman Putmans? No. Alderman Stevenson? No. Mayor Nenshi? No. That's lost your worship. All right, so we now are still debating the uh, recommendations. So what I could propose is we could uh, ask Alderman to low to close on the recommendation uh, and then uh, look at any proposed amendments when we get to second reading of the bylaw. So Alderman Lowe. Well, thank you, your worship. And uh, I've been listening very carefully here and we are in fact even with the amendment, I suggest at a very great risk of tossing the baby out with the bathwater. As has been pointed out by administration, this, this, this process has gone through a, a lot of study and a lot of work to date to arrive where it is. The uh, extension of authority to the authority to, to uh, look at building height under two very restrictive situations uh, was uh, discussed extensively at Planning Commission, I might add. The thing that I think Council has to bear in mind is that until a f uh, 
a further refinement of this, I think in, in response to what Alderman Carra is talking about, is made that every development permit that comes through where this happens is appealable. Mm -hmm. So in the meanwhile, if we stop what we have and move forward six or eight or 12 months while we do and what would be a fairly extensive uh, public consultation process, uh, what we're going to have is an industry uh, and applicants who are frustrated by the prescriptiveness of the bylaw that the administration is, is required to uh, uphold. We have an avenue here to alleviate that in the meanwhile. The stopgap and the protection, Your Worship, is in the appeal process. So I'm going to ask Council to uh, pass, uh, to support the amendments that have been put in front of it. I would invite those members who are concerned about this element to go through the uh, notice of motion or a motion arising process and get the matter out there while we have some relief during the period of time, and it will be a lengthy period of time, uh, to further quantify, uh, again, uh, looking at, listening to what Alderman Carraw had to say. So uh, on that, Your Worship, I'm going to ask Council to support it as put, ask uh, Alderman Pincott if he would like to look at a motion arising to re-examine this in the public domain, but allow administration to move forward without the ongoing frustration and concern that applicants in the industry are currently having with the bylaw. Closed. Thank you, Alderman Lowe. So just to clarify the process at this juncture, and Madam Clerk will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm certain, uh, what we have on the floor right now is the recommendation to adopt the proposal and to give three readings to the proposed bylaw. If we pass this, we will then go to the three readings on the proposed bylaw. Uh, unlike the other three readings of the bylaws that we've done to date today, which we went through them quite quickly, we'll have an opportunity for discussion at that point, and I suspect Alderman Pincott will have an amendment to bring up. All right? So if we pass this, we get to the point where we can discuss the amendments. So then, on the recommendations, are we agreed? Any opposed? Very well. On the first reading of the bylaw then, are we agreed? Any opposed? On the second reading of the bylaw, Alderman Pincott. Well, thank you. And um, I appreciate what Alderman Lowe has, has said about uh, about industry frustration around this. Uh, and I can only relate uh, as well the uh, community frustration around the contextual rules. And this seems to me uh, a further relaxing of potential contextual rules. I think we have uh, um, the infill guidelines which provide uh, provide solid contextual rules that will obviously still be still apply, and I think that uh, that further sort of uh, loosening or allowing of exemptions of the authority, and then putting the onus further on community to appeal, I think is is not appropriate at this point. So, with that in mind, I will I would like to place an amendment to remove. Um, the uh, item 1D, uh, which is uh, inserting the new section 40C.1 uh, into the land use bylaw. I would like to remove that okay. uh, from the current, from the bylaw that is before us and refer that section back to administration for further consultation. Very well. And Alderman Mar, you're seconding that? And that was the uh, only amendment you have? Uh, that is the only that? amendment, but I just, just for clarification, if I am referring it back, do I need to have, uh, that would be a separate motion. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll start with the first one, which is to remove item D from this proposed bylaw change on the amendment to remove item D, Alderman Carra. This is discussion to that? Yes. Uh, General Manager Watson described that there was extensive consultation with industry and community. I can imagine there being extensive consultation with industry fed up with uh, being held back from what was the extension with community? Because I mean, and, and I refer again to my anecdote about the Inglewood Gable, which I don't think served anybody. Mr. Watson. If I could, Your Worship, thank you. Through the chair, um, there wasn't. Well, I'll let Mr. Kimber describe the consultation for these particular amendments. 
we have been discussing contextual issues with the community now, I would suggest, for most of 2010. I can't speak on the specific, the specific section, whether that was one that uh, garnered a lot of input, but we have been working with uh, the FCC and a subcommittee of the FCC on a number of matters, and in fact, there are reports coming to LPT on some of these issues coming up in the next, not this month, but next month, as a matter of fact. Um, in terms of industry, uh, where this comes, we have an ongoing monitoring committee, which Mr. Kimber organizes, which is part of the whole idea of keeping the bio alive and up to current. We look at areas, as Alderman Lowe pointed out, that are just frustrating either the industry or the, com the community, and we try to come forward with changes. Um, I think in this particular case, it's really a situation where either the communities are going to appeal because they don't like what's being approved, or the industry is going to appeal, applicants are going to appeal because they don't like what it is being refused. And it all ends up at SDAB at some point, one way or the other. Uh, we are trying to find a way, and the way this was written was to say that we're not adding any more floor space. All we're trying to do is make these minor relaxations such that something we can do as opposed to telling an applicant, as your example would indicate, the fastest way is to sort it out is to chop the roof off and, and then move on. Yeah, again, if you want us to go back, we can certainly uh, go back and talk to either the, well, both the industry and the community. Uh, as I say, the committee that Mr. Kimber organized or is working with has representatives from both sides of the table. I hope that answers the question. Can I ask a question of Mr. Kimber? One moment, one moment, Mr. Kerr. I think Mr. Kimber was going to uh, add something on the consultation, yes? Yes, Your Worship, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, I apologize to Council. I, I kept my presentation brief uh, this morning uh, in the sake of time, but one of the things I perhaps didn't emphasize clearly enough is that the amendments that we're suggesting to height are not related to contextual measurements and they're not related to multi-residential or low-density residential development. The height amendments that we're proposing are strictly related to where a height modifier is used for commercial or industrial development. Um, so it would mainly be um, for fairly uh, significant commercial structures that are already reaching significant heights in commercial industrial areas. So they're not contextual, they're not residential in nature. Um, and I should also note that when we, when we met with industry and discussed the, uh, the issue of the modifiers, uh, we did do a review of our development permits for commercial and industrial development over the last several years to see what type of an impact the proposed amendment would have on development. The, the gross majority of development did in fact already meet the height maximums without the need for this type of modifier. It was usually, or this type of clause, the, the instance when this type of clause would be most useful was really uh, what we found is when there was a feature with the building, usually uh, an internal sort of atrium roof uh, that was set back from the facade of the building was employed. Uh, in terms of um, community consultation, Your Worship, um, we did draft the amendments and circulate them to uh, a number of organizations, including uh, the Building Operators Management Association, uh, National Association of Industrial and Office Properties, Urban Development Institute, as well as the Federation of Calgary Communities, and uh, none of these organizations expressed any reservations or opposition uh, to the motion. Uh, we also discuss these amendments at our stakeholder committee. We do have a regular committee that includes representatives of both industry and communities, and we discussed it extensively. It was generally supported, uh, I believe, uh, um, uh, all members in our ongoing sustainment committee supported the uh, amendments. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Alderman Carr, you still got the floor. Well, I mean, I think in light of the information that this is not about sort of neighborhood scale or neighborhood impacting development, I appreciate the emotion that Alderman Pincott and Mar have uh, sort of supported uh, for, I don't even know how to talk to it. What, what is it exactly that we're, no, it's, it's, but you guys are making a referral or? It's an, an amendment, an amendment, amendment to the bylaw. To the second reading, okay. Yes. Just, just an amendment to the bylaw. That's the easy way to think about it. Okay, so the amendment to the bylaw that Alderman Pincott and Marr are recommending, I think, are not as appropriate given this new information, and I think I'd be interested in responding to or, or going with Alderman Lowe's recommendation of second and third reading unamended. Alderman Lowe on the amendment. 
Well, Your Worship, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Kimber for filling in the filling in the, the uh, information for us. And uh, on that, uh, Council, I ask you not to support the amendment. If there are concerns, again, uh, it can be brought up to a notice of motion or motion arising process. But uh, this is commercial. This is not contextual. And uh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Lowe. Any other discussion on the amendment? On the amendment. Alderman Pincott to close. Well, thank you. And thank you for the additional information, Mr. Kimber. But my concerns still stand. Uh, as, we, as we move forward with Planet Calgary and the new NDP, MDP, and we start looking at those interfaces when we start looking at intensity, we are putting uh, more commercial uh, in close context to uh, establish, establish communities. And I think that within, within that framework, I think that this is still something that we need to look at. So I would ask you to support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Pincott. So on the amendment, the amendment again is to remove Section D from the proposed bylaw. On the amendment, are we agreed? agreed. Opposed. 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 All right, can you call the roll, please? Alderman Stevenson. Opposed. Alderman Carr. Opposed. Alderman Chabot. No. Alderman DeMong. Opposed. Alderman Farrell. No. Alderman Hodges. Yes. Alderman Jones. Alderman Keating. No. Alderman Lowe. No. Alderman McLeod. No. Alderman Marr. Yes. Alderman Pincott. Yes. Alderman Putmans? Yes. Mayor Nenshi? Yes. That's lost, Your Worship. Thank you. So then on second reading of the bylaw, unamended, not amended, are we agreed? Authorization for third reading of the bylaw, are we? Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Hodges. <laughs> um, so let's just do that again. On second reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Opposed? Alderman Hodges, Alderman Marr. Authorization then for third reading of the bylaw. Authorization, are we agreed? Any opposed? All right, we can move then to third reading of the bylaw. Are we agreed? Any opposed? All right, thank you, Alderman Marr. Oh, and Hodges, I'm sorry. Um, all right then, we'll then move to item 8.2 on our agenda. That's a lot of flipping through 8.1 here. Um, now, this is a non-statutory public hearing. In other words, it is not uh, required by statute, but it is the recommendation that we hold a public hearing on this issue of downtown underpass urban design guidelines. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Dow. Good morning, Your Worship and members of Council. Item CPC 2010-122 is the Downtown Underpass Urban Design Guidelines. The Downtown Underpass Urban Design Guideline has been created to provide comprehensive urban design guidance for the future design of any new underpasses and for the anticipated improvement of the existing CPR underpasses. These urban design guidelines will assist internal staff and consultants in future underpass upgrade work they will also grade, guide discussions with landowners regarding applications on lands bordering underpasses. This work originated in the extensive process around the design of the 4th, 4th Street Southeast underpass currently under construction. Through wide-ranging engagement, including consultant and stakeholder design workshops, a number of key design principles were derived which provided the inspiration for the design of the 4th Street underpass and ultimately for this document. The eight existing underpasses below the Canadian Pacific Railway right-of-way serve as gateways to the center city, connecting downtown and the Beltline neighborhoods and all areas south. To be effective, these gateways must be both highly functional and comfortable for the varied needs of pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. The current deteriorated physical state of many of these underpasses clearly impacts their effectiveness in fulfilling these needs by discouraging some users, particularly pedestrians and cycl cyclists, from using them. As pedestrian routes, they exist now as some of the most unattractive and uninviting areas of pedestrian realm in the city. 
Their current condition is in fact in contradiction to their importance as significant gateways into the downtown and as critical links to the growing residential population of the Beltline neighborhoods. Okay. This document includes an analysis of the physical and visual condition of each of the existing underpasses based on the observation of a number of consistent elements. This document provides a catalog of both general and specific design guidance for the improvement of underpasses, again based on a number of design elements including retaining walls, the creation of active edges, the inclusion of multi-use pathways, universal design elements, finishes, lighting, landscaping, etc. The Downtown Underpass Urban Design Guidelines respond to the Municipal Development Plan and Calgary Transportation Plan, which encourage the, the creation of a vibrant center city with walkable connections to adjacent neighborhoods and to create an urban environment that promotes walkability and pedestrian connectivity. Also, the Calgary Transportation Plan states that pedestrian and cyclists should be given the highest priority in the planning, design, operation and maintenance of transportation infrastructure in corridors and primary bike routes. Also, that well-designed infrastructure and direct connections between destinations will promote walking and cycling to be seen as the most convenient mode. The Centre City Plan, along with many similar references to improved walkability and connectivity, specifically states that physical enhancements to existing and potentially new vehicular underpasses play an important role in implementing the Canadian Pacific Railway corridor vision over time. The creation of a new development vision for the CPR corridor is a key theme of the Centre City Plan, aiming to create over time a seamless connectivity between downtown and the Beltline. This document is the first of a number of documents that will be produced around this objective of improving connectivity across the CPR corridor. This guideline aims to provide information which will lead to the creation of safer and more comfortable environments for the pedestrians and cyclists, promoting increased underpass use by pedestrians and cyclists and potentially reducing vehicle trips into downtown. The production of this guideline included full internal engagement with responsible business units as well as circulation to the CPR, the Calgary Downtown Association, the Victoria Crossing BRZ, the Beltline Community Association, the Calgary Stampede and extensive consultation with the Calgary Municipal Land Corp and their consultants. All responses were productive and, po and positive. I should also add that uh, the uh, guideline was discussed with numerous applicants during the, its production um, and uh, again the response from applicants was positive and you can see this in um, the results at South Palliser and uh, 8th Avenue Place at Penny Lane which is just uh, coming out of the ground or just being finished now and uh, you can see there are great improvements to those underpass conditions. In conclusion, the Downtown Underpass Urban Design Guideline provides comprehensive urban design guidance which through ongoing implementation will help to realize a number of objectives shared by many current council approved policies. The Calgary Planning Commission recommendation is that council adopt by resolution the proposed Downtown Underpass Urban Design Guidelines in accordance with the Land Use Planning and Policy recommendation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jaw. Um, questions of clarification, Alderman Marr. Thank you, um, Mr. Down. I really, really am very impressed with this document and how well this has has worked out. I know that there's members of the community here to uh, to speak to it, but um, I really wanted to pass along my congratulations and, and how pleased I am as the uh, one half of the downtown, how well you were able to take this vision and implement it through your team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, that was not a question of clarification, Alderman Marr. I think it was well received, so we'll let it go. Alderman Hodges on clarification. Down has, uh... Mr. Down, has there been any uh, contemplation of um, what the ultimate capital budget cost would be to implement these recommendations? Uh, there has not. There has been discussion with transportation about uh, future renovation of the underpasses, but a uh, schedule, a timeline, and budget has not yet been arrived at. Because, uh, you know, obviously it's a comprehensive report, it's an ambitious uh, project. Um, even I have uh, received uh, the uh, number of, a few complaints about the, uh, these underpasses and uh, who lives, who lives there. And, um, I can I can see it being a uh, a major project someday. 
The document was produced in anticipation of work being completed over time, even with no current timeline in place. We just wanted to be ready. We wanted to give uh, clarification to the council direction that we already had to, uh, to produce these guidelines. Okay, thank you, Worship. I'll sit down. I understand there may be some speakers. Thank, thanks, Alderman Hodges. Again, on clarification questions prior to the public, Alderman Chabot. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Mr. Down, why, I'm just curious, because uh, we broke in July and I hadn't seen anything on this other than the 4th Street underpass and all of the work that was undertaken to uh, provide what um, is going to occur there. And this appears to be very much a reflection of what um, what was decided on at 4th Street, which has its own unique characteristics. Uh, the fact that there's very little development in the immediate area, so it provides tremendous opportunity for redevelopment. But I'm just curious why this is coming directly to council and didn't go through some standing policy committee to be further debated and possibly amended prior to coming to council. Well, as as a guideline, I. Uh I believe uh, it's procedure for it to go to planning commission and directly to council. It's not a recommendation. There's not a. It's not a requirement that these be followed. They are recommend recommendations. Not a requirement. It's not a. These are not requirements. They're guidelines. Yes. Nonetheless, we've seen other guidelines go through standing policy committees in the past. Just curious why this wasn't considered for this particular policy. If somebody can. Give me some direction on that. I think Mr. Watson has an answer for you, Alderman Chabot. Through the chair, Alderman Chabot, it is not, as you point out, crystal clear where the the, uh, the break point is between what goes to Planning Commission or what goes to LPT. And in some cases, we are we have in the past brought things to both committees, which I frankly find to be a little bit of overkill, my opinion, because it is a it takes to double the number of reports, double the, the time, double everything. In terms of these kind of design guideline documents, so the tradition is to bring them through uh, Calgary Planning Commission, who has a responsibility to recommend to council on things such as this in terms of whether this is a good direction to go or not. Certainly, if council wishes to refer this back to Standing Policy Committee on LPT, that, that could be a decision of council, and then we could have that. But, uh, in my history, the majority of these have gone through Planning Commission and not through LPT. Mm -hmm. So this is an on-stat public hearing item. So at this point, we're just getting um, answers of clarification. There's still a Correct. request for the public. Correct. If I may ask you one other point of clarification, uh, Mr. Down, on page three of the CPC report, there's uh, on the third paragraph, it says, the Calgary Transportation Plan contains policy that states pedestrians and cyclists should be given the highest priority, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And it goes to infrastructure in and then there's three dots there before it goes to corridors. Is there is there some words missing in there? Tell me what those words might be. Uh, I believe those words are um, primary cycle corridors. That was the uh, quote that I uh, I stated in its entirety during my presentation. Well, well, I heard you say that, and I was just wondering if that's indeed what those words were that were missing. So this, as far as this set of criteria, is primarily focused around those primary cycle routes and corridors, not just as a general statement. Correct. Thank you for that. Uh, no further questions or clarification. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Alderman Chabot. On clarification questions, Alderman Carra. Uh, forgive me if this isn't a question of clarification. I'm not sure where. I'll stop you. Um, why guidelines and why not design standards? Like, you know, this is this to me. I think this is an amazingly important thing that we do have good gateways to our inner city. That the major pedestrian, you know, exodus that occurs daily from the Beltline to the downtown and back again, uh, walk through an area that we can be proud to, sort of acknowledge as, as being part of the center city. Um, it seems like a lot of time and effort uh, was put into something that should be a matter of course, and then to just have it be a non-statutory, no tooth, teeth involved, uh, you know, why not make these standards? And what was the rationale behind putting all this time in for something that's not just something that has to happen? 
an excellent question and something we discuss often. In this case, um, the, uh, in the case of new underpasses, these are underpasses that uh, we're building ourselves as the city of Calgary, and we felt that uh, the guidelines would, by nature of collaboration and alignment, be adhered to. This whole document was produced collaborative, collaboratively, with, collaboratively, I'm sorry, with transportation, and we had no worries that they would ignore the document in their work. Uh, in terms of making it a requirement of adjacent landowners, that would have uh, been a much larger and, and uh, more involved process. We felt that there was some urgency in just getting these guidelines in place uh, because at the time that we were working on them, there was quite a number of applications and we wanted some consistency of approach. We also had found that uh, all of the developers that we spoke to were very positive about, about the applications and responded very positively, very, very positive about the guidelines. So uh, we, we didn't see the need to go through the much longer and much more involved consultative process that's required around a standard. Okay. One other question, because I mean, I understand this is done through uh, you guys. We have a new urban designer uh, on city staff, uh, and I just, I'd like to. And there was discussion. I think it was uh, at our organizational meeting about the difference between urban design and urban design, like design for urban environments and urban design. And I'm, I'm just, while I have you here, I'm just wondering. What is intended between when you say urban design guidelines? What is, what is your what is the center city's working definition of urban design? You're, you're sliding a little bit away from I the uh, from this particular item. Yeah. Um, we'll allow this one, Alderman Carr, but please stick to uh, the issues on the item, Mr. Down. Well, I should uh, perhaps say that even though we are urban design and heritage centered in center city planning and design, we actually are now working citywide. So our, our definition of urban design is going well beyond, uh, well beyond the center city. And I think we're working at all levels. We're working at that urban design level, that small scale level, that uh, getting it right at the sidewalk level. And we're, looking, we're, we're working at a larger regional commercial level, for example. So we're working at both scales that I think you referred to in your both big, small def definition of urban design guidelines. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kara. Um, again, on questions of clarification to administration, Alderman DeMong. Uh, if, if, in your word, if this document Mike. Thank you. Okay. If this document is, in, in your words, uh, hopefully to be adhered to uh, from, from going forward, shouldn't this then definitely be going to LPT for public discussion and, and comment? I, uh, it adhered to internally was uh, what I referred to, but um, as Mr. Watson uh, mentions, uh, certainly that is a possibility, but with a guideline such as this, it's not our standard practice. And, and for clarification, Aldrin Dumong, we're in a non-statutory public hearing, so the public has an opportunity to discuss it now. Okay, thank you. All right, any other members of council with questions of clarification? All right, then we'll open up the public hearing portion. Any members of the public present today who would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Any members who would like to speak in favor? Sir. Your Worship, members of council, my name is Rob Taylor. I'm president of Beltline Communities, Calgary's most vital and most established urban district. First, I'd like to thank the Center City Group for preparing and for moving forward the downtown underpass guidelines you're now considering. I'd also like to thank Calgary Municipal Land Corporation for proceeding with the 4th Street Southeast underpass that our community on the other side of the tracks has sought for over two decades. We all know it's a game changer, both for East Village and for Beltline Stampede. Primarily, however, I'd like to speak to the rest of the report, to taking action to 
to get the rest of the underpasses improved. And primarily, I'd like to emphasize the very high impact that this report's early implementation would have. At the beginning of the decade, the then separate communities of Victoria and Connaught came together with two goals. The first was to reinvent land use and development regulation across both community districts. That one has progressed substantially. And the second was to identify key urban design, and by that I mean public realm, projects that would enhance an urban way of life across the Beltline. We called that initiative Beltline Initiative. In 2003, Beltline Initiative released two core documents, Blueprint for the Beltline, primarily addressed private development, and Rediscovering the Center dealt with public works, heritage, and social environment. Seven years ago, to the council, before the council, before this one, Beltline Initiative proposed that the most important urban design priority for central city Calgary, as we then called it, was, as we then put it, to weld Beltline to downtown. This welding job involved, among other things, two key public realm projects. These were one, streetscapes and operations on 10th, 11th, and 12th avenues, and two, connectivity. To start with, improving the underpasses and building out north-south pedestrian and bike corridors. To some, improving the underpasses may seem rather ordinary, more like maintenance than real urban design. But for those who live and work in the center city, making these underpasses more inviting and comfortable is high impact, very high impact. This design brief is the right stuff. It may not have the huge appeal of planning from 50,000 feet, and it's somewhat difficult to dress up in the rhetoric of vision. Nevertheless, this report is plain, solid, grounded, pragmatic urban design. It's got the plan and the priorities right, and it's consistent with Council's strategic outcomes. When people can walk and bike back and forth between Beltline and downtown, with ease at all hours of the day and night, with confidence, with the perception of safety, and with some reasonable degree of aesthetic pleasure, they will do it. And in the public domain, when it comes to enhancing center city vibrancy, that's the best metric of success. Weld the Beltline to downtown. It's a big win. Enhancing the underpasses won't solve it all, but it is the low-hanging fruit. Beltline asks that you read these guidelines as an action plan, that you act in the near term on this straightforward and achievable initiative. Thank you. I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Perfect timing, I might add. Um, and let me take the prerogative of the chair just to thank you personally and to thank the Beltline communities for all the good work you do in helping us make the center city work better for the people that live and work there. Thank you. Alderman Marr, a uh, question for Mr. Taylor? Not question, but you sort of stole my thunder there, mate. Sorry. Um, again, uh, as, uh, as the Alderman for Ward 8 and host of, of Beltline communities, certainly we are very grateful for you come today and speak about your impact and, and uh, how this is going to affect the connectivity for downtown, especially for pedestrians in our new Planet Calgary environment. Uh, this will make things safer, it will make it more efficient, and it will be felt uh, immediately. So we do appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Taylor? 
Thank you for being us with us today, Mr. Taylor. Other members of the public who'd like to speak in favour of this proposal? Anyone else who would like to speak in favour of the proposal? Mr. Feck? Uh, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Alderman, my name is Oscar Feck. Like I mentioned, I lived here since 1952. I have been going to the Planning Commission and going to City Hall for over 20 years. The Planning Commission does not allow <coughs> any public input. That's part of the problem. It's, uh, and I have applied to sit on some of the committees. I was always denied by the ex-mayor and the alderman. Uh, I have traveled quite extensively, uh, uh, 30, 40 countries. And I've did some business in the States, some land development. The city of Calgary has not worked on the infrastructure at all. Why aren't we doing it? We must plan ahead, 50, 30, 20 years, 10 years ahead. I've been speaking out on these issues. Even the new subdivisions have bottlenecks. It takes just common sense planning. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what's right and wrong. It seems like guidelines, it's the same thing as planning. But we create a monster of a bureaucracy that we have to create, that we must charge a lot of money or we have to hire planners from from outside the city department. And planning is very simple. We, might, we create so many studies. The studies cost more than, than get the work done. The city spends hundreds of millions of dollars for studies. We should do this, we should do that. We don't have to do all these things. I was a builder. This one time, uh, engineer designed, I was supposed to put in precast. I said, look, isn't it a lot cheaper to put in a, a place concrete? And he said, no, no, it's a lot cheaper precast. I just want to give you this example. When I got the prices done, he said, it was double the price. What I'm saying is, he wouldn't believe me, but then he said, Oscar, you're right. So, so we changed the plan at his own cost. What I'm saying is, let's get back to use some common sense. I've been here for so many years. I see the whole city, whole city hall going from bad to worse because we don't do any good common sense planning ahead. And like I indicated, the public should have an input at the planning commission meeting, but everybody is denied. Thank you, Mr. Feck. Anything else specific on the underpass issue? Well, the underpass is the, the fifth street it's nice and wide. The other ones were designed in the 1800s and 1900s. That was planned according to those times. Fourth Street East should be designed to fit what's good for that area, like the stampede grounds and everything else. But are we going to do it? Or are we just planning how much money can we spend to take money out of the city coffers? Right. This is what it seems like. It's all money, money money. Let's plan as cheap as we can, build it, and make it a nice structure, a nice underpass. Where we can link from one area to another area. This is the problem between the Beltline and the downtown core. We have no planning. We're just nicely tied together. Maybe an overpass, two overpasses. Just nothing like that plan. Common sense can tell you that. We, we should do that. All right. As far as uh, 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 by the Palace of Hotel, second, uh, First Street West, mm -hmm. that's a dungeon. We should have changed it years ago somewhat, but we didn't do it. Let's do something from now on. Get the city moving. Create a world-class city. We have destroyed all the old-class heritage buildings, and Global City needs all these buildings. We have destroyed it all, but we can still fix it, make the best we can. I've been speaking out on these issues. Nobody wants to listen. Well, thank you, Mr. Feck. I think that these, uh, these underpass guidelines are certainly uh, in relation to the kinds of things you're talking about. So thank you very much. So let's get it done. Okay, thanks.
Alderman Farrell, did you have a question for Mr. Fack? All right. Um, are there any other members of the public who would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this proposal? Any members of the public present who would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Alderman Farrell. Thank you. Well, it gives me great pleasure to move this item. I want to thank the planning team. I think this is, uh, this is excellent work and it will set in the stage for improvements that will benefit everyone who lives and, and works in the downtown. Um, for the benefit of new council members who aren't aware of the history of this, this item, the whole impetus of this project came out of the 4th Street um, underpass project from East Village where we saw the original plan for 4th Street underpass, a conventional underpass but um, quite inhumane when it, it came to pedestrians and cyclists. And so out of that, um, that design concept for the original underpass came a, a set of principles that we established from a workshop that we had with all the landowners and stakeholders and community um, from East Village to uh, to the Beltline and and heard from those people on how they wanted to make underpasses um, well, more humane and more comfortable for the user. We also heard from this consultation that the underpasses that exist now are impediments to pedestrian movements from the north and the south. And we also heard from the hotel that's south of, uh, of 9th Avenue that the patrons of that hotel or the customers of that hotel refused to walk to meetings or events in the downtown, but instead took cabs because they felt unsafe, particularly women. So um, out of this initiative, I, and I agree with um, some of my colleagues that perhaps this should be embedded into, into um, direction rather than just guidelines. But for now, what we need is we need these set of guidelines to be passed in order to get the funding from the TIPS list. And I think these should be priorities when we look at how we fund our future infrastructure because these are, are very important and, well, they're essential public amenities. And if you walk under them, and I think most of us have, they're in terrible, terrible condition. So I'd like to see us put these um, improvements into the budget one at a time. So I'm very pleased to, uh, to move this item. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Farrell. We have a motion for this recommendation on the floor, moved by Alderman Farrell, seconded by Alderman Marr. Uh, on the motion, Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Your Worship. I do have some additional questions, not necessarily questions of clarification, but uh, maybe helping me to understand some of the things that are stated in this document. Um, just go to uh, to the first one, and hence this this is kind of going to lead into my uh, recommendation that it be referred um, sometime during my debate. But uh, if I may take you to page 22, Mr. Mr. Down, it says here recommendation number five. It says railing should be regularly maintained, including including yearly cleaning and repainting. Now, I would hope that as we move forward, uh, we're going to be looking at railings that won't require painting, like uh, having either aluminum or, or uh, powder-coated type railings that won't require any maintenance, rather replacement, if anything, at some point. I'm just wondering why this statement was put in there, repainting. That didn't envision that, I, I would assume. Uh, well, uh, of course, every underpass would be looked at individually uh, when the implementation rolls out and when the priorities are established. It may be that in some cases the existing railings uh, are fine and can be left with uh, some regular maintenance. In other cases, railings or other uh, elements may have to be completely replaced. This isn't to suggest that every single underpass would be completely rebuilt, but it's, a, it's an upgrade and maintenance program. So you may not always be replacing elements such as uh, railings. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're actually leading into a question, another question that I had in regards to this fairly extensive document um, for uh, a small number of, uh, of uh, networks. Uh, and I'm just wondering why we need something that's so extensive in light of the fact that we plan on engaging all the different stakeholders and addressing each one on a site-by-site -site basis anyway. Well, this, this is intended to essentially set the stage. 
of course, transportation and bridges and structures would have to do their more detailed analysis of the actual conditions. Some of that information from bridges and structures is in here, but there would be a much more detailed structural and uh, vehicle analysis to be done, uh, um, a dimensional an analysis. So that work would be done on an underpass by underpass basis. This sets the stage at an urban design level. It talks about the, the quality of the environment, the, uh, the comfortable nature of materials, these kinds of things to guide those discussions. This is not the technical design manual for uh, underpasses. Yeah. Well, it does make some recommendations that, that the built form would prevent those kind of visions to, to be implemented short of tearing down buildings. I'm sorry, that the built, existing built form or new built form? Existing built form. It talks about um, new built form adjacent to underpasses responding in a different way. Yes. Uh, not building uh, tall retaining walls, but instead trying to open them up with cascading stairs, perhaps even some retail down at the sidewalk level. No, I'm just talking about some of the existing ones. Um, some of the existing structures would prevent some of these visions from being implemented short of short of tearing down those buildings? Well, absolutely. As I say, each one would have to be looked at individually and an assessment made of exactly what's possible, particularly yeah. within the budget allocated. Yeah. Can you help me understand um, on page 26, I think, I think you have that there with you, under uh, number three, it says setback. Now, I read this, this paragraph several times and I still can't really understand what, the, what this means. Because it says the setbacks according to land use bylaw are 2.134 meters. And 1st Street Southeast McLeod Trail and 14th Street have a 5.182 meter setback on both sides of the street. These regulated setbacks will only apply to the north side of 9th Avenue and the south side of 10th Avenue. And, and then it goes on and says 9th Avenue and 10th Avenue, uh, consistent with the land use bylaw and it refers to 2.134 and then 5.182 uh, meters within CPR corridor area. It doesn't say north, south, east, west. Where is 2.134 gonna be? Where is 5.182 meters gonna be? How is it inconsistent? I, I'm just, I'm trying to understand what that says. I just can't figure it out. Well, maybe to simplify it, the areas of road that these underpasses are involved with, the areas of road that go between 9th Avenue and 10th Avenue underneath the tracks do not have the uh, setback requirements. Currently. Currently, okay. they do not. Um, and this is just recommending that setbacks similar to the roads on either side at either end be um, emulated in the any kind of changes to the underpass areas because the setback requirements on there are not there. So this just recommends that those requirements be be matched. Okay, so which of those recommendations, the 2.134 or the 5.182 or where is which? Different setback? setbacks on uh, different streets. McLeod Trail has a different setback requirement, for example, than First Street. In the land use bylaw? Right. And so this is looking at making it things consistent with the land use bylaw in regards to the setbacks? It's just recommending that the setbacks be consistent with the setbacks that are either there both north and south of each underpass. Okay, it just seems awfully confusing. Um, if I can take you to one more question. So we're looking at possibly incorporating some, uh, some density bonusing for contributions to some of the upgrades as part of this whole plan. I think that's on page 54. Uh, Yes, certainly as part of uh, the CPR corridor visioning process, which we just kicked off, off on Friday with a large stakeholder workshop, by the way, um, there will be uh, a whole land use redesignation process and uh, perhaps a density bonusing um, program brought in for the corridor, which could choose uh, contributions to underpass upgrades as something that uh, achieves density bonusing. We're not sure, we're not there yet, but this document just suggests it as, as a possibility. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so, Your, your Worship, I, uh, in, in light of some of the discussions that we've had here and, and having gone through this document 
a couple of times just to try and really understand it. Um, I would like to make a motion to refer um, this to land use planning and transportation, and I do have a calendar here with me to um, at least provide some direction, although um, I'll leave it to Mr. Watson to maybe give me some further direction as to whether or not he thinks that we could uh, deal with this item at the next LPT meeting in December, uh, December the, the 15th, or whether or not we should be looking at referring it to a later LPT meeting. And Through the Chair, Your Worship, Alderman Chabot, uh, I know there are a number of items that are backing up for December. I mean, it's the will of the committee how long the committee wishes to, to sit in December. If c Council wishes to refer it to January, that might, although I know there's several large items all for, for January, so I'm probably not going to be too helpful. We've got a lot of items coming both December and January, so either one. Yeah. It'll just have to fit into the committee's work. Okay, well, we don't have a January agenda yet, so then my referral motion will be to refer to the LPT uh, agenda in January, whenever that may occur. And, uh, and the reasoning behind my referral is, is, is a, a multitude of different things. I think there's some, some things in here that uh, maybe are overly redundant. Um, it's, a, it's a great document, has some great ideas in it. It certainly could be reduced to something less onerous than this large document. In my opinion, there's okay. some significant cost implications associated with this from a capital as well as an operating perspective. I think those things should be debated on a go-forward basis. This, right. uh, this document in itself sets an expectation, in my opinion, in regards to moving forward immediately on some of the needs that we have. and. The issue from my perspective is not just whether or not we can move forward on some of these initiatives, but how we move forward on some of these initiatives and what the cost implications are going to be for it, both from a capital perspective as well as an operating perspective. And I think we should have a, a fulsome discussion, which is not something that is permitted at Calgary Planning Commission, although there is an opportunity here. I think there's a, a much greater opportunity to debate these things uh, at land use planning and transportation. And I think ultimately we could end up with a better document, so. Okay, so we've got a motion on the floor then from Alderman Chabot to refer this item to the LPT meeting in January, presumably to be returned to council shortly thereafter. Um, typically when it goes to committee, it comes returns to council about two weeks after. Okay, do you have a seconder for that motion? Alderman DeMong, thank you. So um, under section 125 of the procedure bylaw, I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, such a motion is in fact debatable, but it does take precedence. So now on the motion to refer, on the motion to re refer, is there any discussion? Um, I have a whole bunch of lights on, so I'm just gonna ask you if it's the motion to refer or the main motion. Alderman Carra? Um, I have a lot of uh, respect and uh, agreement with Worship some of the on procedure. Yes. This is a referral. Is a referral a debatable? In fact, it is. Section 125 of the procedure bylaw does not say it is not debatable. It only says it is not amendable. I thought it was only as to time. Madam Clerk? The, a, a decision to, a, a motion to table is not debatable. A motion to refer is debatable. Okay. But there's a section and subsection. No, there really isn't. <laughs> Alderman Carra. I think it's good that we debate it, too. Um, I think I have, I, I agree with some of the things that Alderman Chabot is bringing up regarding uh, wanting to have a twosome debate and the capital costs and all of those things. But I think that's the kind of uh, motion that you'd make with a design standard. Um, the fact that this, all this work has gone into this, it seems to me to be exactly the kind of thing that we should be doing in the center city. It's exactly the kind of thing we should be doing with the underpass. I also have questions as to why we need to create an urban design treaties just to do something obvious, but obviously we're at that point in time. And so I, I don't see the point of having to refer this to a later date because I think that would that would counteract the point of your whole motion, of Alderman Chabot's whole motion. 
which is to uh, expedite rather than obfuscate or make things more arduous than they already are. So Thanks, I will not be supporting that referral. Thanks, Alderman Carl. Alderman Farrell, is this on the referral motion? Yes, thank you. I, I agree with my colleague, Alderman Kara. Um, this is a, a guideline that sets in uh, the stage for future development, and it sets the stage for improvements and capital commitments. Those capital commitments will be fully debated by council when they come forward. So uh, we've had an opportunity for a public hearing today, and we, um, with our tips list, Alderman Chabot, and we also um, have had had a significant opportunity in the consultation of development of these guidelines and the consultation was very thorough so um, I, I won't be supporting the referral I think it just delays the inevitable thank you Alderman Marr on the point motion of, to point of order your worship yes sir on page 97 of 175 it says uh, no, no amendments shall be made to the following motions to refer except as to time and the reference that you made previously on what is debate. You are correct, Alderman Chabot, but that's for amendments. We're not amending your motion. We're debating it. If you can find a reference that says it's a non-debatable motion, I'd be happy to hear that, but I've made a ruling. Worship, I, I don't have it at hand, but I know that in the, uh, in the Sir, past... if you can find it, you're welcome, to, you're welcome to oppose my ruling, but I've made a ruling based on what I've read. Okay, so if I can conclude my statement, Your Worship. Certainly. Respectfully. Um, in the past, when we've tried to debate motions, Madam Clerk, Di Ms. Diana Garner, um, had made reference to a specific provision in the bylaw that although we tried to amend it to be able to debate referrals, she had referenced a motion in there that says unless other legislation speaks otherwise, that a motion to refer can't be debated. And she did reference a specific point in the bylaw where, whereby we could not. But I don't know if uh, Madam Clerk has found anything additional to that effect. I, I will certainly continue to look for it. Once again, I've made a ruling. I'll refer you to section 112 of the uh, procedure bylaw, which says that the following motions are debatable, including number seven, a motion to refer. So uh, once again, there is a procedure if you'd like to overthrow the, uh, over overthrow, that's the wrong word. <laughs> there is no procedure to overthrow the chair, I'm sorry. But there is a procedure to, uh, to uh, overturn the uh, ruling of the chair. Um, we do have three more people who want to talk about this. I would suggest we just let them talk yeah, about it. No, and Your Worship, if I may just uh, refer to what you just said, that it does say under Section 112S, except as provided elsewhere in this bylaw, and uh, I, my if memory If you can find it, Alderman Chabot, I'd be happy to see it. There was an exception to that <laughs> bylaw, so thank you for that, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Pinkott on the motion to refer. Uh, thank you, Worship, and uh, I won't support this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work that's been done. This is an important document for moving forward with uh, w uh, with an area that, as we've heard, needs that needs that attention. And we certainly heard it from the Beltline community, who's probably more affected than anybody else uh, that uh, that this is needed now. And we have the the public venue now. We have heard from the public. I appreciate very much Mr. Taylor coming here, his, his passion, his caring, his concern for this, and his commitment to making not only his community, but our city a better place. And uh, just uh, deferring that decision is, um, is pointless. So I won't be supporting that. Thanks, Alderman Pincott. Alderman Putman's on the motion to refer. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I would uh, not support a referral. I would also um, like to add a note that we're creating a, a very welcome set of expectations that local investors, international investors, when they come to Calgary, frequently ask, what, what would we be dealing with? This is part of a series of expectations I think we're setting out to the world about what we expect in our developments. Thanks, Alderman Putmans. We're coming close to the break, but let's see if we can dispense with this motion before we get there. Alderman Marr on the motion to refer. Thank you. And uh, echoing the comments of virtually all of my colleagues, I suggest very strongly that we do not refer this because of the fact that we have had an opportunity to hear from the public. We understand that this is part of the public realm. It's very important for our connectivity. It is very much in keeping with Planet Calgary in the new direction that we're trying to move into. And if we want to increase the vibrancy, of our downtown. If we want to increase the safety of our downtown, then this is something that we must do. We are not asking to spend any money at this time. We are only asking that we create a guideline that sets a standard and sets the stage 
for our city, the heart of our city. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Alderman Lowe on the motion to refer. Well, Your Worship, uh, I too won't support the motion to refer. And I, I found it interesting, the discussion around should we, do we need guidelines or do, do we need prescriptive standards? And in fact, Mr. Downs' answers to, Mr. to Alderman Chabot clearly pointed out why you don't want to have prescriptive standards. You don't have to replace a very good railing if it can be painted and maintained. You don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. So uh, on that basis, I think uh, what we have are a set of guidelines. There's not a lot of underpasses, folks. The most interesting conversation I had about an underpass is when uh, CPR was putting in their uh, the building next to the Palliser Hotel and the uh, Alderman Farrell is chuckling when I told them stamped metal didn't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the guidelines are good. They can be applied. They'll be applied by city staff. And uh, let's not uh, refer it. Thanks, Alderman Lowe. Um, finally, to close on the motion to refer Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Worship. You're the last one anyway, Alderman Chabot, so it's kind of moot. But I won't be debating that at this point. Um, now, insofar as the referral motion, well, I, I find it interesting that those members of council that have spoken against the referral, uh, you're either on planning commission or were involved in the drafting of this uh, of this guideline. Um, I would like to say that n during the course of the summer, when this obviously was drafted, um, most of us either were preparing for this election that just occurred or were engaged in some other activity, none of which were related directly to council. And um, I think being as CPC doesn't provide an opportunity for the public to actually come forward, that this is a very a short timeline with an expectation that the public can disseminate what's in here and and have an opportunity to speak to us on it for or against. And so, hence the reason I was making a referral motion is so that the public can have an opportunity to comment on this document and uh, and either make suggestions on uh, additional improvements or, uh, or maybe make some su suggestions in regards to uh, reducing the complexity of this document and us members of council also having a wholesome discussion on this actual document in a, um, an un, a less structured environment where we can ask as many questions as we want and not be limited to standing up once and, and asking questions on it. So members of council, I hope you'll support the referral motion and, uh, and uh, so we can debate this further. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Chabot. So on the motion to refer to LPT, are we agreed? Any opposed? Can you call the roll, please, Madam Clerk? Alderman Collier Cart. No. Alderman DeMong? Yes. Alderman Farrell? No. Alderman Hodges? No. Alderman Jones? No. Alderman Keating? No. Alderman Lowe? No. Alderman McLeod? No. Alderman Marr? No. Alderman Pincott? No. Alderman Putmans? No. Alderman Stevenson? Alderman Carra? No. Alderman Chabot? Yes. Mayor Nenshi? No. It's lost, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, and on that, we are recessed until 1.15. We will take up the main recommendation at that time. Alderman Farrell, would you like to close? Closed. All right then, on the recommendation CPC 2010-122, are we agreed? Opposed? Very well. That takes us to item 8.3, CPC 2010-123, and we are still in public hearing portion. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this item uh, is actually not for a bylaw. This is a fairly straightforward request for a name change to an existing road. Currently, the road is a gravel road servicing uh, acreage development. There is a subdivision involved which will intensify the area. They are requesting that 34th Avenue Southwest, as shown on this uh, location map, 
be changed to Fortress Bay Southwest, the Fortress moniker matching that of all the development ha has occurred uh, directly to the south of the site. Right, and I apologize, these are not, these next three are not actually public hearing items. So I will accept a motion um, to make the recommendation. Alderman Lowe, seconded Alderman Putmans. Any discussion? Right. Are we agreed? Any opposed? Very well. The next one then, CP, carried, thank you. <laughs> CPC 2010-123. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, or one, 124. 124, my apologies, thank 124. Uh, CPC 2010-124 is a request for the use of the name Aspen Acres uh, to help name uh, future roads within the development area of Aspen Woods. All right, and do I have a motion? Uh, yes, Alderman Putman seconded. Alderman Lowe, any discussion? Are we agreed? Opposed? Carried. And 2010-125. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this item is a uh, request to change the community boundaries for the area from Shepherd Industrial to um, Douglas Glen. The area affected uh, is currently shown in gray, which is currently under the Shepherd Industrial, uh, or half uh, in Shepherd Industrial, half in Douglas Glen. The area affected is actually where the Quarry Park is, um, redevelopment area is occurring. This name change will ensure that the entire area of Quarry Park is included under the single community of Douglas Glen. Uh, the area which will form the boundary of Douglas Glen includes those uh, residential lands on the south as well as the area shown in gray. All right. We are recommending that council adopt by resolution the new uh, community boundaries. Thank you. And do I have a motion? Alderman Keating, seconded Alderman Lowe. Did you want to speak to that, Alderman Keating? All right. Any other discussion? Are we agreed? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. All right, we move now into the regular portion of our meeting. So we'll do a little musical chairs here as we get to um, agenda item 9.1.1 uh, as we begin with uh, executive reports. Hello. So, we have before us then item C201068, Assessment Review Board Bill 23, Implementation Budget Report, Deferral Request. On that item, Alderman Hodges. Well, well Your Worship, um, I know this goes back uh, to last year, and I'm sure uh, uh, City Manager Tobert will recall uh, the presentation by uh, uh, our City Clerk, Diana Garner, on what these uh, potential costs, and perhaps now we have an idea of some real costs. I, I, I don't know why you'd want to delay uh, bringing it forward. I doubt she was very far wrong in the additional cost of two to three million dollars. Uh, is that how, is that what you would still estimate, uh, Mr. Tolbert, or no? Mr. Tolbert. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, actually, the estimate was light. But because of the late start of the appeals, we're probably going to end up this calendar year with a fiscal balance. What is looking like is that we have way fewer complaints, but we're looking at having way more go to court. And so we actually haven't experienced the intensity and the cost of going to court yet. So one of the purposes of the delay is try to get a handle on that. Well, I can tell you, you may have some cost savings measures able to come on because I happen to be up at the building doing the SDAB interviews on, uh, fr on Friday. And if you just took the amount of paper stacked on every desk in the hearing room, I'm sure there's a recovery on, <laughs> if you could recycle the paper and uh, recover costs based on a per pound basis. Your Worship, if I might. Um, but you know that we're limited with what we can charge, notwithstanding the size of the, p the piles of paper. Uh, I believe we heard that. Uh, last year too during budget. Thank you. Alderman Chabot on this item. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, this is um, report is as a result of a motion arising that I did in light of some of the discussions I had with the provincial minister. 
uh, in regards to the implications that this might have to the city. And I know there was a significant dollar attached to it, and I thought in light of the fact that we may have fewer appeals that it may actually lessen the load on the city. But as, as Mr. Tobert pointed out, a number of these appeals are now going to court, which has some significant cost implications associated with those as well. So I will move the referral or the deferral in light of the fact that we don't have a year's worth of uh, history to, to make a proper assessment on this. Thanks, Alderman Chabot. Do you have a seconder? Alderman Lowe, thank you. All right, so the motion then on the floor is the administration recommendation to defer uh, this report to no later than 2010, December 13th. Alderman Marr. Actually, just for, to uh, recognize some guests when we have a moment. I'll do it now. All right, uh, sorry for the interruption, but uh, I would like to formally welcome 14 students from the Calgary Catholic Immigration Society. Your Worship, these uh, students are joining us from all over the world, from Tanzania, from the Congo, from uh, Hong Kong and, and mainline China. And uh, they're standing, or they're sorry, they're sitting in the back right-hand corner waving at us. And uh, I'd like to welcome them and ask them to stand so they can be on TV and be recognized by city. Thank you, Alderman Marr, and welcome all of you to Calgary. You enrich us with your presence here, and we wish you every success in your time uh, in your new land. Uh, further discussion on this deferral request? Seeing none, we'll move, we'll move the question. Are we agreed? Any opposed? Carried. All right, that takes us then to C-2010-69, um, Southeast LRT Green Trip Proposal. Uh, the, uh, the recommendations here are to approve option three and report back to LPT no later than 2011 March. Alderman Keating. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the issue going forward today uh, with the suggestion of recommended the option of the Southeast LRT, I as well as many of my colleagues have fought hard on behalf of our constituents to make this issue a reality for the Southeast Calgary. The forthcoming uh, reality for Southeast Calgary is an influx of employment centers, healthcare facilities, and hundreds of thousands of riders. The South Care Health Center, when it's completed, has 280,000 outpatient visits a year. So that alone changes a number of issues. We have Quarry Park. We have a million square foot of office space coming at 130th Avenue. We have 1.5 million square feet of office space coming at Southeast Cal uh, Seton site, 900 square feet of retail. Therefore, seeing in light of that, I so move that item 9.1.2 be referred back to administration and brought back to council through LPT no later than January 2011. So that was Alderman Marr seconding. Um, just for clarification, Alderman Chabot, what's the date? So January 19th. So we have a motion to refer um, back to administration uh, to be bring this to LPT at January 19th and to council shortly thereafter. And uh, for, and yes, Alderman Chabot, we can debate the motion to refer. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes, Alderman Collier Cart. Uh, Alderman DeMar had, had indicated he wanted to second this. Uh, he had his hand up. I didn't know whether he Or Alderman DeMong did? Okay, sorry, Alderman DeMong, didn't see you there. All right, we'll, we'll make that, we'll make that change. Uh, and for Council's information, uh, I did speak with the Minister of Transportation today, um, and he was willing in principle to grant us an extension on the November 30th deadline to at least the end of January. Uh, he was very comfortable with that, understanding that the municipal elections across the province may have changed people's priorities. So I think that we are okay uh, on that front, just anticipating that question. Uh, on the motion to refer Alderman Marr, uh, Alderman call your card actually first. I just support this. I, I think that it helps with the new council get all of our priorities on the table and uh, and uh, give us the time to uh, to look at our long-term plan, as you've suggested, Your Worship. And uh, and I applaud Alderman Keating and Alderman DeMong for their leadership around this. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Alderman Marr? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, again, this is an important strategic move for our for our city and uh, because we have some new members around the table, uh, yourself included, Your Worship, I think it's, it, it is absolutely critical that we have this opportunity to have uh, a really strong discussion on the strate best strategic way to move forward on the Southeast LRT. My, my concern, Your Worship, 
relates back to how this report was generated because we had previous council direction as late uh, in the season as July where we knew that we were going to move forward on this. I'm curious as to how this was able to, to be brought forward with a different recommendation in a completely different um, uh, direction without council direction. Are you asking that question, Alder? I am, Your Worship. Mr. Tobert. Your Worship, if I might just do a brief introduction before I pass it on to uh, GM Logan. There is a deadline at the end of this month that we were working towards, and that's the reason why this report was here, was to give council a choice to determine whether or not they wanted to make a submission for which there was an application deadline at the end of November. So this was the only opportunity that we had to make sure that we got to you to make sure that you could make a choice. Did you want to include something or not? But I pass it over to Mr. Logan to add or supplement to that. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Logan, Worship. thank you. Your Worship, uh, further to City Manager Tobert's comments, uh, we are in a position to go forward with the previous recommendation. Uh, we felt it was important that Council understand the other options that were available to them and what we saw as limit limitations in the original recommendation prior to this decision. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Uh, Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, a few members of Council had a, a pretty comprehensive discussion over the weekend in regards to what options were available to us. And as you indicated, Your Worship, the really, really the only option that um, that lies in our hands at this point is if the province was w willing to extend the deadline and and as members of council all heard Minister Ouellette did contact the mayor and did offer that opportunity for us to extend the deadline which uh, would provide an opportunity for us to have a, a more wholesome discussion on this especially with the new members of council so I'm going to support the referral uh, with the understanding that um, the intent of this this uh, report in my opinion was to uh, state essentially what is shovel ready what we can move on as quickly as possible and that there are a limited number of dollars to go around right now and although the southeast leg is certainly a high priority there's some timelines associated with when we can actually start implementing some of these costs and um, i'm very cognizant of the fact that our economy is turning around to some degree and may likely accelerate in time and uh, the sooner we can action some of these uh, items i think the more beneficial it will be to us as, from a cost perspective. So hope oh, council will support this, but ultimately I think we need to move forward. Thank you, Alderman Chabot. Alderman Lowe. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I have one, one question on the report, if I may, Your Worship, even though we're deferring it. And well, we're debating. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the uh, the uh, one part in that I was confused about is it talks about having to buy properties to build an LRT and yet it seemed to suggest that for a BRT we didn't have to buy properties and yet the BRT was going to follow the same alignment. I was deducing then a devoted carriageway or a dedicated carriageway. And I wondered, have I got it right that we, if, if, we, if we're doing it on a, on a dedicated carriageway, it seems to me that we'd have to buy properties just as we would to put in the tracks. Mr. Logan? Uh, Your Worship, apologize if that wasn't clear in the report it wasn't uh, I guess we didn't really write the report about BRTs but uh, a southeast BRT system using components of the future southeast LRT system would require property purchases both for the right-of-way not so much the right-of-way but uh, particularly for the stations and some modifications adjacent to the tracks they both so then we, we have to acquire properties regardless of the route we go um, BRT is obviously more flexible. We can operate on road, or we can. Di there's different ways that you can implement a BRT system. So. No, I, I appreciate that, Mr. Logan. Thank you. Well, thank you, Your Worship. I'm. Uh, I'm actually pleased to see this, be referred, and uh, there's that kind of clarity that has to be brought around it. I'm. Uh, I've got a lot of difficulties with doing anything that tells Southeast Calgary that LRT is deferred indefinitely. I don't think we can do that. I'm also have terrible problems with mixing and matching our primary transit system between rail and BRT. So these are the sort of things that uh, I'll be looking for. So I'll be pleased to support uh, the referral, Your Worship. Thank you, Alderman Lowe. Alderman Pincott. Well, thank you, and I too will uh, support the referral. Um, 
to to be honest, I I was wasn't actually happy with any of the options. Um, I felt that uh, that when we looked at looking at our our cash flows projected and either putting all of it into the southeast BRT without any certainty of what it would look like beyond a three-year horizon, so we could commit to. Two hundred million dollars, and then not actually get anything at the end of the day after, after the fact. And, th and that route didn't. I didn't like that one, and I certainly didn't like looking at dumping it all into BRTs either. Um, I think that because we are only certain of the first three years of what that cash flow can look like, that. we've got to actually look at what we can reasonably do to meet our expectations in the short term while planning for the longer term, which is the Southeast BRT. So I didn't think that this report met that, uh, met that test. So that is something that I will be looking forward to when this does come to LPT, is looking at how these dollars and how we actually look at, at meeting short term needs and leveraging long term at the same time. So uh, so I look forward to that, and I will support the referral. Thank you, Alderman Pincott. Alderman Carra. I think Alderman Lowe and Alderman Pincott expressed many of the things I wanted to express. <clears throat> I think that uh, a lot of us who campaigned in the Southeast did so with the understanding that Southeast LRT was what the Green Trip funding was going to be earmarked to, and the report raised a tremendous number of questions given that pretty clear directive from council in July. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to uh, agree with everything that Alderman Lowe and Pincott said and, and, and also just state that we have to stop equivocating BRT. You know, we BRT, have to stop what, sorry? Equivocating BRT. You know, BRT is dedicated. <laughs> It does have the flexibility to get onto the regular road system, but at that point, it's an express bus. And I, I think that we, we use that term interchangeably, and I think we have to firm it up. But we can discuss that, and I will be definitely supporting the referral. Thank you, Alderman Carr. Alderman Farrell. Thank you. Well, I'll support the referral, but I have a procedural question. This mm -hmm. um, item came to council just before our council break. I believe it was a motion by um, then Alderman Hawksworth, do we need to have a reconsideration in order to change direction? It was unanimous yeah, in its my, support. My understanding of that, and I'll, I'll defer to Madam Clerk on this one, my understanding of that, Alderman Farrell, is that the um, the notice, uh, the motion from Alderman Hawksworth asked for a report to be made, and the report has been made. And so we're not, recon this is the report, so we're not reconsidering that. Mr. Tully? No. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, Alderman collier I think you've spoken on this uh, referral motion already. There were just a couple of other points I forgot, Your Worship, and that was... Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, and, and you and I had discussed this earlier, but it was about the importance of uh, the motion that I had brought forward and Council supported with a comprehensive BRT uh, plan for the city, a comprehensive plan for the whole city, and that was due in February. And I'm wondering as to time now, how this will be coordinated when the when the matters come forward, or if we have to, in your view, accelerate that report coming forward sooner rather than later. Um, to uh, Mr. Mr. Logan, uh, is it possible for us to have that BRT report at the same time this goes to the LPT on January the nineteenth? Your Worship, I think that that would be a, uh, a valuable report to have simultaneously. And uh, the staff have indicated that, yes, they can have that report available simultaneously. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks for your perseverance. Thank you. Alderman Jones, would you mind taking the chair? Mayor Nenji. First time out of the chair. And I know that's what I'm doing. All right, there we go. I just want to highlight uh, for council colleagues what, we're to, what, we've, what we will decide to do if we make this referral today, and this is a referral that I strongly support. I was not pleased with the idea of us spending quite a lot of money over the long term in the absence of information about what our real priorities are. 
And I would expect that the report that goes back to the LPT on January the 19th will be a comprehensive look at our major transit priorities going forward, including the Southeast North Central LRT lines, proposed Southeast North Central LRT lines, as well as BRT. My challenge is that we have a Calgary transportation plan that envisions a rather aggressive primary transit network. And we're making decisions on pieces of that primary transit network at this level. And what I'm really missing is the bridge. What decisions do we make now to help us build out that full primary transit network? And I really will encourage Council to adopt this referral to give administration and Calgary Transit time to come back to us uh, with the expectation that what will come back will be a comprehensive look at Calgary Transit, budgeted and time bound in terms of what the priorities are. Alderman DeMong. I wholeheartedly agree with what Mayor Nenshi, your worship, was uh, commenting on. Uh, when the report does come back, I would like to take into consideration the aspects of both the concept of the large grants being involved and used for large projects as opposed to smaller projects that can be used on an on, can be spent on an ongoing basis such as developing individual BRT projects as opposed to something as grandio as, as large as the Southeast LRT which you really need a lump sum of money to to develop at one time so please take the, take these priorities into consideration when you make your report seeing no other, seeing no other questions on the motion to refer, are you agreed? Agreed. Opposed? That's carried. All right, then. That takes us to agenda item C2010-70, change to naming rights, Pengrowth Saddle Dome. And I believe we are receiving this one for information, yes? All right, so I'll take a motion to receive that for information. Alderman Jones? Your Worship, uh, this was before the Saddle Dome Foundation and it, uh, there was a letter written by then Mayor Ron Kanye to agree to it. And uh, so for those reasons, we're moving that we received the report for information as it's already been done. Since it's been done already. I heard a second, Alderman Chabot. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Uh, Alderman collier cart to this motion. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just had an amendment that I'd like to have City Clerk put up. Uh, so for our new colleagues, uh, what is our interest in this matter? And uh, we like to be informed of these things ahead of time if possible. Timing did not allow that this time. Uh, but we do have a naming rights policy within the City of Calgary and it's used as a filter to uh, ensure that we have followed the naming rights policy uh, to the extent that we can and we can support the naming. So my amendment was I thought we should do more than just uh, receive for information. It's to endorse the naming of the Scotiabank Saddle Dome in accordance with the City of Calgary naming rights policy. All right, um, and do you have a seconder for that? Doesn't look like it. I'll second that. <laughs> Thanks, Alderman Carra. Um, Mr. Tully, um, any issues with this particular amendment? No, I don't think so, Your Worship. I, th I think, though, that that the Saddle Dome Foundation and the city have essentially consented to the matter already, and so the naming rights have effectively, or the name has effectively changed uh, over the last month or so. So I'm not sure that this actually has gone through the naming rights policy. Perhaps Ms. Hargesheimer could speak to that, but it hasn't, as I understand it, gone through the formal naming rights policy and analysis that's been put in place by Council. Uh, okay, of, that's that's a good point. Because if it hasn't, then that would have concerned me that we, because uh, we've got ourselves into trouble in the past, as some members will recall, that we uh, didn't have the naming rights policy in place. So, uh, I, I think Mr. Tobert has something to say on this item. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Your Worship. Light. Um, this name change has been run by the members. Mr. Tobert, the light. Oh, I'm sorry. Microphone. Yes, um, Your Worship. This policy or the name change has been run by the members of the naming. Uh, committee and it meets the criteria but it wasn't formally or officially run through the committee because the name change occurred through a series of circumstances that involved a number of distractions one of which was the NHL season I think that um, to do this would be as the city solicitor indicated it's after the fact 
the name change has occurred, notwithstanding that, it does comply with the naming policy. And we were very sure to make sure that we knew that before we uh, consented through the Saddledome Foundation to allow that to occur. I think further compounding this a little bit is the fact that this <clears throat> name change is, was being done in order to ensure a continuous cash flow for the, the sports groups that take advantage of the naming rights that come through that, that permission. Um, you worship, it's up to council to decide whether or not you really want to endorse this after the fact or not. It doesn't actually change anything. We're kind of stuck. Right. Uh, right. So because of timing matters, so we sort of in some ways preempted it. But I think based on what Mr. Tobert and uh, Mr. Tully have said, endorse is probably the, uh, the wrong word. It's already happened. So we're just... Uh, uh, affirming that it... We're affirming. There we go. We're affirming that the... And you're saying that it was done in accordance with policy. I just want this on the record. Okay. And, and Mr. Tobert, you're comfortable that this follows the policy? Yes, Your Worship. Okay. So I would say affirming then. Thank you. Okay. That's helpful. All right. Thank you. Um, Alderman Hodges on this amendment. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? All right then. On the amendment, are we agreed? Agreed. Opposed? All right. Carried. Back to the main motion. Alderman Hodges. Uh, Your Worship, uh, I'm wondering, and uh, perhaps Mr. Tolbert or Alderman Jones know, how, how long is the new agreement for? Uh, do we know? Ten years, isn't it? I know. Oh, Mr. Tully, yeah. Your Worship, the new agreement is for 11 years. 11? Okay. There's one year transition and then uh, 10 years of a formal new agreement. And Mr. Tully, I, if you just hang in there for a minute, I've got a question. It relates to something you'll recall. In 1981-82, uh, there was an appeal coming on on a development permit that had been applied for and was approved uh, by the uh, city. However, uh, they weren't sure about uh, these, how that appeal would proceed, so the province stepped in and I believe perhaps through an order in council decided that the, uh, uh, that facility was not under the jurisdiction of the uh, uh, city's uh, bylaw, land use, well we called it bylaw 2P80 at the time, and, uh, or the Planning Act. So to me this is here just as a courtesy, it's not a question of uh, legalities. Well, that's correct, uh, Your Worship. The city has uh, consented to the two previous name changes as a matter of courtesy. That's right. Correct. And so it's here as a matter of courtesy again. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? All right, then. On the recommendation as amended, C-2010-70, are we agreed? agreed? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. We move now to notices of motion. Um, 2010-41, Fish Creek Lacombe LRT Station Area TOD Plan. Alderman Collier Cart. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, members of Council, uh, I uh, circulated this around to each of you to, uh, to uh, give you some background on this item. Uh, just to start off with, the, uh, when I came into public office 10 years ago, uh, we were just implementing and opening the Fish Creek Lacombe Station. At that time, uh, the community was promised that uh, we would do a station area plan because it was such a key location for future uh, urban development in the suburbs, if you will. Uh, it is, uh, it's also such a, a key uh, environmental area uh, since it, it's very close to Fish Creek Park, um, uh, the Shawnee Golf Course, uh, St. Mary's University, and so on. At that time, um, we were told uh, by the Transportation Project Office and others uh, that uh, we'd have to delay that because we wanted to punch uh, the LRT line down to Somerset, Bridalwood, and we wanted to see what the parking patterns would be because most often, more often than not, the greatest amount of parking is at the end of the line. And in fact, that did happen uh, where uh, parking patterns did change. As you will know, up to 25% uh, sometimes of vehicles in those parking lots are from out, out of town. I just thought I'd throw that in. Um, and uh, so uh, then we thought we were all ready to have a station, air, uh, uh, station plan done. And, uh, and they said, no, uh, what we need now, uh, administration says, was a, uh, a TOD policy. 
So then we went through about uh, two or three years of uh, consultation in Calgary with uh, various communities and uh, we brought in some of the best thinkers and expertise around to come up with a, uh, I think, a quite a remarkable uh, transit oriented development uh, policy. Uh, so then we thought, well, now, now we'll get the uh, TOD, the station plan done. Uh, but then that resulted in us ranking all of the TODs, all of the stations uh, throughout Calgary. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, most of the stations on the South Line were ranked as number one priority stations for redevelopment in the future. Uh, but uh, uh, when I made the amendment, uh, I think probably a, uh, two years ago in October, uh, it, it turned out that uh, we couldn't have both. The, uh, the decision was made that uh, Anderson Station would be chosen to have a, a, a station area plan done. And so we've spent two years of work on the uh, Anderson Station plan. So what my motion is asking for is for administration to uh, bring back um, an idea of what resources would be required for un us to undertake this work uh, to uh, bring forward a, uh, a plan uh, for, for this area and to report back with what resources would be required uh, during our November budget discussions so that this could then be put in the queue with everything else uh, as far as the resources required and if we will have to make uh, amendments to uh, increase the resources required. Uh, so uh, just to close my introduction, uh, what I can say, Council, is I was, uh, I, I'm very impressed with the work that Alderman Farrell did and others uh, on the downtown underpass urban design guidelines. And I was writing down some of your comments that I thought resonated uh, with what the aspirations are of people uh, that live down south, uh, whether it's St. Mary's University and their campus expansion plan, which would be part of a TOD plan. Uh, but uh, Alderman Farrell said it sets the stage for future development and, uh, and that consultation was very thorough in coming up with this plan. And uh, uh, other comments that were made, uh, uh, Alderman Carra said that it's, the exactly, it's exactly the sort of thing that we should be doing in the center city. And I'm saying that this is exactly the sort of thing that we want to see starting to happen uh, in the suburbs where we have key LRT stations that really need to set the standard uh, uh, with some intentional thinking and planning around, uh, uh, around what we do in the future. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot about to happen in this area, Council. Um, there's a potential of redevelopment of the Shawnee Golf Course. There's the potential for um, uh, redevelopment of St. Mary's University. Uh, we have, as it currently stands now, three high, uh, three high rises that are intended to be built there, although unfortunately it's in receivership and we only have one of those there now. So there's a lot to be considered uh, that I'm asking for your support on this notice of motion and I look forward to your feedback. Alderman Collier, before you set, I just yeah. have, a, I have a question for clarification. Um, in the first um, action clause, you resolve that administration be directed to commence the plan. And in the third one, you ask that uh, they report back to council on the resources required. When you say commence the plan, am I to understand you're saying cost it out? Yes. And then we'll decide on whether or not to actually do it yes. once it comes to budget. Yes, thank okay. you. Just to be clear, because it sounded a bit like you were saying start it and also tell us how much it's going to cost. But. No, I, I knew I'd never get that by council if they didn't know what it was going to cost. Okay, so when so, you say, just for clarification then, when you say commence, you say commence the costing of it. So we should add that in there. Mm -hmm. uh, commence Do you mind? the costing. Okay. All right. Um, oh, we don't have a seconder. Do we have a seconder for this motion? Alderman Zemong, thank you. Um, so on this motion then, Alderman Lowe. Well, thank you, Your Worship. That, uh, that's a great clarification because I read the motion as saying simply go and do it. Jump the queue. Um, and I, my question was going to be to Mr. Watson, given his, uh, his work plan, what would happen? But that question is now redundant. So having said that, um, my my next question is, if we agree to this, if this motion is passed, 
does this preclude any development from occurring in the what will be the station area plan? In other words, can an applicant bring forward an application and will it be considered even though the station area plan is not yet complete? Mr. Watson. Thank you, Your Worship. Alderman Lowe, and I was going to, if I had the chance, because there's one word in the third whereas that I think, and I guess Alderman Coyercard will have to help me in clarifying that. It talks about this being a precursor. Legally, and Mr. Tully, I think, would agree that an applicant, private owner, can always bring forward an application. We have had other cases around TODs uh, in other corridors where we have resisted or suggested that applications are premature until such time as the plan is either completed or decided to be completed or not. Um, I guess I need some assistance, I guess, uh, depending on how this motion goes in terms of what was the intent or council's intent here. There are applications, as we know, Alderman Collierkart pointed out, already in play in the vicinity of this station now. Well, thank you, Mr. Watson. That, and you've highlighted exactly the issue I was having with this motion, Your Worship. The, uh, sorry? I was just saying, do you want to ask Mr. Tully his opinion, as Mr. Watson was uh, alluding to? Mr. Tully? On that word precursor. Your Worship, an applicant has the ability, excuse me. Hmm. You're talking about this one. My microphone doesn't seem to be working, Your Worship. But an applicant does have the ability to bring forward an application and to be judged on the planning regime that's in place at that particular time the application is made, Your Worship. So, thank, thank you, Mr. Jolly. That was that was going to be exactly my point, Your Worship. Is that we have the planning rationale in place? We have the TOD policy in place. There is nothing to prevent, unless council directs it, from any applicant bringing forward an application within this area where, there's, where there is existing policy. A station area plan, Mr. Watson, if, correct me if I'm wrong, is merely a finer grain of the TOD policy. Through the chair, that, that's right. It's to really understand how the station area will fit into the community and the community into the station area. And we've, but, we've in, had in, but in and of itself, it's not a reason to accept and process within the, the planning rationale or, or planning rationale, as, as Mr. Tully's pointed out, that application to date. No, it is not. Although, if council wished, and we had a, an example at Canyon Meadows, in fact, where we we're very uh, reluctant to bring forward a positive recommendation on an application because we were trying to decide whether or not to do the station area plan. So if we were to, say, put this requirement to do the station area plan in, would we be in the same predicament then with uh, applicants within this area that we would be reluctant to bring forward a, uh, or to accept or to uh, bring forward a, a recommendation? Well, that's, that's what I'm seeking council's intent. If council's intent is to have the station area plan in place, approved prior to positive recommendations, then the staff would like to know that. The applicant can always bring his application in. It, it, it then becomes what we're going to be recommending when it comes to planning commission and ultimately to council. Thank you very much, Mr. Watson. There, your worship, lies the conundrum. Mm -hmm. We have the planning in place, we have the policy in place, we have applications coming before us that should, if I understand Mr. Tully's remarks correctly and with my belief, we must uh, evaluate those against the, the bylaw and the planning rationale that's in place today, not what might be or what we wish to be. So that, therein lies the difficulty I had with this motion. And uh, therein, simply put, Your Worship, uh, to avoid the issue that uh, Mr. Watson has so very plainly pointed out, that I will not support the motion as put. Now, I think it's a valid discussion for another venue to get into uh, the, the detail of planning we need within area plans and to clarify the, the point that Mr. Watson has brought forward. But as we stand here today, we haven't had that. So and for that reason, I will not be supporting the uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Lowe. Alderman Pincott. 
Well, thank you. And um, the, the clarification on uh, uh, commence the costing certainly helps because we typically don't, as Alderman Lowe say, try and queue jump. We, we ask for consideration of, of a project to be included in the work plan. Um, the, the implication, though, from, from the, the wording as it stands now is that costing would be the only issue. Are there other issues other than cost that go into making up planning work plans? Mr. Watson. Well, through the chair, most definitely. I mean, it, well, costing in terms of resources, and it's not just resourcing in the planning department, it's resourcing in a number of other departments. For example, the Brentwood uh, TOD involved about three or four different departments and probably took in excess of two years, Alderman Farrell, I believe, in order to, more than two years in order for us to get it done. We have over, outside the downtown, 36 LRT stations. Now, we do have TOD stationary plans in some of those, but uh, we have been looking at all 36 and trying to be a bit more strategic about exactly where we would be placing our planning resources. Now, Alderman Collier Eurocart is absolutely right. At one point, about five years ago, we thought this was one of the stations that we would be putting our resources into and, and, and doing some more detailed planning work. Uh, we learned a lot during the Brentwood TOD, uh, the Hiller Sunnyside TOD, uh, some of the other ones that we have undertaken. These are much bigger animals than we thought. And as the extent of that, we are now being much more selective about where we want to put the planning resources going forward. So this is not in the queue. It's one of the, those 30 that are out there. Uh, it would become in the queue at some point. But again, I work for council. If council says this is a TOD that's considered to have a higher priority, then this is the one we'll work on. Is there, is there a boundary? to this TOD area already assigned, or is that part of the work? We have a guideline in both, the, well, in the MDP, I believe in the MDP, it's or the Calgary Transportation Plan, 400 meters. We've also been using 600 meters, but that's a circle around the station. Mm -hmm. the, the, the real magic then is to come into a community and say, well, it doesn't follow that circle. You have to find out where the boundaries are. So in some parts it could be bigger than 600, other parts it could be less than 400. And that'd be some of the work that we'd have to do uh, in the a TOD, a full T TOD plan. Okay, so if, if an, in the absence of a station area plan, if an application did come forward, then we would apply the MDP and that policy within that radius, the, the TOD policy within that radius. Through the chair, that's exactly right. I mean, uh, certainly if we had a TOD plan for this station, we'd have more detail in terms of how we were going to uh, consider any application that was adjacent. In the absence of that detail, we'll rely on some of the more general guidelines and policies we have in place now. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, uh, with that, Your Worship, I'd actually like to propose an amendment. Um, as I said, we, we uh, these are generally bought, brought forward for to consider, and we, we just heard that there's more to consideration in included, inclusion work plan than just straight costing. So I'd like to propose uh, an amendment to, in the first whereas, that we change the words, uh, commence the costing of a station area plan to consider a station area plan. Uh, and uh, there, out of that then would follow a second amendment, which would be in the last whereas, which would be to end the sentence after work program. Okay. So I, I don't know if you want to take those all as one amendment or as two separate uh, let's amendments. Let's do them together. Let's do them together. I think the, so, the interest is both of them. So just... Uh, so the first amendment then uh, is to change in the first, therefore be it resolved to, that it read, administration be directed to consider a station area TOD plan. So could we put the amendments in bold, please, Madam Clerk? Bold uh, and italics, I, Madam Clerk, so it doesn't confuse the bolds and the other one. So, yes, yeah, so it's just, if we change the words commence the costing of to the word consider, and then in the final 
uh, be it resolved to just end the sentence after 2011 work program. More grammatical than anything else, that second one, but okay. Thank you. If All I right, thank you. You'll have a seconder for that amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, just to remove that. Yeah, it would be deleting that. Okay, and do I have a seconder? Thanks, Alderman Hodges. Mm -hmm. All right, so on the amendment then, we'll uh, create a new uh, speakers list here. Alderman Marr, was that on the amendment? I'll speak to the amendment first. Thank you. Okay. Well, this is interesting because it doesn't change the, it, it just really makes it more, a little bit more clear as to what the intent of it is. I certainly appreciate the, the original notice of motion and what Alderman Collier Eckhart was doing. We want to have transit-oriented development and we want to be able to create a uh, more vibrant areas in and around those areas rather than going back and, and doing the, uh, the park and rides or or things of that nature, so I appreciate that. But uh, one of the questions that I have relating to it is that if we're adding to the work plan, number one, what comes off? That would be, that would be my first question. And secondly, um, if we're doing the, the, the costing of this is, this, is this going to have just the cost of the report and so on and so forth? Are we talking about the capital improvements and everything that would, that would be associated with it? Are we talking about an entirely uh, it sounds like a very big report in my in my view. So I'm just getting some clarification, and if I could so, get that, that'd be so great. I I'll put something out there, Alderman Marr. We'll see if anyone has a violent objection to it. The way that I read this amendment is what we are suggesting is that in time for us to consider the budget and by extension the work plan at the end of November, at the end of this month, we want this one on the docket, um, and we'll make a decision at that point on whether or not to fund this study. Um, and, you know, as council always does at budget time, we'll decide whether we've got the money or not. No, and I appreciate that. Uh, I don't have a violent objection to it. I do have, uh, I do have some questions, and uh, by extension, I'm wondering if we could get some questions or clarification from administration on those points at this time. Mr. Watson? Through the chair, uh, taking your last question first, Alderman Martin, uh, a full TOD, um, stationary plan would be much like a, an ARP and ASP. There will be a section on implementation with some ballpark numbers in terms of what sort of capital improvements we'd need in order to do some of that work. That would be the outcome. What I'm, and again, I see Council's uh, advice on this, but what I was planning to bring back would be more what it would cost to do the study, what I would not be doing if I am doing this study, uh, how long it would take, what resources across the corporation would be necessary in order to undertake this work. That's what I would be bringing back in November. Okay, so that's, that's great, and that answers that one, that one aspect of it. My second question then relates specifically to the work plan. What comes off if this comes on, if anything? Well, through the chair, uh, I can't answer that today. Uh, I'm waiting for council to pass this motion, and if they pass the motion, I'll bring back a report and tell you that something will come off. So it's it's the opinion of your department that if we were to add this, obviously something has to come off. Uh, that's my opinion today, yes, that uh, we have been working with uh, a work plan that our work plan for new members of council isn't just on a calendar year. We have projects that last year after year. We've been working on several that started last year or commenced this year that continue on into next year. Uh, we will have to, if this motion is passed, we'll bring back, uh, as I say, the, the size of the, the work necessary to accomplish this motion and what other adjustments, which may mean taking things off, that will be a result. Thank you. And one last question, Your Worship. Were we to amend the time, so I would probably be doing an amendment to the amendment. Oh if, if we, yeah, <laughs> sorry? That requires me to check page 112 of the 175 page procedure well, well, bylaw. Before we talking. get into that, before we get into this, <laughs> the, into the, the minutia of it, I'm just wondering if we were able to to postpone this and maybe push it off of the two, uh, the 2011 work plan. Is that going to have a significant impact on this, given the fact that we are still quite a ways, or potentially quite a ways, away from from doing the uh, the um, the SELRT anyway? So what I'd like to see is if we can do this and accomplish all the things that we were trying to do, but not push something out that, that's in the work plan now and create a, uh, a problem for administration. 
So I'm wondering if, if we can adjust the timing somewhat so that we can push this back into maybe even shove it into uh, Q3 or Q4 or go right into 2012. Well, if I may speak for Alderman Collier Cart for a moment, I promise not to make a habit of this. Um, but what I heard her say up front was that there are a number of issues right this minute mm -hmm. with uh, that particular station, including three condo towers being built and a potential redevelopment of Shawnee Slopes which would mean that if we were to push this back too far, it might be moot because we would have built the stuff already. Mm. Uh, well, I'm going to listen to the rest of my colleagues then, and then we'll see if we have to re-amend okay. it. Thank you. Alderman Chabot, is this on the amendment? Uh, very briefly, Your Worship. I thought I heard Alderman Pincott say that his, uh, his motion was to have just the word consider commencement of a station uh, uh, I think it was just consider a station area plan. And not the costing of? Correct. Okay, so that doesn't form part of the amendment that we're voting on now. It's just that word consider. It's to get rid of the three words the costing of, and excuse me, to get rid of the four words commence the costing of, and replace them with the one word consider. Okay, thank you, Richard. All right. Um, Alderman Carr on the amendment? You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I do <laughs> want to. Um, asking administration to consider a station area TOD plan for the Fish Creek Lacombe LRT station haven't I mean with all due respect aren't you already considering it isn't it something you'd like to do I mean it, it seems to me that we've got tons of stations we've got tons of areas that really require TOD plans and I would hope that that's what planning is doing it's considering doing TOD plans for everywhere what we have is someone who an alderman who's saying it's taking too long and what we really have to do is consider a way to achieve these plans outside of the current business as usual because we're not getting there right now. If you don't mind Alderman Carl, let me try and reword your question a little bit. Okay. Mr. Watson, would we see this one as part of the proposal for 2011 if we didn't pass this motion today? No. Okay. Does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. Um, alderman Keating on the amendment. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And, and in actuality, I'm not sure if it's uh, on the amendment, it's on other things. Um, We're all I will here. just go with it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, in the sake of not reinventing the wheel and, and listening to the discussion that's going on here, um, planning has already completed some TODs. Uh, would we not, or could it not, and this is where I'm not sure, Your Worship, is, should there not be a template for a plan that's already been done and other areas be in place? understanding that there are some unique characteristics in each of the areas, uh, but therefore would not the time and costing be drastically reduced, uh, as there should be assumptions that very similar items would happen in all locations? Mr. Watson? Through your worship, Alderman McKeeing, uh, you're right, there's a template in terms of process, but the whole idea of doing a TOD that is different for every station, every community is different. Uh, the template right now would suggest this could take as much as a year and a half, uh, take resources from across the corporation, uh, a lot of public engagement, which there should be. And this is not, and I want to make it clear, I mean, I was with his worship's prodding fairly abrupt with the answer to the question <laughs> to Alderman Cara, uh, Cara, but the point is, yes, if, if I had all the resources in the world and all the time in the world and all the money world, I would absolutely like to have TOD station plans everywhere. I believe there's other priorities from a planning point of view facing this council, and I'd like to put those resources there. Now, having said that, I work for council. If council wants that station, council will get that station plan. Do I still mention it? I guess my, my statement was, my question was, um, is there, rather than just process, is there not a way of looking at a template for the others as well? Well, we do, have, we do have guidelines, TOD guidelines, that we then apply to every station. But, Mr. Watson, I think what you were saying was the act of applying those guidelines to each station is challenging because of the land. Is that fair? Uh, Alderman Farrell on the amendment. Thank you. Well, it's nice to know that the uh, desire for TOD exceeds the capacity for us to fulfill them. I'm just wondering, Mr. Watson, your abrupt answer, no. Why? That's my question. Why is this not considered a priority? My concern is that um, this could be misconstrued as an attempt to freeze development in this area. And so um, I 
believe in TOD. I think they should be well planned. Um, I'm just wondering why this hasn't been considered a priority by the planning department. Thank you, Your Worship. Alderman Farrell, the, um, and I, this probably is not the venue to have this larger discussion. Perhaps that'll be at the budget, uh, budget debate. My, my personal belief um, and my recommendation to Council is the priority right now is to take the Municipal Development Plan and the Calgary Transportation Plan and think about ways to actually implement that. TOD is absolutely a piece of that. But with 36 stations and having every TOD redesignated into higher density uh, and the time and effort it will take us to do the planning work to get to that point, I think we'll use up all the resources you've got and you will uh, have found over the next number of years that some of the other, which I think are lower hanging fruit in order to implement the MDP will not be taken advantage of. So it's all just a matter of priorities and where the priority should be. And I'm afraid right at this point, the administration doesn't think this particular station is where the priority is. That is not to say at some point in the next 60 years that you will not see the redevelopment here, and it's certainly not an effort to freeze development here. However, it's just a matter of so many people, so much time, and where the best bang for the buck is. So perhaps during budget you can go through that matrix of how you make those yeah, decisions? I'd be more than happy to talk about where I think the priority should be for planning over the next number of years. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Putman, you passing? Yes, thank you. The question was asked and answered. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, Alderman Carr, I think you've spoken on this amendment already. So uh, if there's no one else, I'll go to Alderman Pincott to close on the amendment. Thank you. To close on the amendment, um, I think it's important. I think, uh, I mean, as we heard, and certainly everybody around this table understands that TODs are important. They're an important piece of how we are going to move our city towards sustainability. Um, uh, I guess that my, my amendment is essentially that that prelude to that larger discussion and to to get it onto the table for consideration so that we can see uh, how this TOD would fit into the larger picture of how we are planning our city and uh, and my amendment is merely to clarify that uh, that intent thank you Thank you, Alderman Pincott. So on the amendment, and, to, re and uh, to remind members of council, the amendment is to remove the words commence the costing of in the first now therefore, and replace it with now therefore be it resolved that administration be directed to consider a station area TOD plan, and to remove the words at the very end to commence the above. Okay, so on that amendment, are we agreed? Any opposed? Okay, I think I see two, so we're good. Um, all right. Hmm? Sorry. Um, that was, sorry, Alderman Kara and Alderman Chabot. Okay, thank you. Um, and so the amendment, therefore, is carried. Back to the main motion. On the main motion, Alderman Kara. I just, I think that what, I mean, I think what we should really do is if there's, a, if there's a bunch of development happening around a station area, we should find ways to take the consulting dollars that are going into paying for that particular development and figure out a way to pool resources and develop a transit-oriented development plan for all, of the, uh, for all of the properties in the area, as opposed to forcing consultant dollars to create transit-adjacent development I think I think there's just there's a lot of desire to create integrated transit areas, and if we have to go through the regular motions, I can understand that being really cost ineffective. But I think there is a way to commence costing of that partners with private dollars because it's in everyone's best interest to create a comprehensive and well planned transit oriented development. So I mean, under the current system, I agree that that's a problem. I also just want to anecdotally say that. You know, Inglewood has been anticipating a TOD for quite some time in the southeast LRT, and we have brought plans before City Council with the developers in agreement and been told by the approving authority that it's too soon to consider, which is 
you know, aggravating. I think what we want to do is we want to encourage people to move in the directions we want rather than push and pull them at the same time. So I think it's important that we address this in maybe a slightly outside of the box way, and I will be supporting this. Thank you, Alderman Carra. Alderman Chabot on the main motion. I, I'm not going to be supporting this motion. And uh, some of the questions that were asked around the table about how will this impact your work program? When was this originally scheduled to occur? Um, we rely heavily on the expertise of the people that work in administration to give us some guidance on assisting us to make our decisions. And an administration has brought forward some recommendations on the highest priority areas for TOD development. Now, it's councils, of course, councils will to decide to leapfrog some of those recommendations and and look at specific areas on doing on doing development. But um, I think we need to be cautious about how much work we we pass on to administration because as we found out through the last budgeting process and we're about to find out again through this budgeting process is that there there are impacts on our decisions and how they affect our budget and how we move forward from an operational perspective. So although we may not see this today um, and we may not even see it in 2011, it, it is something that's going to impact in, in the future. And uh, I think we need to uh, be cognizant of how we spend our dollars, making the best use of those dollars that we have available to us and live within our means and, and maximize on those dollars that are within our means to create a most a, as comprehensive a, a transportation plan as possible, using of course administration's guidance to assist us in, in maximizing on those dollars. So I won't be supporting this. Thank you, Alderman Chabot. Um, before I call on Alderman Collier Cart to close, is there anyone else who would like to speak to this motion? Alderman Collier Cart, before you close, uh, if I may uh, ask your forbearance, I have a suggestion for a friendly amendment for you to consider. Uh, which does require the unanimous consent of council. I've just been passed a note that in the last whereas where it says report back to council no later than November 2010, it may be useful to put the actual date and the date of the budget uh, deliberation is November 29th, 2010. Is that all right with you? Yes. Yeah. All right. In that case, um, is council agreed on allowing Alderman Collier Cart to make that friendly amendment? Yes. Any opposed? Okay, great. Alderman Collier Cart. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Council, for uh, the debate. I, I, I'm pleased to uh, to get this on the floor and to uh, and to debate this very important matter about uh, applying the transit-orientated development policy that Council has put in place, and uh, and how we are going to get there within the resources that we have, and uh, and you can you know just through history you can see that. Uh, there hasn't been a stonewalling, but there hasn't been a, an administrative desire, really, I don't think, to make it a priority. Uh, and so you keep waiting. And uh, then you reach a point where there's a crisis with a lot of development that's going to take place there that could fundamentally uh, change the quality of life of people that live not only in Ward 13, but Ward 14 and, and, and adjoining areas. So. Um, what I'm hearing today from administration is what I've heard for a long time, that uh, we don't have the resources, it's not a priority. Uh, and that what I've also heard uh, when I was asked to not put it forward was that um, station plans are not the way of the future. We don't have time to do them anymore. And so I am looking forward to seeing what administration can come up with. Uh, but. I'm really excited about working with uh, Alderman Kara and finding new ways for us to proceed to address this issue and working with the private sector in, um, in uh, coming forward with a policy that directs, uh, where council directs administration to help us deal with these local issues. Um, because, uh, you know, we're a bit envious when we see these wonderful plans like um, we have with the underpass, the development of this, the city center plan, uh, the Sunnyside plan, the Brentwood plan, uh, and, uh, and the southwest and southeast areas are some of the most uh, fast growing areas of our city. So uh, we'll take one small step at a time. We'll see what administration comes back with with this. 
And then I think on a more philosophical policy level, we're going to have to uh, move in a different direction. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Collier Cart. Um, Alderman Lowe, Alderman Collier Cart is closed. Do you have a point of order, procedure, privilege? Uh, just to be recognized for motion arising, Your Worship. Uh, okay, after the vote, no problem. All right, so then on notice of motion 2010 41, are we agreed? agreed? Any opposed? Alderman Chabot, Alderman Lowe. Alderman Jones. Okay, we've got four. Please call the roll. Alderman Marr. Yes. Alderman Pincott. Yes. Alderman Footmans. Yes. Alderman Stevenson. Yes. Alderman Carra. Yes. Alderman Chabot. No. Alderman collier Yes. Alderman yes. DeMong. Yes. Alderman Farrell. No. Alderman Hodges. Yes. Alderman Jones. No. Alderman Keating? Yes. Alderman Lowe? No. Alderman McLeod? Yes. Mayor Nenshi? Yes. That's carried, Your Worship. Very well. Thank you, Council. Thank you. So, oh, yes, sorry, motion arising, Alderman Lowe. Well, thank you, Your Worship. The, uh, there's one uh, piece of business that arose out of the conversation with Mr. Watson concerning uh, what happens when we get applications in these areas when uh, there is not a station area plan in place. And uh, Alderman Carra spoke to the frustration of Inglewood, and uh, Mr. Watson mentioned the fact that uh, they're uh, I'm going to use the word delayed, based on a, a premise that they may be uh, may be premature. And yet we hear from Mr. Tully that uh, in law we are required to accept and process applications based on current planning process and principle. Having heard that and. Uh, Listening to uh, Mr. Watson, who very clearly outlines the problem that uh, that uh, administration has, the motion arising is that uh, council direct administration to consider application for potential LRT station. I'm sorry, consider applications in potential LRT station areas on the basis of current planning. planning I'm looking for word regulation process uh, protocol policy, policy and, pro and protocol. Thank you. Given um, given what we heard earlier, well, first I'll ask if there's a seconder for that. I heard it, Alderman Chabot. Um, given what we heard from Mr. Tully earlier, I'm going to ask Mr. Tully uh, if there is any um, practical impact that this would have, because I, what I heard you say is that's what we do. No, it's working now. Uh, Your Worship, that's what we would do in any event, I believe, uh, is to... Uh process the applications in accordance with existing planning policy and regulations in place. I think we're legally obligated uh, to do that, so I don't... But in point of fact, Mr. Tully, what we heard was that's not what we're doing. Applicants are being told they're premature. Uh, decisions are being delayed because they're considered to be premature because there is not a stationary plan in place. Um, the boundaries have not been defined, a whole bunch of reasons. And that, of course, places private landowners at a disadvantage. And I guess all I'm doing with this, uh, Your Worship, is attempting to clarify for administration an area of which uh, Mr. Watson very plainly said to us is an area that they're, they're wrestling with. So what I'm giving council an opportunity to do is to say, no, take the application in, process it. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, it's certainly on the floor now, and unless Mr. Tully has any objections to it, we will let it uh, we will let it stay on the floor. Uh, so, on this um, on this one, motion arising, Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Worship. Well, I was happy to support this motion by Alderman Lowe because I too have experienced this um, in in my area on some applications that have come forward on 17th Avenue that that um, varied from. Uh, the intended policy that was going to be um, put forward to council and so some of those decisions were withheld pending the approval of the 17th Avenue uh, corridor study. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I, I understand what he's saying and uh, I've experienced it personally um, so I, I will be supporting this motion. Thank, thanks Alderman Chabot. Uh, Alderman Carra? Yeah, I'd like to uh, make an amendment if that's all right, or propose an amendment. Uh, I think 
instead of saying the basis of current planning regulation, why don't we just actually call out the planning policy that we're talking about, which is the TOD guidelines? And the MDP and CTP. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that's really needed, um, Alderman Carr. I think that the motion implies that. Okay. Unless you really have a, well, I mean, a strong desire to have well, it in let, there. Let's consider the example of Englewood that I brought up earlier, mm -hmm. where you have uh, the Southeast LRT, 11th Street connecting Ramsey and Englewood. Uh, it's not there. And every time we're told, well, this would fit in with that as part of this station, this area's future as a TOD, they're like, well, it isn't a TOD yet. And you're referring to individual applications? I'm, I'm referring through? to individual okay. applications okay. that have been dead and buried because they didn't, they didn't make it through. Um, and so I would, I guess my amendment would be we call out BRT and LRT and uh, on, the, on the basis of the TOD guidelines because I think that current planning regulation could be interpreted okay. by an administrator as for TOD areas and if there isn't a station there, I mean, and potential speaks to that, but I don't know. Okay, so just don't sit down. <laughs> so just let's try and put the wording in here. You're suggesting an amendment that reads, Council direct administration to consider applications in potential LRT station areas and along BRT lines. Don't you see LRT and BRT station areas? Do we really have BRT stations? No, we don't, but they are not BRTs unless they do have stations, which is pedantic, another control. point um, <laughs> that okay. we spoke to earlier. Um, okay, so your amendment is just simply to add the words and BRT? Oh, and, and it's, I think, current planning regulation, I would say, according to uh, Council's TOD policy. Current planning regulations, including the MDP, the CTP, and the TOD guidelines? If we have to be that explicit, I'm not against being that explicit. Alrighty, so that's um, the amendment that Alderman Carra is putting on the table. Do I have a seconder for that amendment? Alderman call your cart. Okay, so I'll procedure. let Madam Clerk catch up here. On a point of procedure, Your Worship, is that not counter to the motion by suggesting that it adhere to LRT um, TOD well, guidelines? I don't think so. I think it's additional. Prior to approval of TOD guidelines, I think that's the intent of the mover. Um, I, I'll ask. I'll ask the mover if he thinks that that is contrary to his motion. I see it as adding to his motion. Alderman Lowe. Your Worship, uh, you will find out I, I tend to be sparing of language. <laughs> and uh, by when I use potential <laughs> LRT, I uh, included any, really any transit hub where there would be high density. Planning regulation included planning regulation, all of the above. Okay, so I, 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 I'm judging from that that I will rule this amendment in order. Um, so we have an amendment on the floor now, moved Alderman Carra, uh, seconded Alderman Colley Urquhart. Uh, on the amendment, Alderman Farrell. Thank you. I'll speak to both. I, I certainly will support the, um, the motion arising, but I, I think it's, we need to be clear, TOD isn't just about LRT or BRT. It's, it's about transit-oriented development, so transit hubs. And I think we need to move beyond um, just isolating them to LRT areas. So I just wanted to clarify. It is transit-oriented development. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? All right, then. So on the amendment, which you see in bold on the screen in front of you, are we agreed? Any opposed? Alderman Chabot. Oh, we've got a few. Okay. Can you call the roll, please? So again, this is on the amendment to add the words and BRT and the words including the MDP, CTP, and TOD guidelines. Alderman Stevenson. Yes. Alderman Carr. Yes. Alderman Chabot. Nope. Alderman collier -Cart. Yes. Alderman DeMong. Yes. Alderman Farrell. Yes. Alderman Hodges. Yes. Alderman Jones. Yes. Alderman Keating. No. Alderman Lowe. Yes. Alderman McLeod. Yes. Alderman Marr. Yes. Alderman Pincott? No. Alderman Putmans? Yes. Mayor Ninchy? Yes. It's carried, Your Worship. All right. So now on the motion as amended. Any further discussion on this motion as amended? Alderman Lowe, did you want to close? It's closed, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, so on this motion then, are we agreed? Agreed. Any opposed? Carried. All right. That then takes us to... 
uh, item 2010-42, notice of motion, re airport trail underpass, Alderman Stevenson. Oh, and seconded Alderman Jones. Well, you hasn't moved it yet, but. <laughs> Sorry, I'll move it and I want to ask a couple of questions of GM Logan, if I could. Um, Mr. Logan, uh, there's been a wide range of cost estimates, of course, over the last uh, um, two or three years. Uh, can you tell me what <clears throat> what you expect this 200,000 that we're, uh, we're uh, proposing to give you, what do you expect that's going to uh, give us that we don't already have? Could you tell me that? Oh, Mr. Logan, sorry. Okay, thank you, Worship. Um, Alderman Stevenson and, and Council, the the request for funding is to acknowledge that in order to bring a comprehensive report back to Council, we need to um, fine tune the work that's been done before, specifically looking at other options to build this uh, this facility. Uh, we've been told to uh, quote unquote sharpen our pencil, and that's what we intend to do to test different alternatives. Um, we also recognize that we're cutting into the ground farther than the airport will be doing to construct their runway. Therefore, we have geotechnical work that we need to do. Uh, it's very instrumental in developing an accurate cost estimate. And finally, we do have to work on an accurate cost estimate as accurate as we can make it. And uh, those are all services that we need to acquire uh, outside City Hall and uh, to do so on a um, as soon as possible basis. Would this geotechnical include core samples then? Yes, it would be uh, taking a series of, of core samples along the proposed alignment, and that is work that the airport authority has not undertaken. However, they do have a consultant on board who uh, could potentially undertake that work on our behalf. And what would, that core, what would the core samples tell us that would be different than what we know now? Um, I think the, we, we don't have any information going to the depth that we would need to go to with the facility that we're talking about a tunnel or an underpass, as the case may be. Um, we need to know how hard that rock is, how deep it is, are there any uh, uh, underground streams or things like that running through there that would impact our uh, construction costs and the type of equipment that we would need to employ to build such a facility. What would you say to, uh, because this has been uh, bounced around uh, a lot, uh, what would you say to the people that are saying that we don't need this now and we won't need it in the future? What would be your, your response to that? Your Worship, I think that uh, through the Calgary Transportation Plan, we demonstrated that we did see this as part of our future plans, both as a roadway and as a, uh, a future um, primary transit corridor. Um, the question of now has to do with costs and benefit costs of building a less expensive type of facility now or a more expensive type of facility later, and that was sort of part and parcel of some of the earlier reports that came to Council and talked about the relative cost of a tunnel boring versus a uh, cut and cover methodology. So it has to do with the uh, the timeliness of the construction. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'll have more to say in my close. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Stevenson. Alderman Marr. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I've actually got some uh, questions also for uh, Jim Logan. Uh, the first one, when I'm reading the one, two, three, fourth paragraph down, now there be, therefore be it resolved that the administration is directed to immediately commence negotiations with the Calgary Airport Authority to identify the process to construct the underpass. How is, how are you going to interpret that? It sounds very much like a go ahead and design build this or prepare to, to, to build it. Is that how you're interpreting it or am I misreading it in some way? Mr. Logan. Your Worship. Um, the interpretation of administration, Alderman Marr through the chair, would be that we need to commence uh, detailed conversations with the airport authority about what are all the risks that they see. Mm -hmm. um, so scoping, what kind of legal agreements would we need to put into place for, for example, the uh, access to the lands through, uh, which would involve the federal government and the airport authority. Um, how would we handle construction? What are some of the issues around handling the construction and the costs and, and bidding and procurement, things like that? And then finally, how would we operate the facility over time? So it would be scoping out all of those type of agreements and, um, and then f sharing information that they might have through the consulting team that they currently have under uh, doing their runway design and terminal design work. So that's my interpretation of that clause. So 
basically you're having a you're having a coffee date, aren't you? You're talking about it. You're you're getting some information. You're not necessarily saying, "Hey, we're hiring engineers and we're moving ahead on on this." That's that's what I'm hearing from you right now. Well, your your worship, it would be it would be hiring engineers to develop the uh, the formal report for council, and probably we've asked the uh, the airport authority if they could meet with us on a weekly basis up to the point where we bring this uh, question back to council for uh, consideration of a go forward. Okay, uh, and that's the. The later operative clause when we're going to say that we're taking uh, 200000 or up to $200,000 from, from program, program 686. Yes. Which it's the intent of program 686 is for studies of this nature. Is that not right? Uh, no, Your Worship. The uh, 686 is uh, airport trail. Mm -hmm. And specifically, uh, there's currently funding for the portion west of Deerfoot Trail. Mm -hmm. And um, we have sufficient funding within that program to, to fund this work without... Uh, having impact any impact on the existing budget that was the intent of pulling from that particular project okay now I appreciate that thank you um, my other questions are now we're again we were talking about the work plan how would this fit in with your work plan uh, you do you, you have the time to be able to do this by um, by April uh, your worship this would impact our work plan honestly I know we've had that conversation here on the on the previous item but uh, um, uh, we would have to make this a top priority, mm -hmm. certainly, uh, given the timeline with the uh, specifically with the airport, which we refer to in the following paragraph, mm -hmm. uh, and would probably mean uh, putting certain projects on hold, uh, bringing in uh, maybe not consulting staff, but assigning uh, assigning some of our internal staff full time to the project, probably three or four people full time for two months. Okay, so it's your opinion that you have the capacity in terms of staff and time to get this report done within the the time constraints that we have so we could action on it in the event that Council chooses to do it? Yes, Your Worship, I think we can. We're, our target would be New Year's. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions, and I apologize, Council. Uh, there is This is obviously a very critical issue. Um, my next question is, we've heard that these, uh, this underpass is... Uh, Thank you is um, you're welcome I'm here to help uh, <laughs> that uh, there is a variety of price points that we've been hearing everything from a hundred million dollars to half a billion dollars truth is somewhere in, in between and it's depending on the eye of the beholder I imagine is that right I've seen a variety of uh, price points yes your worship uh, everything from yeah you know, the letter that came to council back in the summer up to things on websites that are over 800 million so if we do this report and we fund it, This, you will have a definitive number for us at the end of the day, will you not? Uh, I believe we'd have a much better number than we have today. And you don't know the absolute number until you go to the, until you put it to the market. Until you put honest. it to tender, but yes. you would have a range within, say, 10 or 15 or $20 million. It, it, would, it wouldn't be a, a $500 million variance. No, Your Worship. Okay. Um, now, I have one other last question, and this is for me, and from what I've heard from my constituents, the most important aspect of it. If we're doing this, and we can say that this is a quadrant issue or a city issue, it doesn't matter what it is. If we're going to do this, who else can come to the table with us? Because I remember in this room, about a year and a half ago when we were talking about this, there was the province of Alberta was at the table with us, the federal government was at the table with us, and the airport authority was also at the table with us. Where are we in negotiations with those parties if at all. They're hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Logan, maybe I can take that. <coughs> we don't have hands. Um, so the, nothing is, uh, so let's start with the airport authority. The airport authority has indicated um, both through the chair to myself and uh, through their CEO to Mr. Tobert and Mr. Logan that they will play with us. Uh, they had already come to the table with some money in terms of making adjustments to the plan based on to their plan based on us building this and i understand that that's still on the table mm -hmm. uh, i continue discussions with both the province and the federal government and random people i meet on the street about funding this um, and i have received um, i have received assurances from the province that while there's probably no new money they will work with us to help us use any existing funding we have, and, and they're, they're very actively thinking about options to help us with this. 
The federal government has been less forthcoming, but we do have a new political minister for Southern Alberta, uh, and he has requested to meet with me this week, and this will certainly be on the agenda. Well, that's certainly comforting, Your Worship, and I appreciate your input. Um, my concerns, uh, and I will share them with you, which is what I heard at the door when I, during the, this municipal campaign, I supported the tunnel seven times out of the last eight. Uh, what I'm very concerned about is just making sure that if we're going to do this tunnel, it's the right thing, we can, we can afford to do it, and that it makes sense. Also, I need to know that we're, we have a source of funding for it and that there are other partners at the table other than the, the City of Calgary taxpayer. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Marr. Alderman Lowe. Well, thank you, Your Worship. The, uh, I'm always amazed when this comes back. Three times it's been here, three times we've uh, looked at it, three times we've put it to bed. And I know I, when I read the, uh, the first whereas in uh, Alderman Stevenson's whereas on the municipal election day, many Calgarians expressed support. Your Worship, my experience was somewhat different on my side of uh, the Deerfoot Trail. The way I'd summarize it over my side is of 10 people, two were passionately supportive of building the tunnel. Six were equally passionately supportive of it, not building it. It was uh, disapproved of to pretty strongly disapproved of. Two people wanted to know what my view of it was, and I've never hidden my view. And uh, I have two reasons for not supporting it and one concern. First reason is cost, second reason is need. The concern is even if we build it, given the changes in regulation around security in airports, how much of it we get to use and how often it would be shut down. And if we've put all our money into that, what have we done to the rest of the transportation system when in fact we can't use that? So those are, those are questions that I have. Your Worship, I'm going to uh, have, I have a referral motion. Madam Clerk has it, if she could put it up. I'll just uh, briefly introduce it. And Your Worship, what I've put up here, it's a petition signed by over 1,100 people from all over Calgary, actually, who are opposed, and I'd ask that that be accepted, distributed, and become part of the record. So the notice of motion, Your Worship, uh, fundamentally, it's out of respect for the new members of council and for uh, also to bring existing members of council up to date and to add the information that Mr. Logan uh, uh, referred to in, in, uh, in answering his questions. I pulled out all of the previous reports relating to uh, the tunnel, which I understand is now an overpass, or an underpass, I'm sorry. And uh, so what I am attempting to do through this, Your Worship, is to ask the cost of preparing a report that is absolutely comprehensive and that council has all of the information needed in front of it to make a qualified decision with respect to this project. I'm not sure, given what Mr. Logan has said and given what I think I need to make this determination, that $200,000 is going to do it. So I need to know the cost of what it's going to cost administration to put this report together. The referral basically says, asks administration to do a scoping report on the basis of this plus everything else that they can think of and bring us not later than whatever date I picked out here not later than uh, the, the uh, not later than February, what it would cost to build a report that answers all of the questions in here, including doing the the uh, work, core sampling, and so on that would be required to produce a fully comprehensive, well understood report, and then bring the final with with a view to having that final report before it's not later then uh, I'm sorry, the scoping report to be brought to us not later, th or not later than uh, December 13th with the final report brought to us in uh, February of 2011 so we can make that decision. I'm sorry, Your Worship, I cannot hear you. This is a motion to refer. Oh, sorry. This is a motion to refer. 
Uh, before I rule whether this motion to refer is uh, in order or not, you've raised a question that I think we should raise with Mr. Logan. And that question is the $200,000 that you're asking for in the original notice of motion. Is that sufficient to do the work that Alderman Lowe is talking about? No, Your Worship. Okay. And what's the difference between what you're proposing and what he's asking for? Your Worship, I'm, I'm trying to digest what I see up on the screen here as quickly as I can. Um, this is a very large piece of work and a very broad undertaking. Um, I don't know. I mean, you put me on the spot here. I haven't had a chance to read this uh, prior. But this is many, I would say, multiple times what we're talking okay. about in the other. All right. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. I just needed to know that to rule whether this uh, referral motion is in order or not. So, um, and to whom are you referring? I'm referring it to administration. Okay. I'm referring it to administration okay. to do a scoping report. Just tell us how much it's going to cost to build a report to answer these questions. Okay. Bring that report to us uh, not later than uh, December the 13th based on a final report coming to us in uh, February of 2011. Okay. All right, so we've got this motion to refer on the floor. Do you have a seconder? Yes, Alderman McLeod. Okay, so now we have a motion to refer on the floor. I think I will rule it in order, although it's the longest motion to refer I've ever seen. Well, you um, Hopefully, do we have copies coming, Madam Clerk? That's okay, it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's hard to read, so I'm just trying to get uh, Your Worship. copies. But okay, good, you're on the floor. Thank you very much. Your Worship, the, uh, the issue, this is, this is whether it's 500 million, 700 million, or 300 million dollars, this is a very large project to undertake at this point in our capital budget. So there's a lot of determinations to be made, starting out with the business case for doing it. Do we need it? How much is it going to cost? Um, we've got competing transportation studies out there. I would like to have those rationalized with a peer review. Um, I need to know the cost. Mr. Logan's spoken of that. I think there are funding options out there which can be analyzed and taken a look and brought back to us. And I need to know the impact on our 10-year capital budget if we undertake this project. And furthermore, I need to know if there are going to be tax-supported components of this, what the impact is on the taxpayer. And I, the, the, the example given, Your Worship, is if I recall correctly, last year Montreal finally paid off the big O. And the bill for the big O was somewhat less than this. Okay. Thanks, Alderman Lowe. We've got this uh, motion on the floor. Oh, I, I think you've hit your five minutes. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. All right. On the referral motion, I have a very long speaker's list, but I don't know if you are speaking on the referral motion or on the main motion, so I'll just go through it. On the referral motion, Alderman Pincott? I will speak to it. I mean, the the referral actually asks for answers to questions that that I have. Um, uh, I'm 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 curious. I mean, we we council passed an, a number of times. We said, okay, we'll do the airport tunnel, but <coughs> we'll do it, but but at the at the end of the day, it came down to we'll do it, and we're on the hook, and we're going to cancel a bunch of projects and cancel at that time in July said, no, uh, we, we don't want to take that hit to our plan. This is actually asking us to look at what that hit is to our plan and what are the impacts. Um, uh, I think that there are inherent costs to the airport authority that if I was the airport authority, I would say to the city, we've told you repeatedly, we passed the deadline. So if you want to change your mind, then there's going to be a, a price tag to it. I think that needs to be included in this. Uh, and uh, uh, looking for alternate funding costs, Your Worship, I, I, I go to your, you referencing your conversations with the province where they said there's no new money, but they'll, they'll more than happy to work with us with the money that we already have. That is not comforting to me. Uh, so I will support this referral. I think that this is a big decision. We need a full report. Uh, we need to truly understand what the impacts are for building it now, what the impacts are on our long-range capital plans, 
what those impacts are to the to the taxpayer, and uh, and this report asks specifically for that. So I will support that referral. Thanks, Alderman Pincott. Alderman Putmans. Speaking to the referral um, by business case, I think something that perhaps I've missed it, but. In the past, the whole notion, I think, this started when the airport tunnel was proposed and it was thought there might be an opportunity to pre-build or, or do some of the foundational work for a tunnel that at some point in the future might prove to be very cost effective. And it seems to me we've lost sight of that. And one of the things I think would be important to understand is what is that preliminary investment to be such that at some point in the future when we wish to complete the tunnel, if indeed that's the way it's phased, is that, is that a, almost a financial analysis of what is that sum that would make sense to invest today during a construction phase of the runway and therefore contemplating a completion at some point in the future, if indeed that's an, a, an option? I'm not sure there's a question in there. Is there, is there a question in there? There Alderman probably Cummins? isn't, but it's more just a point of information. When we, think, when, when we speak of a business case, that's, a, I guess, part of the assessment or analysis that I would look to in this report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Farrell. Thank you. I'm very much in support of, of uh, the direction outlined in this referral. I'm not sure if it needs to be in a referral or not, or if it just needs to be in added direction in the notice of motion. I haven't supported any motions regarding the tunnel, specifically because these questions haven't been answered. And it would, I think it would be um, reckless of us to make decisions of the magnitude that we have been without seeing a business case on any project that comes forward before Council. And that's a cost-benefit analysis, who benefits and who should pay. So I have a number of questions, but first I want to start with a procedural question. We voted on this in July. Do we need a reconsideration at this point? Or uh, my, my understanding that the, is that that discussion has been had with Mr. Tully's office. Because the vote in July was very specifically to reallocate funding from some projects to others, and that's not what's being proposed here. But it, um, it is not, in fact, a reconsideration. Okay. Should we get to a point where we're actually pay spending money on this thing, then we'll have a debate about whether that's a reconsideration or not. Okay, so I do, I do have enough uh, questions or points. Um, I think what we haven't heard is how many people will this tunnel serve, and who benefits and who pays. I've heard um, that future development in the east side of Calgary can't really move forward without the benefit of this tunnel. Shouldn't we be looking, if it does go through and we decide to build it, at some cost sharing from landowners, similar to what we do with other costs of growth issues? That's something I haven't heard discussed. I also haven't heard um, fully discussed the security risk. I watched a really bad Canadian movie on television. <laughs> Not that they're all bad, some, some of them are very good. Um, I don't want to do a Blackett. Lindsay Blackett thing. <laughs> but uh, it, it, was, it was a terrorist um, an airport tunnel, I thought, oh, maybe that's a question I should ask. Is there a security risk with airport tunnels? I would like to know more information. Uh, uh, Alderman Farrell, sorry to interrupt. Are you asking these questions now, or are you suggesting these are things that we I need to answer as we go forward? I think these are things that we need to answer before we make any decision around this. I'm prepared. I've always said I'll keep an open mind on this one if, uh, if new information becomes available. And in my view, we, we've had some out outrageous quotes um, from... 100,000 to, as you said, 800, uh, or 100 million to 800. 40 million to 823 million. 40 million. Range. Wow, yes. that's exciting. Wow. I'd, um, also, I'd like to know about transit options. Are we eliminating transit options in this case? Are we spending our transit kitty on a tunnel that will be car oriented since we've made we've made a decision to be more transit oriented. I don't have the answer to that question. I've always thought tra transit would be through the North Central line, but I'm not really sure. Um, so I guess those are all the questions that I have that I would like to see, whether it's included in this report or, or uh, a another report, I would hope as, um, as, as good foreseer for overseers of our budgets that we have these answers. And any attempt to push through without the answers would, in my view, be irresponsible. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Farrell. On the motion to refer, Alderman Jones. Thank you, Your Worship. I just have two questions for uh, Mr. Logan. Uh, Mr. Logan, at the bottom of the referral, 
states that the scoping report would be based on delivery of the final report not later than 2011 February and the scoping report be received by council not later than December 13th. Is there, uh, well, maybe your worship, maybe I should be asking you the question. Based on the two dates at the bottom of this, are we not kind of out of the airport authority's realm of reason? I'm pausing because I am sitting in this chair and we may have to trade chairs for me to answer that question with what I really think. However, um, I will say that I made an undertaking to the chair of the airport authority board that they would have a very good understanding of our direction um, by the end of this year such that when they start the earth moving in April of 2011, they'll be doing so understanding what our direction is on the tunnel. So do you feel then that uh, February 11th or February of 2011 is giving enough time to them? Well, it's, you know, it's a question for them. It's two and a half months before they start earth moving in the closure of Barlow Trail. It's getting pretty tight. Um, my own personal opinion would be that this referral pretty much kills the project. And that's exactly how I feel. It'll kill the project and I'm not prepared to do that. Based on the doors that I went to, and I can appreciate the fact that Alderman Lowe's handed out this petition, but I'm sure that between Alderman Chabot, myself, and Alderman Stevenson, we could get one that's about 10 times as thick as this that says, and the mayor, that says that they want the tunnel because every single door I went to, people wanted the tunnel. Every single business I talked to on the east side of Deerfoot Trail wanted a tunnel. So for those people that we represent, um, I'm not going to vote for the referral. Thank you. I uh, agree with Alderman Jones. I think I would call it a, uh, a deferral rather than a referral motion. And, um, you know, I wish there had been a business case for the uh, Calatrava Bridge, but there wasn't. Um, and uh, there's a lot of information in here that it would have been nice ahead of time to have had a copy. Um, to have Mr. Logan's opinion on this as far as what would be entailed. Uh, we simply, Council, do not have the time to defer to wait for this work to be done, and I would ask you to not support this. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Collier Card. Alderman Stevenson on the referral. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, can I ask uh, um, GM Logan to comment on the safety thing? Because that's, it keeps being brought up. Could you? Mr. Logan? Your Worship, um, is this with respect to the comment from uh, Alderman? Feral? Yeah, about security of the tunnel, I believe so. Right? I yes, believe Alderman, uh, Alderman Lowe brought that up as well. Uh, the, Air, the Airport Authority has warned us that um, there could be a situation where Transport Canada instructs them to, to close any public right-of-way under, under a runway. And uh, that that is something that's not in their control, nor would it be in our control, so it does represent a risk going forward. Um, and that's, that would be, that's obviously, a we, it was actually in the agreement that if Transport Canada said you can't have the runway and the tunnel, the tunnel would be what would be closed. That was a part of it, right? Those comments have been made to us, yes. That, uh, now, can you tell me, does the airport, uh, is the airport building a tunnel underneath the taxiway that's public? And if, in fact, that happened, then uh, they would have a, uh, a big building that's, um, uh, houses West yet that would be on an island and they wouldn't be able to get to it. Is that not true? My understanding, uh, Your Worship, is that there are two underpasses planned in their under taxiways in their current plan. Uh, one would be restricted and one is currently to an area that is open to the public and that's the WestJet office and courier area that's uh, south of the, uh, the main terminal area. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Mr. Logan. So, Alderman Stevenson, remember you're on the motion to refer. Yes, I am. Then I want to uh, follow up on the comments made by my uh, colleagues here about the fact that this is, in fact, a motion to kill the whole project is what it, um, what it is. And, of course, uh, we've, uh, I've fought these kinds of motions so many times over the last three years because there's been members of council and there was people. There were people a part of my, a part of our administration. In fact, one of them signed this petition, right? Um, who uh, was uh, 
attempting, who have attempted over the years just to kill the project. But it is something that the people of Calgary, I believe, do want, and I believe it's something that would be a huge mistake for us as a council. In fact, likely it would be the biggest mistake in uh, poor planning that this city has ever seen if we don't move forward with it. But all we're asking, and the reason I'm asking you to vote against the deferral, uh, is because what this uh, is saying is that we're not allowed to go ahead and get the costing that would allow us to make the decision on spending money in the future. This is not about spending any money on building the tunnel itself, but it is to, to go and get the uh, geotechnical the uh, analysis that would allow us to make a, an intelligent decision on whether we want to move forward with that. And if we support this deferral, what it means is we're, we're killing that without getting those facts. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Alderman Stevenson. Alderman Marr. Alderman Marr, have you spoken on this referral motion already? Okay. I speak often, but not on this referral yet. Uh, I have a couple of questions with regards to this. Now, the referral motion asks for a business case. If we were going to do a business case on all of our infrastructure, we wouldn't have parks. We wouldn't have public transit because we're subsidizing it, all of it. Um, we need to be able to, to look at this with all the facts. And I think that the original notice of motion that's saying that, and from what I'm hearing from, from our administration, a $200,000 report will deliver us the actual cost of this within a range. And I'm also hearing from, from uh, His Worship that there are potential partnerships to help bring the cost down. I'm happy with the City of Calgary putting in its share for a piece of infrastructure that is, even if it's only regional, it's still worth doing. But I am concerned that we're going to be able to uh, to not go it alone. So I'm not going to support their referral motion based on the fact that I think that we're already going to get an answer from our administration. And asking us to do a business case on a piece of infrastructure that has potential to to uh, alleviate congestion and, and uh, provide access to a critical piece of, uh, of uh, city infrastructure, the airport, is um, I, I don't want to have to start looking at this city as a business case for parks and for recreational facilities and things of that nature because we know we, this is not a business, in fact. This is a city and we need to be able to look at this from 30,000 feet in the air realize what the potential is from, from, a, uh, from a planning perspective. Not just now, not in five years, but what about 25 years or 100 years in the future? So I, I understand what you're trying to achieve here, Alderman Lowe, but uh, I believe that the answers that we're going to be able to get from the original notice of motion will help us and guide us toward that end. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Alderman Marr. Alderman Carra. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm going to just start by uh, sort of disagreeing with Alderman Marr in the sense that I think that you can make a very good business case for transit and parks and it's your interchanges and things like that when you do your total cost accounting that start to make less and less sense. Um, but I, I want to agree with Brian Pincott that there are a lot of questions here that I would love the answers to before we move forward. But I'm also going to agree with Alderman Marr that I think that the original notice of motion will get us very close to that. Um, I want to reiterate Alderman Farrell's statement that I think transit connection to the airport and transit through this underpass is hugely important from a business case, from an international city that we want to be case. Um, and I want to note that knocking on doors, and I knocked on close to 20,000 doors, in this election, I can count five people, maybe, who spoke against the tunnel and an overwhelming mass of citizens who spoke very, very passionately in favor of it. So I will not be uh, supporting this referral because I fear it is a deferral motion. Thanks, Alderman Carra. Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Worship. Uh, a couple of questions uh, for administration through your through your worship. Certainly. Um, on uh, the, the, the notice of or this uh, referral motion, it talks about all the connectors that would, will be required within the next five years. 
just curious as to how you interpret that, Mr. Logan. Is there going to be some additional grade separated interchanges required within the next five years? That Mr. Logan? Your Worship, I'm uh, I'm just looking for that point. Are you, are you referring to the second bullet, uh, Alderman Chabot, through the chair? It says, uh, no, this would be the fourth bullet down. It says, options and validated estimate for the cost of constructing a tunnel underpass portion is only the cost of adding the connections to the roadway system within five years. Um, the cost yeah. of constructing the entire link now. I'm just trying to understand what the entire link, what you, what you envision that as being. Uh, Your Worship, uh, my interpretation of this, and we are actually looking at this already, is that uh, we, we need a complete system, if you will, to go from the East Freeway along the Airport Trail Corridor to Deerfoot Trail. And we're looking at what would be required to do that entire piece of, of work and how could we possibly phase that. That's contemplated in the $200,000 study that uh, um, we've been in discussions for on the notice of motion. So you see this as redundant? Uh, I believe that that piece of work is going to be done either way. Okay. Um, now, no, it makes reference in here of the southwest leg of the LRT, or uh, southwest leg, leg of the Ring Road as a connector. I'm not sure I understand what the intent is there. Maybe it was a mistake or something. I, southwest. How do, you, how do you see that as being part of the... I think that's a question for the mover, and I'm, and if, I'm happy to give him the floor if he wants to answer that. Yeah, well, it, respectfully, Your Worship. Um, I, I thought I'd ask administration how they see moving forward on that, but hopefully the mover in his clothes can give some better clarity to administration right. on that. I'm not interested in, in hearing what the mover has to say about it at this point. I will listen to his clothes, though. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thanks, Alderman Chabot. <laughs> um, I, I'm, uh, I'm of the opinion as well that this is uh, the intent of this motion is to actually kill the proposal um, I'd certainly like to see what the $200,000 is going to tell us before considering any uh, other motions. So I won't be supporting this referral. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Chabot. Alderman Duong, your light had been on, is it? Asked and answered. Thank you. Um, Alderman Jones, hate to do it to you again. Mayor <coughs> Thank you. I will have uh, more things to say on the main motion in relation to issues like transit. I happen to believe that this tunnel is a primary transit link as is, in, as is envisioned in the Calgary Transportation Plan, as well as on security and overall cost. But I'll restrict my comments right now to this motion to defer. I have never before seen this council asked for a peer reviewed business case on a piece of transportation infrastructure. I haven't seen it for the Calatrava Bridge. I haven't seen it for the proposed traffic circle at McLeod and Heritage. And I don't think that we need to do this. This council agreed not more than just more than a year ago to include a primary transit network link through this tunnel as part of the Calgary transportation plan. We had hundreds of people come and talk to us. I was one of them about this in a public hearing process. We are now at the point where we need some solid numbers. That is what the initial proposal is meant to do, to give us some good numbers so that we can move forward on financing. This attempt to delay, to obfuscate, and I would argue to kill this project. If you don't like the project, vote against the main motion. Don't kill it through backdoor means, is what I would say to my colleagues at council. So I will be strongly opposing this motion to refer, and I look forward to having the discussion on the main motion. Alderman Lowe to close. Well, it's the first time I've heard uh, getting fact before we make a decision is obst... I can't pronounce the word, I'm sorry. Obstacate? Obfuscation. Obfuscation. Thank you. Anyhow. This is not an attempt to kill the project. This is an honest attempt out of respect for the new members of council, for administration, for the returning members of council to understand once and for all what the cost of this project is, what the impact is not only on the city, but also to think, Your Worship, regionally. It's important that we think regionally. One of the questions asked was, how did the Southwest Ring Road connect into this? I submit, Your Worship, 
as is the case now from northwest Calgary, north central Calgary, that the way to the Calgary International Airport will not be via the Deerfoot Trail, but rather by Stony Trail. You'll connect to the Stony Trail by the southwest connector somehow. That makes sense, it makes time sense, it makes, uh, makes distance sense, makes everything else. The other thing I've asked that we look at here are the number of, of uh, grade separated interchanges that will serve the airport in the future. We know that we have the 96th Street connector under construction today. That takes it over into uh, Aurora Business Park and up into Country Hills. We have the developers Council are going to build a uh, bridge across uh, 11th Street Northeast into the Stony Industrial. Similarly, they will build a bridge across the Deerfoot Trail into the Airway Business Park. The developers will build the road that goes to Barlow Trail. Why do we want to pay for it? If getting the facts in front of us before we make a decision is wrong, then that's what the previous council was constantly accused of, Your Worship, was not getting the facts before they made a decision. All I'm asking here is for fact. I knew full well that the airport was going to start moving dirt in April, hence I chose the date of February very, very carefully to give us time to meet your obligation to the airport authority, Your Worship, so that we could have a decision that they could have confidence to go ahead on and council would have confidence to go ahead on, one way or the other. I'm not going to debate the merits of the tunnel. I have a view about that. But at the moment, if we're going to make a decision, then I want to have as much information as I can. I want to have it comprehensive, and I want it to be full. I don't want Mr. Logan to have to stand up in front of me and say, I'm sorry, Alderman Lowe, I have not looked at that because I didn't have the time or the money. I want to know what the report's going to cost. As for a peer review, we've called for peer reviews and all sorts of things here, repeatedly. I find them to be a very useful tool where you're having competing studies. So is this a motion to kill the project? Absolutely not. This is a motion to get all of the information on the table for this council and for all Calgarians so that we can make a decision collectively that we can stand up and say, yes, we've done our best. To do it with anything less is to shortchange ourselves. So one last comment I would make is all of us have at some point been some place where something that you didn't even really think was important is suddenly the most important thing in the world. And to get that, you have to make your decision within 20 minutes. Phone this number, give me your visa number. At that point, I generally back off. <clears throat> and if we haven't got time to get this kind of information and to digest it and look very solidly at all of the information before we make a decision of this magnitude, then council will be selling the city of Calgary short, and committing ourselves and the Calgary taxpayer in all likelihood, or I shouldn't say in all likelihood, very possibly to a significant debt for a very long period of time. If at the end of the day that's the decision we make and we make it in the cold light of dawn with all of the information in front of us, so be it. We can defend that. But to make it in absence of complete information is not to do our duty to the city. So, Council, I'm going to ask you to uh, approve the referral. I'll look forward to seeing what the scoping report says. And um, I know it's a stretch, and I know it'll be difficult to get it here, get the final report here with all the elements, not later than February, but if it can be done earlier, Mr. Logan, so be it. Thank you. Recorded, recorded vote. Recorded vote. On the referral motion. On the recorded vote, 
Alderman Marr against. Alderman Hodges for. Alderman Farrell for. Alderman Curra against. Alderman Collier Cart against. Alderman Chabot against. Alderman Demong against. Alderman McLeod for. Alderman Lowe for. Alderman Putmans for. Alderman Keating against. Alderman Stevenson against. Mayor Nenshi against. Alderman Pincott for. Deputy Mayor Jones against. That's lost, Your Worship. Uh, first on my list is Alderman Farrell on the main motion. Thank you. Well, um, in absence of the referral, and I don't think that this information, um, I don't think a referral was necessary in order to obtain this information. I'm going to attempt to add some of these items. I think it's necessary information and for, in order for us to make an informed decision to the, um, to the notice of motion as amendment. Um, the items that, if we could even get the referral up, and I would like to pick the ones that I think I need information in order to go forward. Now, before you do that, I might rule you that you can't do that because we've defeated the referral motion, but we'll it, wait and see. Okay, but it was a, it was a referral. Okay, and we'll wait and see. so what I'm asking is that I amend the motion. Okay. to include this information. I don't think we need a referral in order to get this information. It should be part of a study done about the, uh, the benefits of a Go tunnel. So I would like to, I'm number, item number two, an analysis of transportation options for access to the international airport. Um, so Your Worship, just on a point of procedure again, we had a referral motion in front of us and it was uh, a referral based on this direction, which we defeated. Yes. I'm waiting to see what her referral and is. Now and we're then bringing I'm up the, the same solic items city again. Solicitor. The city solicitor will advise me okay. once they come Thank forward. You. Go ahead. Thank you. I don't believe that it's a reconsideration that's necessary. These are items that were part of a referral. The referral was defeated. That the, I don't believe that it means that we can't bring up some of well, these items for information for the main motion and I would your, hope that council would want this information if you put your refer your motions in front of us we'll okay. make the ruling here. Um, so the second point an analysis um, options and a valid dated estimate for the cost of constructing the tunnel underpass only I think that's likely what we will be getting anyway but it's more specific um, an analysis of funding options including P3. I would imagine that will come as well, but certainly um, more specific. And I would like to see cost sharing with some of the benefiting landowners. Um, an impact on the current 10-year capital plan. That's something that we should be seeing. If we're talking about taking money from somewhere and putting it into this tunnel, then we need to know what the long-term impact is of that decision as well. And then I would like to um, to add light rail transit options with or without the tunnel. I'm hearing two conflicting pieces of information. One is that we need the tunnel in order to bring light rail transit to the airport, which I think is really important sooner than later. But we're also hearing that it was never planned for this leg of the LRT. It was always planned for the North Central Line. I don't know the answer to that. I would really like the answer to that. And I don't think um, reading it in the newspaper is going to give me the answer. I'd like to hear it from administration. So rail transit options with or without the tunnel. That would be my. So your idea then. Not LRT is options, I'm sorry, rail options. So that doesn't mean LRT, it could mean it could mean uh, high speed rail from the airport to downtown. So I bullet, don't have an opinion on it. Bullet number two and number five plus rail options? Um, bullet number two, number four, number five, and number six. Now I have to ask the question of the city solicitor do I have to have a reconsideration on this because it lost as a referral? 
happy to do, Your Worship. That'd be my view. So a reconsideration motion would be in order, it would be needed to deal with items two, four, and five. I don't believe they'd be needed for the rail options because that's something that's new, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So your first three would have to be a reconsideration motion. The last one they just put up rail options with or without the tunnel would not be required for reconsideration because it's something we haven't voted on yet. Okay, so then to speak for the reconsideration. I think the concern that a number of members of council had on the referral is it was a, an attempt to delay beyond the point of reasonable um, access to a decision. And it, I don't know if um, the attempt to access more information was considered a negative thing. I don't think council ever should say we don't want more information, especially when faced with um, possibly a half a billion dollar cost. Uh, so I, I would hope that council would want this information. It was just the methodology behind obtaining it was perhaps um, a problem to some members of council. So are you going to make a reconsideration motion then? I, I will. Okay. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Alderman Footmans. Oh. We've just, yeah, it has to be a member of the prevailing side that does the re, uh, reconsideration motion. Even if it's immediately after? Even if it's immediately after, according to the solicitor. So of the nine people that voted in favor of it, does anybody wish to make a reconsideration motion to, or voted against the motion, but for? Of the nine people, is anybody willing to do a reconsideration motion? Yes. Those who voted against it. I would like. Can I? Can I? Somebody can I, on the prevailing can side has a question. Yes. I want to make sure that. Stand up. Sorry. I want to make sure if I do so, exploring this is clearly understood within the tight timelines we're working under. I mean, this isn't. Mr. Logan. Mr. Logan. Yeah. Your Worship, I'm. Uh, I'm just looking through two four. Five to try to ensure that we can answer those within the timeline that's uh, and the budget too. I mean, we'd have to find. I mean, I'd like some direction from you as to what, how expansively can we answer all of the questions we'd like answered within the timeline, and how much within the budget, and how much extra budget would we need? Your Worship, I'm just looking for a bit of direction um, where we're at on discussing this, whether. You want to link the answer to this? Give me any answer you have. Okay, thank you. Uh, with respect to number two, I believe a lot of this work was done previously through first off TIIP, which we did three years ago, which included this project, which was sh which showed up on the unfunded list in the previous TIIP. We did a network, a northeast network analysis, uh, at, as part of a series of previous reports that came to council to discuss the airport trail link under the runway. Um, so we can rehash and, and go back and look at those reports, the analysis that was done, determine whether they were valid and, and bring that information forward maybe in a, in a summarized format, particularly for the new members of council. Um, with respect to option four or uh, point number four options and a validated cost estimate. Um, the validated cost estimate will be, I assume would be a a peer review which would include a cost which would increase the $200,000. The cost of adding the connectors uh, was going to be part of the work that we did, so that's fine. Um, so the rest of that would be fine. Number five is analysis of uh, funding options we have done. We previously did do a, a P3 analysis on this. Um, and we were anticipating bringing forward a, a options for funding to council. So I wouldn't see a tremendous amount of additional work there, but there would be some. Uh, so to, summar to summarize, Your Worship, um, number two, we could bring forward work that was previously done. To be honest, we, we wouldn't have a tremendous amount of time to do new work on that in the timeline that's been outlined. Uh, four would require additional work and additional cost. Five would require some additional work and some minor additional cost. If I was to put a number out there, I think that we would probably request 
an additional $50,000 latitude to work on this report if you were to ask us to return those. And I would, I would also advise council that uh, that's a tremendous amount of work to ask us to do in a very short period of time, and it will impact other business. And please take that into consideration. Sorry about that. I hope that wasn't like Freudian, that bumble. Um, I will, uh, I think $50,000 of additional cost from the $200,000, understanding that you guys are going to be working around the clock. Um, but this is a big issue for the city of Calgary. I fundamentally believe that. I think it's sort of an issue that's cleaving us apart. And we have to come together on this. And so I would like to ask my prevailing counterparts to second asking for as robust a reconsideration so we can include a more robust, as robust a report as humanly possible moving forward. So you're moving for a reconsideration? Yes. Is there a seconder from the prevailing side? It doesn't need to be on the prevailing side. Doesn't? No. No, it doesn't? Well, it would be nice if it was. Alderman Lowe. On the referral motion, Alderman Chabot. Or, sorry, reconsideration. On the, on the reconsideration, Alderman Pincott, Alderman Marr. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a complicated issue, obviously. Everyone is very passionate about it. We know that we're on for a type timeline. And um, I just have a couple of quick questions, if it's uh, with your permission, Chair, of uh, GM Logan. I'm going to take that as a yes. Okay, so uh, Mr. Logan, uh, with respect to some of the the additional work that we're including into this report, so it's going to be another 50 grand. I'm okay with that. Are we going to be able to get all of this information in time for this report? Be able to figure out if we're the the the, the funding options are something that I find very critical because if we were We've heard them from uh, from the mayor that there's negotiations with regards to other partnerships with the governments, our uh, federal and provincial, as well as the airport authority. And I like the idea of being able to see if other businesses could be caught involved in in a sort of levy, sort of like we have done with uh, other major pieces of infrastructure in regional areas. Uh, is that something that that uh, that's the scope where you're looking at? Is this how you're interpreting this information? Jones? Uh, Your Worship, thank you for that question, Alderman Marr. That's a, that wasn't quite the way that I would, been in, I would have interpreted the instruction that was included in those bullets, to be honest with you. I, I think the funding options uh, would be somewhat limited in that time frame. With respect to a levy, that isn't something that we've talked about previously. Uh, Sorry, it is or is not? Is not. Okay. Uh, that would require public consultation, obviously, and uh, I don't think that's realistic in that time frame. Mm -hmm. In the time frame that we've outlined uh, uh, is the soonest that we could report back being early in the new year. Um, the funding options that you mentioned, Alderman Mar, sorry, uh, was you talked about a levy, you talked about uh, engaging other other levels of government, I believe that that would be part of the work that's that's uh, contemplated as per the comments from the mayor. Mm -hmm. And um, with respect to the cost benefit analysis, it would be it would be looking at the usage, the projected usage of this facility, it would not be contrasting it with all of the other projects in the city. Okay, does that help? That does help a little bit. Now, if we're going to move forward on this, and let's just for a moment say that we do reconsider this and we get this this new information i mean for me personally the critical information is how much is this going to cost and do we have other people contributing quarters to it and if they if there is then i'm, I'm happy to do it um i imagine in the course of that discussion if once we find out how much it's going to cost you will be able to determine for or uh, with us if we're going to be able to put LRT in it and all these other other things, that would be part of a separate discussion. We got to find out how much it costs first. That's and that's being done through the first report, as without this 
this additional information. Is that right? Uh, Your Worship, we had contemplated, we have always contemplated designing a facility that would accommodate future rapid transit. Uh, that's always been a part of our work, and that would have been part of the cost estimate that would have come forward uh, if council supports the notice of motion. And we would also include in that response to council a funding package on the different options on who would contribute, how much each party would contribute, and how the city would finance their portion of it, if that helps. Okay. That's not new. That kind of helps. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to support it because of the fact that I think that we've got the information that coming to us as is. And I think that we need to, uh, time to move is, we're in the 11th hour right now. Thank you. Mayor Nancy on the reconsideration. So, um, we through the, through the chair. Question for Bill. See, mine is always on. Um, question for Mr. Logan, which is, would $50,000 be sufficient to do the work we're talking about? And do you have that money in the existing project that you're taking the 200000 from? Your Worship, um, uh, my feeling was, you know, we could we could use the 50000 to get a, uh, a third-party review of the cost estimate and also some analysis, uh, some outside expertise, particularly on the P3. And um, my understanding is, yes, we do have funding of that order of magnitude in the uh, our <laughs> capital budget that's previously been approved. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Logan. So this sounds reasonable to me, uh, as a matter of fact. So um, perhaps uh, we can move forward on this motion to reconsider and then come up with the right wording for the amendment to the main motion uh, to encapsulate what you just said. Alderman Lowe, on the reconsideration. Well, Your Worship, given that uh, the previous council was constantly challenged for not asking the right questions, I'm going to be very pleased if we can have some of the right questions asked. So I'll support the reconsideration. Alderman Putman's on the reconsideration. Yes. Yes, I'd, I'd definitely support the reconsideration. And just like to add that, um, like Giancarlo, uh, with many voters at the doors over the election, there is a lot of support in Ward 6 for the tunnel. The, there is also a passion for more information. This is a massive investment. And to echo Alderman Lowe, I, I think it has been a very sincere attempt to try and recapture more information and provide that to the citizens of Calgary so that we go forward unified and generally um, enthusiastically about this tunnel at the airport. Thank you. Alderman DeMong on the reconsideration. Yes, it had to do with the timeline as far as getting this information in time asked and answered. And uh, if we can do it, I would encourage to the other councillors to agree as well. Thank you. Alderman Farrell, to close. Oh. Oh, Alderman Cross, sorry. No. Close. Uh, closed. <laughs> On the motion to the reconsideration, are you agreed? Agreed. Opposed? Hold the roll, please. Alderman Farrell. Yes. Alderman Hodges. Yes. Mayor Nenshi. Yes. Alderman Keating. Yes. Alderman Lowe. Yes. Alderman McLeod. Yes. Alderman Marr. Alderman Pincott? Yes. Alderman Putmans? Yes. Alderman Stevenson? Yes. Alderman Carra? Yes. Alderman Chabot? No. Alderman Collier-Cott? No. Alderman DeMong? Yes. Act, uh, Deputy Mayor Jones? Yes. It's carried, Your Worship. It's carried. Alderman Farrell? I'll move the um, items on the screen as well as rail options with or without the tunnel as the final point. And Council, thank you for voting the reconsideration. Um, just a point of information, if it is immediately after a vote, one doesn't need the prevailing side to move it. It could be anybody, but 
that's okay. It worked out fine. Um, uh, I think perhaps the um, the good work that was behind the referral, which were some very valid points, was was um, misconstrued as, as or perhaps interpreted as opposition because there was a petition of opposition distributed at the same time. <laughs> you might want to keep that for future reference, Alderman Lowe. Um, so that, that may be why it was interpreted as opposition. This isn't an attempt to delay. It's an attempt to get as much information and good information as possible in order to make an informed decision for a very important issue for Calgarians. So I would appreciate the support on these, um, these amendments. Thank you. Alderman Farrell, I was just wondering before you sit down, because I know it's going to be asked if I can call them separate. Can we number them one, two, of course. three, four, and five? Yes, thank you. And personally, I'm I'm not. Um, yeah, you got one. Other than the bottom option. Pardon me. He was asking for a copy. I said you have one except the bottom copy. Thank you. Alderman Chabot. You don't want to ask a question. Okay. Alderman Pincott. On the Alderman Pincott on the amendments. Well, I'm I'm going to support the amendment. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's important to get the get the information, and uh, I'll also just speak to the to the main motion as well. At this point, um, uh, I think it's important that we get information because so far, um, the majority of what I've heard is hyperbole when people are throwing around numbers from 40 million to 830 million that's hyperbole when people are uh, uh, presenting either side of it in uh, without without the the information this basic information that we require we're speaking from a from from pure hyperbole we need to look at this this is an important uh, important piece of infra infrastructure we need to get all the information that we can. Uh, and I think that, that it's very important. One of the challenges that I have with not just, not just this piece of infrastructure and how the conversation is occurring around this infrastructure, but a lot of our road infrastructure. So I fundamentally believe that we're asking the wrong questions. We're fundamentally not looking at these pieces of infrastructure the way we should be. We're looking at them, and the argument for, for the airport tunnel is that we look at how many people we anticipate to move into the northeast area of the city, and Alderman Stevenson is quite, quite appropriate in that, looking at what the plans are looking at, how many people we're adding there. And our past has told us that that's going to add X number of trips by car per day. So we've got to build a tunnel to anticipate that. It's been an argument that we've heard and council has passed for improving, building ex uh, improving expressways, and approving expressways and building expressways all around the city. We have to build and approve these now for the anticipated volumes of traffic in 20 years. Fundamentally, that's the wrong question. The right question is, Let's have a look at our road network that we have now. Let's have a look at our transportation network that we have now and that we have approved now and how do we grow our city in order to be able to use that transportation network effectively. So that is one of the fundamental challenges that I have. I, I, I said that very thing when we talked about the CFB West Mobility Study for Curry Barracks which anticipated 120,000 vehicle trips a day. The fundamental question is the road network can handle an extra 20,000. How do we achieve that? And I think that those are the questions that we're going to have to, at the end of the day, start asking ourselves if we want to move ourselves as a city towards sustainability, towards how we move people, not cars. This information is going to be very important for us to make a decision. And we're going to have to make that decision. But again, it's not, it's a decision based on the past and not on the future 
that we have said we want to go to. I'll, uh, I'll support this at this time. Thank you. I neglected to ask for a seconder. So is there a seconder? I'll second. Is Alderman Lowe? Okay. And Alderman Lowe, you're up next. Well, Your Worship, the uh, four out of six of the right questions have been are here. I'll be pleased to get the information. Uh, I appreciate uh, Alderman Pincott's observations about hyperbole. The, uh, there's a reference made that I should not have presented a petition against, but it's interesting that uh, there are people who are informed who are against. And that's democracy in action. So I'm going to ask you to support this council. I think uh, it gets us a long way down towards getting a lot of the answers that we have to have. And it will be a very interesting discussion once again when we have those answers. Thank you, Your Worship. Mayor Nenshi. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to confirm through the chair. Worship. Well, he's there now. Thank you, sir. Um, I just wanted to confirm through the chair a couple of questions uh, for Mr. Logan. I, I just want to 100% make sure. I thought I had heard you say that number one on this list would not be possible in the time frame and with the additional $50,000. Did I misremember that? Your Worship, uh, what I, the information that I'd like Council to understand on that point would be that we would be going back to the work that was previously done to a large extent. Uh, we would use whatever tools we have available to us in the short term to look at the previous studies. We did TIIP, we did a Northeast Network study. We have, we have specifically looked at this question in the past, um, but it would be looking at this project and not looking at all of the other projects in the city on a comparative basis. Excuse me. Uh, and the other four, same thing? Um, I guess the only one that I would ask for clarity, clarity, Your Worship, if I was able, would be number four, and the impact on the current 10-year capital plan would be with respect to this project. I wasn't, the above scenarios isn't quite clear to me, Your Worship. I'm looking at it. I think it's suggesting if we built the underpass only, if we built the connections, and if we built the entire thing now, what would the impact be on the 10-year plan? That would be Sounds just like math to me. That would be my interpretation then. If. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with, with, with that understanding, then I'm happy to support this. Thank you. Alderman Stevens. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. I, I will support it. I would like to be recognized to move the 200,000 to 250 in a further amendment. Thanks. Okay. You can do that now. We can take an amendment to the amendment. And that's done. Thank you. Second by Mayor Nancy. Alderman Farrell on the an amendment to the amendment. Mayor Nancy on the amendment to the amendment. Alderman Chabot on the amendment to the amendment. Just to call them all separately as you indicated previously. Thank you. I knew that was gonna happen. Um, Alderman Farrell to close. On the amendments, on amendment number one. Oh, the amendment to the amendment, right. Uh, for to add, raise it from 200 to 250,000. Are you agreed? agreed? Opposed? Alderman Collier Guards opposed. On number on the amendment, on number one, are you agreed? agreed. Opposed? Alderman Collier Cart and Alderman Chabot are opposed. All, on number two, are you agreed? agreed. Opposed? Alderman Collier Cart and Alderman Chabot opposed. Number three, are you agreed? agreed. Opposed? Alderman Collier Cart opposed. Number four, are you agreed? agreed. Opposed? Alderman Collier Cart and Alderman Chabot are opposed. And on number five, are you agreed? agreed. Opposed? Alderman Collier Cart and Alderman Chabot are opposed. And this is to follow, by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, on the one, two, third, therefore, further be resolved following the words any incremental stages thereof and the necessary financing. That's where these five will move into this, the queue. Okay, on the main motion as amended, Alderman Chabot. Uh, 
thank you, Your Worship. I'm, I'm going to be supporting the motion, of course, um, but um, the reason that I, I couldn't support some of these amendments is um, because of some of the discussion that's occurred around the table. Um, a lot of this information is going to be coming forward. Um, Mr. Logan indicated that the implications were not just from a financial perspective, but from a resource perspective in being able to meet the timelines. He's certainly going to have to uh, rejig his work schedule, I can imagine. Um, number three, I don't think we've truly really assessed what the cost implications are going to be uh, from a carrying cost perspective, which is why I supported that. The addition of the 50,000 is inconsequential from my perspective. I too agree that it's a very important issue that members of council should have all the information that's before them uh, because it is going to be a very important decision and all members of council should have all that information before them. The rail option with or without the tunnel, I think we, we already know the answer to that question. The answer is the center street alignment, which is what is originally envisioned which is uh, a long ways down the road. We talk about transportation network and, and how we need to assess the entire transportation network. But the city has had, has had a transportation plan for a long time. And a lot of the development that's occurred around the city has been based on what was envisioned in regards to our long-term transportation plan. And uh, without this tunnel, um, it's going to drastically change what has occurred and, and how those businesses in the Northeast in particular will be able to move forward. One of the things that has not really been addressed here is, um, is how this would impact the full development of that area, being as council has ruled in the past to retain the density um, of that area uh, from an industrial uh, commercial perspective by not down zoning the area even administration has agreed that at some point in time the infrastructure will probably uh, fail and not be able to meet the demand that will exist there and we will we may have to impose some limitations on on the full density development so if we want to keep try and keep our plan moving forward towards a municipal development plan the calgary transportation plan i think this tunnel will be essential not just for the airport perspective but for the full development of that area so hopefully council can support this uh, I will support it a little reluctantly because of the workload that's going to add to administration, but ultimately we'll get the answers that we need. Mayor Nash? I too want to speak in favor of... Old dog. Um, I, I too want to speak in favor of this notice of motion, and I thank Alderman Stevenson for bringing it. Uh, and I just want to highlight a few things. You know, we've just come out of this civic election where I had the wonderful opportunity to travel the width and breadth of this city over and over and over again. And the most interesting thing is the one place where people didn't ask me about the airport tunnel was in East Calgary. Uh, I remember a group of seniors in a backyard in Dalhousie who told me, even though we'll never use it, the airport tunnel is our number one priority for transportation. I remember a group of young people in Rocky Ridge, one of whom was in the room a few minutes ago, telling me that this tunnel was something that had to happen. And I remember, much to my surprise, the South Fish Creek Transportation Committee mayoral forum in which they spoke about the need for this tunnel, even ahead of some of the things that they've been lobbying for uh, for many, many years. So we definitely saw a lot of that in the election. Indeed, 70% of Calgarians voted for a mayoral candidate who strongly supported the tunnel. 99% voted for a mayoral candidate who supported the tunnel in one way or another. We have a very, very, very clear mandate to move forward on this. And I'm very pleased that administration has been so flexible in working with us to figure out how to make this happen, Mr. Tobert and Mr. Logan in particular. I'm pleased that the airport authority has been helpful, and I'm pleased that both the federal and provincial governments have committed themselves to helping us find a solution to this problem. I believe we do need to move forward. I believe this is the right thing to do from a sustainability perspective. I believe it's the right thing to do from a transportation perspective. I think you cannot have transit that adequately serves the need of the 15,000 people who work at the airport if we don't have this underpass in place. So I'm very, very happy to have council help us take uh, the next step forward on this by asking for more information, and yes, Alderman Lowe, by asking the right questions, um, and we'll move forward. Uh, and once we have some numbers in place, we'll be able to make a decision on, on, on how to move forward after that. Alderman McLeod. Thank you. Um, just a 
couple of things. Um, I am going to support this motion because I think getting additional information is important. Um, and I, I want as much information as possible before I make a decision on this. But I also want to add that I very clearly spoke against the airport tunnel um, throughout the election. Not everybody supports it. Um, and I would argue maybe not even 99%. Um, it, I said to my constituents that at this point, I had not seen anything that would convince me otherwise. So I look forward to this report. Perhaps I can be convinced otherwise. Alderman Stevenson to close. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, and this has been an excellent discussion, and I'm, I'm really happy that there's been so many um, people looking for facts, because that's what I'm looking for, too. Um, I have a couple of points that I want to make. First of all, um, uh, it's been said about the transit not being a part of the plan for the Northeast, and that's true. It's always been a plan from the North Central, but that doesn't say it's right, and it doesn't say that we shouldn't change that plan because it's obvious that that's where it uh, could go through that through the tunnel. Um, it was, uh, I think, it was Alderman Pincott that mentioned that we we need to work on accomplishing the plans that are already in place, and I want to remind Council that this tunnel and this roadway and everything has been in the plan for 15 years, over 15 years. So I think if people understand the projected growth of our airport and the airport uh, district, the region, there's few that question the long-term need of the, of the underpass. Um, any project that is delayed five or 10 years has an increased cost just because of inflation. But this project may have, and it's been estimated, as much as a tenfold increase not because of the inflation, that of course would be on top of it, because we have to act now in order to save that money. And this report will help us to focus on more accurate cost estimates. Um, if there's even a chance, uh, Council, that we can save our taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars, we have an obligation to get this information and consider it before we vote on it. And you've heard me say many times that we need to plan for growth rather than be forced to react to growth. And that's why I urge you to support this motion. Thank you. On the motion, as amended, are you agreed? Agreed. Opposed? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. Oh, I don't have the next one. Okay. Uh, Mayor Nenshi. Thanks, Alderman Jones. Um, I'm pleased to present notice of motion 2010-43. Uh, the intent of this notice of motion is to reflect what many Calgarians had suggest, has, have been suggesting, and that is that they want our council to be able to have a broad array of choices from which to decide as we move forward uh, with the budget decisions for 2011. So the intent of this notice of motion is not to suggest that we will change Council's previous direction on a 6.7% increase, nor is it to suggest that we will accept all $35 million worth of um, net reductions that are being proposed. What it is meant to do is provide Council with an array of choices uh, around different cost savings areas in different departments across the city uh, that we can then choose from. That prevents Council from being in the position of saying, well, you know, I don't really like that cut or I don't really like that fee, but I have nowhere else to look uh, for that. It does not preclude council members, and I know many council members have been going through the budget book line by line, and it certainly doesn't preclude other options from coming to the table as well, but it does give us a broad array of choices from which to choose. I have discussed this uh, with Mr. Tobert and through him with other members of the administration. I have been assured that some of this work is ongoing and that they will be able to come to the table without undue hardship. Uh, with some additional choices for us. So I would urge you all to support this, but I do have a change before we put it on the table. And thanks to Alderman Lowe for pointing this out. Just to make it clear, um, in the end, further be it resolved at the very bottom, it ought to say that administration be directed to provide, and I'm adding some words here, the 2011 adjustment report, which balances to 6.7%, that's what we asked for before, as well as this additional information. So that way, just to be clear that what we're asking administration to do is to provide both the report the council initially asked them to provide and then these additional ones. 
Seconded by Alderman Collier. Alderman Lowe. Just to say, Your Worship, and uh, Your Worship, uh, Mayor Nenshi outlined the purpose of this, and the, uh, very clearly, it's not we're going there. This isn't a run to the bottom. This is simply an examination of possibilities for Council to deal with. So I'd ask you to support it. Alderman Pincott. Well, thank you. Um, I guess basically a, a question is this is pretty short timeline to uh, that administration is being asked to, to look for an additional $35 million of potential cost savings. Um, is this first off doable? Mr. Sir? Um, yes, I think it is doable. As uh, His Worship mentioned, uh, we've been going through a process of looking for reductions and have been cognizant of trying to find an array of options. So we do believe we can bring this forward on the timeline specified. Uh, okay. Um, and the, the number of $35 million, um, I don't know if this is actually a question for administration or a question for the mover in, in close, but is that a number that came from that work that is being done, or is this a number that was just chosen by the mover? Um, so uh, is, this an, is this a number that, that comes from the, the work that you have been doing? Mr. Tilbert. It's actually based on a discussion with uh, His Worship the Mayor and the work that we've done. Okay. And just to note, not all of those additional cuts <coughs> are recommended. Mm, okay, thank you. Um, well, then I will ask if, uh, if uh, the mayor would, in his close, uh, just uh, address where the $35 million number came from. Sure. Thank you. Alderman Marr. Well, I'm intrigued as the next guy uh, as to where this number came from. And I'm very interested in this response from uh, our CFO, who says that this is not only possible, but uh, but doable. I'm I'm curious as to where 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 is this cut coming from? Is this we're going back to the departments and saying cut another X percent from from everybody, or is this uh, maybe you could enlighten me a little bit, Mr. Sir? <clears throat> uh, thank you. Um, as I mentioned, as we've gone through the process over the past number of months, we've been looking at a, an array of alternatives. Our intent is to bring to you, as per council direction, a report that takes um, pieces of that that balances to the original 6.7%. I also indicated, believe we can bring additional information as some options for council on the timeline specified but to reiterate Mr. Tobert's, they are certainly not um, uh, recommended necessarily, and I doubt council would want to take them all, but it puts forward some various options if you want to seek additional reductions or have offsets to something else. Okay, so I'm reading between the lines now a little bit, and you're suggesting that there's some cuts that you wouldn't recommend, but you're gonna put them up anyway. Uh, that sounds like emergency services to me. Is that in your recommendations? Yes. So that's a good, honest, and concise answer. Now, uh, now, if we're talking about emergency services, are we we're talking about making cuts to growth, or are we talking about making cuts to actual delivery of services? I am asking for detail because this is a very critical discussion that we're just opening up now. Exactly. Well, you know what? If, if somebody wants to, uh, if, if they don't want to respond, or they, some, if I get a direction from the chair saying that my questions are out of order, I'm prepared to do that. But uh, so far, I haven't heard anything like that from the chair. You, you haven't given them the opportunity to answer yet. Please do. Mr. Tober. The um, options that we have put into the package to equal 35 million 
look at a, a growth that's required for some of the emergency services that just for your comfort do not include the Calgary Police Service. But that would mean fire then, wouldn't it? Interesting. Well, uh, there's other emergency services too. Yes, there is. Well, as uh, Sherlock Holmes would say, the game is afoot. Thank you. All right, Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, I find this notice of motion rather intriguing in light of uh, the discussions that Council's had um, dating back to March in regards to the uh, upcoming budget discussions for this November. And uh, it, it um, you know, we, we did have an informal discussion in camera that essentially set a direction without going into detail. And this, to me, um, is very much representative of uh, the direction that Council had given. Is that, is that not the case? Am I mistaken in that, uh, Governor? <clears throat> we did a briefing of Council, I think, in June. And at the time, we said, we have a challenge. But the administration, in an abundance of caution, said we better make sure that we look at cuts that go beyond what's the minimal required to make sure that we have some choices around the edge. Because you want to make sure that if you're going to draw a line somewhere, it, it, could you have drawn that line slightly differently by moving something up or, or something else down? Mm -hmm. This is just a prudent budgeting process. And so we went deeper than we needed to go in order to get more information. And what this notice of motion does is simply bring that information to council for you to consider. So essentially formalizing a process that you guys were prepared to bring forward it. Anyways. Your Worship, the administration responds to the directions of council. That's why this new direction is here. Because in order to bring something else, we needed new direction. Well, I'm, I'm a little reluctant on supporting this motion because my understanding is that this is what we were going to be seeing anyways. Um, no. But having said that, and this goes back to discussions I had with the GMs even in March. Anyways, um, I guess if it's going to be coming forward anyways, um, essentially achieves the objective that I was hoping we were going to achieve in March, then I guess who can vote against it? Alderman Demont. Um, you're ra uh, Mr. Sawyer, you're rather, he through the chair, sorry. You're rather uh, hesitant for uh, uh, comment that it's doable to find $35 million in cuts. Uh, will you be offering extra possibilities that could, ex could actually exceed the $35 million? Let's get there first. Uh, through the chair, um, as Mr. Tobert had uh, highlighted, we have gone through and identified a number of possibilities, and we plan to put together a recommendation that uses some of those pieces to, to provide, as per council direction, a recommended budget at the 6.7%. As part of that process, we also have other possibilities. Some of them might appeal to council, some of them may not appeal to council very much, but we're prepared to bring that information forward. It's not part of our recommendation, but it provides a range of possible options that council may want to consider. Thank you. Mayor Nenshi to close. Thank you very much, Alderman. Thank you very much. Um, so just to reiterate, uh, this is, in my opinion, good budgeting practice. Uh, I expect and I hope that starting in 2012, we'll have a new budgeting process that is more participatory, that allows for a greater range of discussion and a greater range of options to be on the table. Um, but for the time we have in 2011, I really appreciate the flexibility of administration in order to help come to the table with more options. So to Alderman Marr's comment, you know, there's lots of options. I'm sure there will be lots of options that will come to us, and we'll have an opportunity at that point to decide them on their merits. And I think that's good practice, rather than sh slamming the door on any particular options uh, before we even start. Uh, and to Alderman Pincott's question, the $35 million uh, was arrived at in consultation with Mr. Tobert and through him uh, with the general managers. Uh, my suggestion was that we wanted something that was substantial enough that council would be able to make some changes. <coughs> If we do the math, it means that if we were to accept all 35 million, which as Mr. Sawyer says, I expect we won't, 
that would take us from 6.7 to 3.2. And I thought that that 3.5% range was plenty for us to be able to decide. If it comes back at 32 or 38 or 40, I'm not particularly fussed about it. Because the whole point is we just want to have the options on the table. And this looked like a good place to peg it down. Now, if administration wanted to come back with 100 million, you know, we'd be happy to look at it. But this seemed to be pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. On and with notice, that, I'll close. On the notice of motion, are you agreed? Agreed. agreed. Opposed? That's carried. Can I have my seat back now? Yes. Thank you. I'll take mine, too. <clears throat> All right. Where are we? Council strategic planning session, indeed. Alrighty, so that takes us then to, oh, Alderman Jones, you moved all my papers around. Never touched them. <laughs> From my own. That takes us to, uh, here it is, the potential um, M2010-09 and M2010-09, oh, where is it? Do you have it there? Thank you, thank you. Um, is about the strategic planning session for next week. Uh, Madam Clerk has informed me that if we would like to do this session off-site, uh, we do require a vote in order to do that. And just before I ask for that motion, perhaps I can just give you a brief introduction uh, to why this item is important. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, Mr. Tobert, and my office have been working on an agenda for that offsite. I'm not allowed to call it a retreat for reasons that still escaped me. Um, but for an opportunity for us to have a discussion around our priorities as a council, uh, the priorities that each of us have individually and the ones that we have collectively, as well as a discussion around corporate governance and a discussion around budget as we go into the budget adjustment process the following week. Um, and I think it's gonna be a great session. I'm really looking forward to it, but we do require uh, a couple of procedural things to make sure that we can do it well. Alderman Will. Thank you, Your Worship. And I'm going to uh, move the recommendations contained in the report, although they have to be rephrased, of course. Okay, can you help us with that, Alderman That Will? council relocate 2010, November 16 and 17, strategic planning meeting to the Water Centre, period, and that a discussion on governance be added to the 2010, November 16 and 17, strategic planning meeting agenda. Great. Thank you. And I think I saw Alderman Pincott's hand went up first um, to second that. All right, so now we have a motion on the table. On the motion, Alderman Hodges. <laughs> Thanks, Alderman Jones. Your Worship, uh, the questions either for Mr. Tully or the city clerk. Uh, we also have a U and E meeting that day, so do I need to make a motion to cancel that then, or to move it? U and E utilities &E. and environment. Okay, when this motion is approved, then I'll make that. I'll motion recognize through. you then. Thanks, Alderman Jones. Alderman Chabot. Thank you, Your Worship. One of my former colleagues uh, often spoke against this particular type of motion, and. And hence the reason why there's a requirement to have a two-thirds uh, majority vote. That is because we have these council chambers primarily for that purpose, is for us to debate our, our council uh, issues in an open public forum that has uh, full access and people are familiar with it and have an opportunity to at least listen in on, on to our discussions. Mm -hmm. So um, from a transparency perspective, I don't think this is the right direction to take. And I will be voting against this motion. Thanks, Alderman Chabot. Alderman Farrell? Thank you. Well, I'm going to support the motion. I think Calgarians told us very clearly in the last election that um, they would like us to learn to work together. And the best way to do that is to get to know each other. And the best way to do that is not through these chambers, which is just by virtue of its design a bit more adversarial, but to sit around a table and talk. So I'm looking forward to this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Alderman Farrell. Any further discussion on this motion? All right, then. On the motion, um, as proposed by Alderman Lowe, to move to the Water Centre and to add a discussion on governance to the agenda, are we agreed? agreed. Opposed? Alderman Chabot is opposed. Alderman Jones. Thank you, Worship. Uh, on that note, I'd like to move the items, the three items that were on the uh, November UNE calendar to the December meeting and cancel the you any meeting for November. All right, do we have a seconder? Second. Alderman Stevenson, thank you. Any discussion? Alderman Hodges on this item? Okay. Any discussion? All right, are we agreed? Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Farrell. Thank you. Uh, are they urgent items? No, thanks. Okay, so in that case, are we agreed? agreed. Any opposed? Carried. Alderman Hodges. Uh, the next item, then, Your Worship, is the amendment to the Calgary Parking Authority bylaw. And uh, this uh, arises out of, of course, the organizational meeting a week and a half or so ago, two weeks ago. And uh, I'm pleased to move the uh, recommendation and uh, three readings of by the <coughs> bylaw 55M 2010. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Second. Alderman Chabot, thank you. Any discussion on this? So on the recommendation, are we agreed? Any opposed? All right, first reading of the bylaw then, are we agreed? agreed. Any opposed? Second reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Any opposed? Authorization for third reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? Finally then, third reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you, Alderman Hodges. We'll move now to um, urgent business items, starting with FCS 2010. Oh. Your Worship, can I just interrupt? We yes. need to confirm um, Alderman McLeod as that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes. Could I have a motion to confirm Alderman McLeod then, Alderman Hodges? to begin with and the bylaw which uh, means that we're adding Alderman McLeod to the parking authority. Okay, so motion to add Alderman McLeod. McLeod is our second uh, is our second uh, appointee to that committee and Alderman Marr, did I see you second that? Sure. All right, are we agreed? Agreed. Any opposed? Alderman McLeod, you, this is your chance, no? All right, <laughs> <laughs> carried. So we'll now move to FCS 2010-22, establishment of the Montgomery Business revitalization. I'll move the so. recommendations of committee and three readings. And I'll second it, George. Thank you. Moved by Alderman uh, Lowe, seconded by Alderman Hodges. Um, and I'm just looking for the recommendation here. All right, so you all have the recommendations in front of you. So any discussion on these? All right, then. On the recommendations, are we agreed? Agreed. Very well. Um, we then have to do the bylaw. So First reading of bylaw 56M 2010, are we agreed? Any opposed? Second reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? Authorization for third reading, are we agreed? Any opposed? All right, and third reading of the bylaw, are we agreed? Agreed, any opposed? Carried. All right, then we get to uh, IGA 2010-36, proposed recommendations for the City of Calgary's 2011-2012 provincial and federal budget submissions, Alderman Pincott. Thank you. I would uh, like to move the uh, recommendations that we accept this report. Uh, and we have Alderman Jones seconding. Alderman Pincott, did you want to say a word about the discussion at IGA on this one? Okay. <laughs> Alderman McLeod. I'm wondering why there isn't anything about transit in here. Transit funding. I'm looking around to see if anyone is better equipped to answer that question than I. Yeah, I, um, uh, I, I can try to, but why don't you go ahead, Mr. Schilbert? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, microphone. <clears throat> Your Worship, I believe there was some discussion at the committee about whether or not this really represented this new council's perspective on which things needed to be represented to both the provincial and federal governments. And in the interest of time, it was felt that we needed to get something out right away. So this really reflects the previous council's perception of what was required to be promulgated to those other orders of government. We said, if we don't put this thing out, we'll actually miss the budget preparation cycle. So it was the best of a bad lot. And may maybe I can add a little bit to that. Uh, we, had a, we had a good discussion at the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee about <clears throat> our next meeting, uh, which will be really to talk about whether our priorities have changed, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the provincial government, uh, in the area of transit and also in the area of the vacating of the property tax. And part of the discussion we had at that committee suggested that rather than look at the tactic of vacating the property tax, uh, having the province vacate that tax, we really need to have a broader discussion with the province around tax reform and funding mechanisms for the two big cities in the province. And certainly how transit is funded would fall under that. And I'm looking forward to a, a realignment of how we uh, make submissions to the province in the future. But as Mr. Tobert said, this particular budget submission normally goes in quite a bit earlier than now. 
um, but because of the election has been delayed until now. So we at committee decided that since it reflected what the council was saying at that time, and there's nothing in here that's particularly horrifying, I think, to this council, uh, we thought it was prudent to move forward, which is why it's here today. Other discussion on this item? Okay, on the recommendations then, are we agreed? Any opposed? All right, uh, carried. So that takes us then to um, the green sheet uh, on the snow and ice control. Thank you, um, Your Worship. And, and, I, and I have a friendly amendment for you, Alderman Paul your card. Thank you. Same as the last one. Can we say 29th November 2010 at the bottom? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Jones and I uh, probably should have had this matter dealt with uh, during the organizational day. So we're really without a committee now at the very time when the report is ready to be released to the subcommittee. So uh, there's a real uh, tight timeline in order for us to reappoint the committee members that were originally on. Uh, the reason also for this is that there's two citizen members that really have a vested interest in participating in the next meeting. And then we have a tight timeline to get these recommendations through to the audit committee and then on to Council of the Whole for the budget discussions. Thank you. Okay, and that was seconded by Alderman Jones. Jones, yes. And I, for one, am very excited to see these results. I bet you So are. any discussion on this item? Uh, Alderman McLeod, is that left over from last time? Take. Yeah, my fault, sorry. Any other discussion? Okay, so then on this, on this motion, are we agreed? Agreed. Any opposed? Carried. All right, we have two small um, item, urgent business items to deal with in camera. So... Can I have a motion to move in camera, please? Thank you, Alderman Hodges. Do I have a seconder? Alderman Stevenson, are we agreed? Agreed. All right. Just in the back. These shouldn't take long. Do we have these? Or they have the uh, we, we should have the one with you. Here. They'll hand out the first one. That's Thank fine. you. Yep. Who knew?
All right, we're back. Alderman Carra. Oh, Alderman Hodges. All right. So just move. We rise and report your worship. Thank you. Motion. And we don't need a seconder for that. So are we agreed? Very well. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Collier Cart. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is regarding citizen appointments to the License and Community Standards Appeal Board. Second. That council appoint Teresa Goldstein, Dylan Snowden, and Glenn Solomon to the License and Community Standards Appeal Board for a term to expire in 2011. Thank you, and Alderman Chabot is seconded. Any discussion? Are we agreed? Agreed. agreed. Any opposed? Carried. Uh, Alderman Moore. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, that uh, council confirm the appointment of Mr. Howard Shikaze to the Calgary Police Commission Second. for a two-year term to expire in November 1st, 2012. Thank you. And Alderman Colley Urquhart has seconded. Any discussion? Are we agreed? agreed? Any opposed? Carried. Administrative inquiries. Alderman Hodges? If any. We don't have any. Move. Yep. Move we adjourn then, Your Worship. Okay, motion to adjourn, second by Alderman Pincott. Are we agreed? Agreed. Thanks for making it easy for us. We'll have a lot more of these to go.